I made some pancakes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hey, you want some pancakes? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> We're aware of it. You've been living here how long now? Uh, wow, where am I at here? I am at <laughs> 10 years as of next year. Because I just had to think, where's my green card run out? Oh, yeah, next year. <laughs> <laughs> when's my green card run out? <laughs> well, here, that beer's getting warm over there, Eric. If you'd pass this, <clears throat> speaking of Canada, uh, Canadian game there, a little hockey. Got the well, bats on the back. We got the penguins on the front. He's well, we, we wanted to do something for Jed. It was very important for us to make sure he left here with some kind of me you know, memento of Fuck. something that's awesome about Pittsburgh. So we're going to send him home, which I'm sure probably will get as far as the trash can across the street when he goes, <laughs> when he goes to his car later. <laughs> but a Pittsburgh Penguin koozie, but it does have Labatt's blue on the back. So, yes. there's so we're 50% there. There you are, my friend. Thank you very much, there, guys. There are so we have no trash players. can in here, so you're going to have to dispose of it later. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just... I'll just just kind of do this. <laughs> Penguins meet gritty. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, we're all in the same state. Why can't we get along, right? <laughs> I mean, oh, gee, oh, gee, oh, jeez. Thank you for that, though. That, that's yeah. that. You know, it, it's funny because <laughs> over the years, you run out of things to collect when you're touring. Exactly. When back in the old days, I used to I used to collect barf bags. And I have uh, airplanes. I have a fucking great collection of barf bags. It's not. It's nowhere near close to what I've seen some other people have. But I've got some really good ones. But you collect the barf bags off yeah, the planes. Off the planes, and they had. They used to have comics on them. Okay. Shit, like really cool ones. And then that just kind of fizzled out over the years. Anyway, then it you went guys on. Must have been really it, fucking. It went on to, to things and other stuff. But I ended up starting collecting koozies, and I have a really fucking big collection. So this will not go in a garbage can. It will actually go home. And into my koozie collection, and out on my deck for summer parties, and uh, people will that's laugh. when I'll have to face the music. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'll be like, sorry, eh? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Dude, well, fuck for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys just got back from them, right? Yeah, relatively speaking. <clears throat> yep. Has it ever become a grind for you? I know, yes, I know it's a yes. grind for him. Yes, but no, because I don't, I don't go every year. Um, and the last time I was there, I think was fifteen, so four years. Um, I I really enjoy it because I'm you know I'm a gear nerd, so uh -huh. I, I go to, you to you think? I go to nerd out to nerd out. Um, but it is it's it's a grind, and and I was talking to Devin actually just when I was there, and he's like you know he's got to go every year and do the full you know he's Dev he's got to do the whole the full pull every damn year, and he goes this is how I pay for my sins. <laughs> you know, so I, I say why do <laughs> I do the why same thing? why yeah. why did I make you, bad life decisions? Stole your line, man. He so your line. <laughs> but I get you know I I go every few years and, right. and I do what I got to do and and or I don't you know it's not that I got to do it's what I want to do. You right. know this year I was out there supporting Mike Fortin mm -hmm. uh, Fortin Amplification. He's great a dear, stuff, man. another fine Canadian and great a dear, stuff. dear friend of mine. And mm -hmm. um, you know Mike made me a fantastic amp a couple of years ago. And uh, you know we've been friends for a long time, but once I had that forever amp in my in my possession, I'm uh -huh. like I'm, I'm I'm fucking never going anywhere else, you know. And I f I fly the flag for right for Mesa Boogie. I've been with him for yeah. forever. Yeah, um, big part I of your think, tone earlier on, right? Yeah, and for many years. Yeah, but I grew up Marshall, you know. Uh -huh. And there's 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 the Marshall mid. There's the those the beautiful overtones, the high mids. Anyways. Yeah, That's I'm a Marshall. So I had an old, I have, I've had an old JCM uh, 800, uh, uh, 100 watt kicking around for years, and I'm like, sent it up to Mike. You know, we got talking. He's like, you know, it had been modified poorly, so, and uh, so he, he's, you know, I'm like, well, let's let's pull out the old mods and just stock it up because you know, a Marshall tube screamer. Fuck yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. Anyways, and by the time by the time it was completed, I had I had one of his like uber fucking grandiose uh, <laughs> hand built amps. He stripped it down to the transformers and rebuilt it by hand. That's wow. awesome. With with wow. bells and whistles and things that we ended up talking about and, and modifications and stuff. So that's and a pure custom piece. Though. It's a it's a pure one off yeah. custom piece. Yeah, Can't you know, it's, it's a Fortin amp in a Marshall shell. How you like this? Nice. And it's oh my god, it, it is. And and I you know I just plug in. <laughs> you know and it's blows your face off it is yeah. and he also put a clean channel in it and it, it's it's the most pristine clean channel i've ever heard in my really? life but it's it's all it's like really <clears throat> powerful but it's tube though the clean size tube as well it's all clean or it's all tube. Yeah. wow and it's it's super super clean but it it's there's a power there that's that it it hurts my my cabinets yeah like it's too powerful is there a little amp, bit of warmth in there there is there is it's it's it i mean it's 
yeah it, it's <laughs> <laughs> trying to find the right the right verbiage here but it, it's a fantastic <laughs> amplifier and i'm really happy it's a, it's a forever amp that's okay. really what it is and it's it's a one of a kind and, okay. and i love it and before he sent it off to me uh band uh from you ever heard of a big wreck before yeah yeah so they were doing their new record in toronto at the time and uh they needed an amp and called mike and he had nothing so he called me he says can i send him yours and i'm, I'm, I'm like i fucking love those guys yeah and i'm like yeah. sure so he sent it over to them and apparently they just they use it all over their last their last record and and we're completely in love with the amp so i'm like that's it's already got some great legs on it yeah right yeah. on <clears throat> that's awesome you got a fort in a one time didn't you in your possession years ago mm. yeah you should see that collection i don't know i started <laughs> i started collecting and then and it's like you know again it comes back to the collecting things over the years you know we collect silly little things and then we collect like guitars and uh -huh. amps and you know, I started building a studio in my house, and that's another black hole we'll get to <laughs> at, at some point. Oh, my God. <laughs> you tried that one. I, I, I. <laughs> hey, money. What money? <laughs> what money? And I'm not, I'm not even half, where the fuck I got, what? Anyway, yeah. we'll, get, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but I started, I started collecting amplifiers, and, and after I got mics, I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't need any other amplifiers. I want to keep my, I want to keep, you know, I got my dual racks, such I love. And, you know, mm -hmm. I got a couple of the Randall things just because when Mike was with mm -hmm. Randall, they did okay. Yeah, they did. You know, um, but that's, that's my, it. That's our era. And, and I got rid of everything else, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm starting, and I'm starting to, and maybe it's because I'm getting older and wiser, who the fuck knows, but, you know, I'm starting to do the same with guitars. I'm like, keep the good ones and get rid of the fucking superf super <laughs> superfluous, super right. superfluous stuff. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> You know, you have a, you have a few good workhorses that I like to take on tour regularly, but I'm mm -hmm. like, I got all these guitars, and I'm like, I don't fucking need this. You can't get to them all. I, they all deserve to be enjoyed. I, I like the nice ones. I keep those, the ones that actually, not the nice, the ones that mean something to me, yeah. which are generally the nice ones. Yeah. But <clears throat> I had that Vic Dupree told me when I first started Boogie Street <clears throat> in my late 90s, mm -hmm. he says, you never own a guitar, Eric. You're just a temporary custodian. Yeah. Yeah, it's good because yeah. odds are likely you won't die with it. You'll end up moving it or gifting it or something, but it will contain that. It'll be at, providing no one destroys it. Mm -hmm. It'll be alive, and someone else will be using it. But you never yeah. really own it. You never really own it. Yeah, it certainly owns you during the time <laughs> in your <laughs> possession. <laughs> oh yeah! Thank God it was yeah. a beautiful business. <laughs> yeah, I I I watched with amazement from somewhat afar, and was mm -hmm. all amazed by the things that you did and the, and oh, the, and the things you. that you came up with. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you know that could lead down another we're, conversational we're gonna, avenue. We're head, we're going to head there. Yeah. yeah. Before, before we get all that juicy <laughs> stuff, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> well, well, there is, <laughs> and, and, and we're under. There's no commercials and no time limit here outside of like Fred. You got. You're with us for about three hours, right? Yeah. You, beauty. Three eh? hours. Beauty. Eh? Yeah. Fucking, fucking yep. beauty. Um, <clears throat> talk about childhood. When did you first fall in love with the guitar and or rock and roll music? Do you remember the artist? Do you remember the time? You know, there's there's a number of things that happened that I think were were important in that timeline. But uh, my family's fairly musical, but I was never offered any support, really. Um, but going back to, say, uh, first grade, or as we say in Canada, grade one. Grade one. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, we watched enough Trailer Park Boys. We know what that is. Julian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Julian, I'm getting my grade five. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that show with all my heart. Me too. Particularly Me too. the first five five seasons. <laughs> and and some of the old, earlier, like, black, there's a black and white show. Yeah, there's, there's a couple one-off shows. There's heart in it. You know, and then it kind of <laughs> lost the heart as it went along. But well, it's, Le Leahy was a loss. Fuck Leahy. Leahy was a loss, Best, man. You know? That was I a think loss. next to, yeah. I'm trying to think, there was there was a you know we're tangenting here, but that's what we do here. Yeah, <laughs> there, don't worry. There was an uh, uh, he was the, one of the best TV drunks ever, and there oh was, there was an American God. guy, or maybe yeah, I think it was an American actor from the seventies. I can't remember his name. He was an excellent TV drunk as well, and he remind Lee, he reminded me of him, but I can't remember his name right now. Buster um, Keaton was a <clears throat> notorious drunk from like the fifties and sixties. I think he would play the drunken part. Yeah. Amazingly Anyways, well. Lee, he he did it so well. <laughs> and lovably so, Dean Martin. But I don't know if he was acting actually. No, that none of none of those, <laughs> I, I don't think he was acting. None of none of those guys were acting. <laughs> those guys were the real deal, man. Well, what was the first band that like knocked your socks off? Bachman Turner Overdrive. No shit. BTO. Hands yeah. down, number fucking no one. No shit. Still heroes to this day. Yeah, yeah, I love them. And and that goes back to what we were just talking about. What kind of first grabbed you? Um, <clears throat> so fast forward. You know, when I was well, yeah, first grade. I remember um, going to my grandma's house 
in Souk, BC. And she had a big cast iron stove. And I remember the smell of fresh baked bread. And I remember, um, what song was it? We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons, seasons in, in the, the sun. Who was that guy? Yeah. Sang a song. Who was Terry? I think it was Terry something or other. Yeah. But it, it was just it was just, a, it was just a melody that stuck in my head. And there was a couple other tunes there. I think there was a, a band called America back then. Um, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm trying to Horse remember. Horse with no name, and uh, that's yeah. it. I think it might have been Horse with yeah. no name. But yeah. those melodies, I, I remember hearing them and, and kind of being captivated by them while I was smelling bread and playing with my light bright, where the big light brights, where they were the big fucking like. <laughs> cathode ray tube tv and i remember the pe those pegs were that long yeah yeah, yeah. Like, junk is black like, paper junk yeah <laughs> um but fast forward uh a few years and and we're into the early 70s mid 70s now right, and right and we had a friend of the family who worked at a, a record store or a stereo store in Van the vancouver area by this time i'm, I'm over in vancouver and uh, it was called Miller's, Miller's mm -hmm. Records or something. <clears throat> anyway, I guess maybe he saw something in me that I hadn't seen at that point because he started giving me records. And I would get a big stack of records every fucking year for Christmas. And, and it was the most exciting thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm skipping around, kind of going back and forth in That's my brain here. here. That's what we do here. We do it all the time. Grade fucking three. <laughs> Terry Jacks sang that song, by the way. Terry just, just, thank you. Just, just to, I had to look it up. Uh, Fuck yeah, Google guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I did. <laughs> you fucking so grade cheater. Three, so grade three, um, I got one of those care packages, and I remember, I don't remember everything that was in it, but I remember Average White Band, yeah. and I remember Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Mm. And that was, and, and by that time, um, I had a little stereo in my room. It was like one of those RCA record players that held like 10 records and thunk, thunk, it would play them one at a time, you know, and a, and a uh -huh. shitty little receiver. Uh -huh. But I, when I discovered, when I heard that record for the very first time, I mean, it's still in my top five to this to this day. Elton. Good, specifically Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Right. Yeah, Elton John. Right, right. Right. Not to, not to, I sing that song every day. Oh, I, 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 it's yeah. in my head every day. There, every song on that double album is so fucking good yeah it's amazing it's yeah. incredibly good and it's and as i've aged you know you read your own meanings in the songs and that's why they mean something to you for the most part mm -hmm. i think with a lot of people and did you understand his actual lyrics back then well no but i mean they, <laughs> but there's i mean bernie Toppin is a, is a fantastic oh, yeah. lyricist oh, right yeah. no, i mean, did you, I mean his, his 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 english uh, accent was so oh, yeah. tough we all had different like interpretations fucking of what he was a, saying a, a vodka a vodka and tonic <laughs> <laughs> Take a couple of vodka tonics, yeah. get you on your feet again. <laughs> right? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a but, specific but, line I sing, but, too. Cause but <laughs> as I've old, you know, there are different, as I've gotten older, different songs on that record become, they, they take turns being being important yeah. in, in my life. Yeah. Have, you know, and, yeah. and for me, my favorite song off that record is called I've Seen That Movie Too. And it's a, it's one of the slower ones, and it's fucking fantastic, yep. and it just means something to me now. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm getting old and I've seen that fucking movie too, you know? Yeah, right on. But it, what, what a great record. So fast forward another couple of years, and I get the pile of records, and in it is Bachman Turner Overdrive, four-wheel drive, yeah. <clears throat> along with <laughs> Alice Cooper's greatest hits. Ah, okay. So I got two, and then there was some other stuff in there that I, I've forgotten about, but those two. And when I put on four-wheel drive and heard, dun, 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 that was the first time I'd heard that kind of guitar delivered power chord. And... I think I was in fifth grade at that time, grade five. <laughs> See the fucking maple leaf, folks? <laughs> grade five. I was eating pancakes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it changed me. <laughs> it changed me. And, and although nothing happened, I became sort of obsessed with that sound okay and and also i had you know alice cooper's greatest hits was my first ac record my first coupe and i'm a huge coupe fan by the way Welcome um to my nightmare <laughs> yeah and that was when i lost it because i he let go of his original band i was so mad yeah, at yeah him. he did i was so he mad did. he did i was so mad but that record a is a different so, producer too right yeah bob uh bob ezrin i think i think yeah Yep. That record is so yep. good, though. Now, as an adult, it's produced amazingly well. Ezra had his moment in the mid seventies. Yes, he did. We'll visit that later. We'll visit too. that as well. I know where yes. we're going with that yes. one. But you know, like listening to those, you know, and it was a it was a lighter sound, but it was you know, as the coupe. You know, what you mm. say so. Those two records really set me on a path, and it was very shortly after that because I think it's about seventy five 
I was at Miller's, this, this, my uh, family friend's record store. His name was Gary Monroe, I believe, and I'm not sure if he's with us anymore, but thank you. Um, I was just looking through records in a store. What do you think I saw? Kiss, Kiss Alive. Alive. <laughs> That's right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I want that one. First off, like, open the cover. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is this? Before you even hear it, right? Well, what never, is this? I'll never forget that moment because I was just absentmindedly flipping through records, and I saw it, and I'm like, I want this. And, you know, now mm -hmm. we know just mm -hmm. how in influential mm -hmm. and how impactful that record is mm -hmm. to so many of us. Indeed. Indeed. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the way it was recorded, notwithstanding, but that's that's another you know whatever. Who, I don't Who cares, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it was a it's, sonic fury, right? And that was another and that was another thing. Just those fucking chords together. Who says that? <clears throat> the way. Th oh my god! So just for a little side, the way that it wasn't Ezra, right? It was Kramer. Kramer. Yeah, the way he recorded. I guess he multi-tracked <coughs> Aces and Paul's rhythm. Mm -hmm. And being that Paul was playing usually all mahogany guitars, Ace had the LP, a little brighter. Yeah. But that the way he mixed the power chords on there, I've never heard outside of maybe Rush All the World's a Stage, something mm -hmm. kind of similar. Yeah. But the power of those power chords on there. Oh. And, and when and funny, a little one more side. Uh, in 1990, or, I'm sorry, uh, 2012, when I was talking with Paul when he was designing the Starfire guitar, he said to me, I'm trying to recapture my rhythm tone from alive. Wow. And, I, and that's what he kept... And remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was... He, well, he wanted to go back to All Mahogany. I think it was probably more about the production. Uh -huh. But boy, that's those it. power chords, man. I mean, just, just hearing them At together. High volume? Yeah. Oh. I, I think that's another key, too, is, you know, Marshall's pushed, push, old school, you know. How do you want to hut the sound? Well, everything on 10. 10. You know what I mean? 10. Yeah, Kramer, Kramer, was, Kramer was a genius. Yeah, he was. Too, though. Yeah, he was. I mean, he had it. Yeah. Okay. Ace, so continue, sir. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, but when I heard that, I mean, you know, everything changed again, and <clears throat> and and then after that, it was, you know, I've started getting all the, I got the records I would be getting. I'd be getting the cheap tricks, and I'd be getting the Aerosmiths. Fuck yes, seventies Aerosmith. Mm, my God. Rocks. You know, ACDC. You know, like I got all the stuff, and it just, I was going down a really good road, but I didn't. I didn't have any support from the family in that they were they were seeing something. Maybe my friend Gary saw something in me, but it wasn't it wasn't voiced to my my mom and step goof. Uh, that's another. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <But> did, <laughs> we'll did just you do that and throw that in the corner for yeah. another time. Right mm -hmm. on. But did but had you picked up the guitar at that point? Yet? No. Okay. No. Okay. And there was and that's what I mean by there was no support. I didn't even understand that I could actually go and i could that i could actually own a guitar i that made no i had no concept but i was the world's best fucking air guitarist at like 10 <laughs> years old you know i just looked at pictures and i knew and i i knew i knew yeah mm -hmm. but i didn't know mm -hmm. but i knew but you knew you knew i knew <laughs> i knew you know i know <laughs> fuck yeah gnu <laughs> <laughs> okay um, but so it just it's you know, I'm always thankful to this family friend because he, I, I'm pretty sure he saw something and and no question. gave me music, and it definitely it triggered that thing in me. And it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I realized that I want to play an instrument, you know, and I st I, I wanted to play drums. So I got you know, <clears throat> why? Just to back up for a second. Why? Yeah. Well, just hold on. So my mom, who's uh, uh, not a pianist, a pianist, but uh. <laughs> Anyway, I had to take fucking organ lessons. So I'll just oh! cut to the chase. <laughs> All right. So Ooh. here's me Ouch. Ouch. doing the can can on two keyboards with the bass pedals and the fucking the wall the volume. <laughs> you know, destroyed me. I fucking hated it. Eventually, so that's the end of that story. That's that's where that tangent stops. That's where it ends. So I got into drums and I did that. Any video of that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so I got it. I got into drums for a very short time, and and then I decided, why? I, I don't know. Oh, uh, so it wasn't a, wasn't a, a rock drummer at that moment that pushed you that direction. No, I just I wanted to take drum lessons. I guess maybe maybe I had inner demons that needed to come out somehow. Okay. You know, pounding. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was a it was a wacky time as a child, and that's that's an entire different conversation mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and a lot of things sort of happened in my life at that point where where 
music became my escape from shit that I didn't like. And maybe that's not so uncommon with many of us, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll go forward a few more years and this is, I think we're in like 78 now. I remember just just popped into my head. I remember going to the record store when uh, when Aerosmith draw the line the day it came out and buying it. Seventy nine. Fucking, <laughs> fucking love that record. Oh my gosh, yes. it's so immense. The cover yeah. was so cool too. White, oh yeah, the drawing on classic. It. Yeah. I can't remember that guy, that fellow, that name, but he's he's done so much fantastic artwork. Yeah. He, he died not too long ago. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta get my. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, wow, that tangent for Aerosmith just took me right down. So you really dug them, huh? Yeah, I did, and, and I still do. I mean, when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm reaching for the record player, and, yeah. and I do reach for the record player often. It's I generally reach for '70s hard rock. Right. And and what about Aeros that band? Was there Aerosmith is is really at the top of the at the list at that time. What about that band? Was was I don't know some particular thing or the whole collective? Something touched me when I was younger Got and, it. and stayed with me. Got it. You know, yeah, even yeah. though they fucking let me down so badly in the '80s. Yeah. And and have continued to do so. Up they all kind of <laughs> do though. But but at the same time, you got to give them credit for for doing that about face and I don't know you know how they how they did that, mm -hmm. but they did it. <clears throat> But there's something about that music and that album in particular, and uh, you know, get your wings and rocks and and toys and Attic, they're, all, they're all fantastic records. Um, Live bootleg, that one, that one blew my socks off too. Sick as a dog, you know. Dream on is probably the best version of Dream on. Drink ever rolling. Oh man, oh that's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> it was around that time that I'm like, I'm like, I want to play guitar, you know, and. At this point, I was air banding in my room as many hours of the day as I could, and you know, my mom would. I remember my mom would walk in frequently because that's what they do when you're young. <laughs> yeah. right? I just walk right in, and I'm like, I'm like this. <laughs> For a pen and paper, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, at one point, at one point, uh, <clears throat> my room was. This is when I was like about eighth grade, grade eight. <laughs> and I was in full kiss mode. Nice. And um, and I had I had I bought these outdoor spotlights at the local hardware store, and I put them in my closet and nice. in a couple other places in my room. <laughs> and so when they sh when they when I turned them on, they'd shine through the slats of the of the closet door, and they'd look That's all awesome. fucking cool. That's and then so I just awesome. I'd air band Kiss Alive, or I think it was Kiss Alive Two, yeah, or, or yeah, uh, yeah. Rock and Roll Over at that point. Uh -huh. And um, <clears throat> during that time, I was getting a little older, and I started getting a little bit of trouble. Nothing serious ish but uh we had a fort this is by this time we're living in leduc alberta mm -hmm. and we had a we had a fort me and a few of my friends out in a field against a fence against a wheat field but there's a little like a little cove of trees and we built our little fort in there and we had a five gallon it was like a um not a paint bucket but a uh like a tar bucket or something like that that we used for a fire <laughs> fire <laughs> tar fire <laughs> and we had we had a fire one day and I guess we left and we didn't put the fire out and uh, the fire burnt down the, or burnt a large part of the field next door. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I didn't see it, I wasn't there, but I sure heard about it. Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> so. Um, and I got in a lot of trouble, rightfully so. Really? And my punishment, uh -huh. and this is the day, a couple of days before Kiss Meets the Phantom was to be on TV, my punishment was I couldn't watch it. No. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my bedroom was right next to the, the family room where we watched TV. And I had one of those little, the little cassette recorders, you know, the, the, the push buttons. I used to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I know where you're and going. I, I pushed it up against the door and I recorded Kiss Meets the Phantom. And, and until I saw the movie years after that, I only knew the movie because I'd memorized every fucking line from yeah, this cassette that yeah. I recorded. You never actually saw the video. I never. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was really bummed. I mean, the, you know, as an adult now, the 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 punishment was fitting because I, I, you know, I wasn't now it should be punishment to go watch it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, Star Child. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's in the park. <laughs> <laughs> there was an African American guy that played Ace as a stunt double yeah, in that I know. movie. Did you know, know. that? Yeah. 
man, you wore the makeup well, man. You know, I guess so. Everybody was kung fu fighting, <laughs> kung fu fighting. <laughs> Paul Lind Halloween special. So, I could I mm. could tell you all kinds of stories, but I didn't start playing guitar until I was seventeen or eighteen. Wow. Okay. I didn't actually get a guitar. Right. So things transpired and went on, <clears throat> and I think I was in grade ten. I got my grade ten. <laughs> <laughs> me and Ricky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> me and Ricky. I don't think Ricky got his great. <laughs> no, I, think, I think I think he tried, but it didn't quite work out. <laughs> oh, um, I was I was guess I was I was somewhat delinquent. I I don't know, but I got sent to private school. Okay, and um, how that, that was go? that was one of the worst experiences yeah, in my life. I bet. Um, you know, I I don't like to think of myself as a greaser but when i got put in that situation mm. they were the socias i was the greaser mm -hmm. we call yeah. them burnouts down here yeah yeah cool heads the heads, heads. Oh, that yeah. was heads jed the head that was one of my names <laughs> <Jed>. <laughs> some of my sold souk friends <laughs> um, that's awesome that's but so I, got, awesome. I got sent away and you know and i was in i was in a, a really i guess one of the nicer private whatever it was a boarding school private yeah. school and yeah. there's a lot of rich kids for lack of a better term and they they hated i was hated upon arrival and uh that was really difficult for me because i'd had a circle of friends in in vancouver that you know i was chummy with and all right. of a sudden i was i was in a different environment where i was universally not liked you know and and it was it fucking hurt so bad um <clears throat> so one of my friends, when I was getting sent away, one of my friends, oh man, one of my friends, he had an older brother who played guitar. When I was going away, he gave me his older brother's guitar and said, pay me, pay me $200 later for it. <laughs> <laughs> the brother sold the older brother's guitar to you on credit. <laughs> I, I, th I think so. He still owes him 200 bucks. <laughs> I, I, and that's how the story ends. <laughs> that, that oh, I'm so, sorry. That is sorry. So awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> so oh the, shit, man. And this is I think seventy <laughs> nine. What kind of guitar was it? It was a fender. What was a fender? Uh, uh, fender it was a fender. Um Starcaster. Yeah, music master. Fender oh. Music Master. Okay. And I'd never played guitar before, but I you know, I was grateful, naturally, and when I got to private school, I had that guitar. I had a record player. Uh, actually, I think maybe it might have been my dorm mates who had a record player. But I had, at that point, I had um, two records. I can't remember what the other one was. But the one I do remember is I had I had Power Age by ACDC. Mm -hmm. There was no speakers on this turntable. And everybody hated me, so I sat in my room as as much as I could. And I just put the put the needle on. And, you know, if you put you play a record without speakers. You can hear speakers, something you ambiently. Can, you yeah. can hear it. And I learned how to play guitar that way. Wow, wow. that's amazing! Yeah. I taught. I figured. Yeah. I taught myself. How about that? And so, Sin City was the very first good song I ever learned on guitar. Wow. Naturally, it, dear to my heart to this day, as is that entire record. So, did someone show you like a two a two finger power chord? No, nobody showed me anything. I just figured it out. Not even how to tune a damn thing. No, no. Wow. If if and if and if they did, wow, I don't remember. <laughs> and that's and that's you know yeah. that's gospel i i yeah i don't remember i just remember you know like listening like as, you're obsessed like cupping my ears and yeah i was obsessed really really mm -hmm. truly obsessed mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so <laughs> yeah, the ne the next little bit is is confusing but i finally ended up with my dad and his family in right. souk bc right um i was 18 so i got out and uh <clears throat> that was when i got my first amplifier i got speakers for my fucking record <laughs> and notice how the amp came before the record player speakers yeah. <laughs> and and i and i sat in my room at you know with my dad i hadn't seen my dad at that point for nine years oh my god and that's another part of my life story that's yeah. I'm not so sure I want to go there right. in this particular well, sure. episode, sure. but sure. there was a lot of shit that happened sure. in that time, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful to, that I got to where I was. Um, <clears throat> my dad and my my stepmom they weren't super supportive. My dad was a very much a man's man worked at the worked at the 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 lot the, uh, the the sawmill, you know, and I was working in the sawmill at the during the summertime, and uh, 
cleaning the green chain and, and crawling underneath just the grossest collection of timber and muck mm-hmm. and sap detritus and it was, <laughs> it was intense and i bet yeah it was but it was it was work experience you know sure sure absolutely um but at that time the the i had a guitar i had an amp i had a stereo and i had the records and that's i just i taught myself to play by listening to records and that's still you know again to this day that's still how i practice is i just play along with my favorite record right, you know and right. and uh um, if you want blood, you got it by ACDC is probably the record I play along to the most. That's your go-to. That's my go-to. That's my go-to record for just about everything now. Okay. It's just, it's, it's the perfect, perfect, uh, melding of, of aggression and, and excellent playing. And, and it just all comes across much like kiss alive too. I love mm-hmm. playing to that one too. But, alive two? No, alive, oh, alive one, say, alive, alive two, never, you know, making love was really the only song in that record that really did it for me because the guitar sounded much more ferocious all american Especially, man was a good song and i'd like to hear oh, it live oh yeah but that side four was great yeah side four well, was yeah great. You, mostly that dave, right, Clark, right, that dave Clark right. five song at the end there any yeah. way you want it i'm like my mother yeah. loved it <laughs> my mom goes i think i heard that song in my youth hard luck woman <laughs> was pretty was pretty banging too yeah you know yeah i get it. yeah you're right dr love it's just you're when right. you hit the chords you know when that when those when they rang sound, together it, at the right re- that wasn't didn't a lot sound the same no it, never, it didn't and we knew it who produced that one was it also ezrin i don't know that's don't an know. that's an excellent question yeah, it's hugely different sonically, right? Yeah, here goes Fred. He's on his phone. No, but sonically, though, it's different. Yeah, it is. It, it just, is. yeah. One's really it's, in your face and will power chords will break your eardrums. Mm-hmm. And the other one had like a tinge of... Uh, it sounded more like an arena, you know. It was exciting, though. There was a... a like, we anticipated the album, so it was an excitement with listening to yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no Kiss album, you know, ever came... You alive. Know, came yeah. close to alive, you yeah. know, and... You know, and Destroyer is such a fantastic record. Uh-huh. It's so com- such a completely different animal. <clears throat> so I don't want you to get too far ahead in the story because I want to yeah, ask you. Did, was I, Ru- I, I, could, I have so many no, avenues no, I can was, go so, down. So was Rush a part of your lexicon back then? No. No. Thank you. Rush. Thank you. Rush. Let, so Canadian. Rush. Anything, anything, and I hate to use the term lightweight. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I like that. Oh. Let, oh. Me, oh. let me finish my fucking <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Bra- he said that <laughs> but rush uh led zeppelin pink floyd N- beatles any love, any love of those beatles. big bands from that time never became important to me until i got older and was able to appreciate, appreciate it. it yeah i get it i get it i still don't like led zeppelin but i got a bunch of their records because there's some because they're led zeppelin because they got some legitimately killer songs but i i don't i'm not a jimmy page fan and i'm sorry i'm not fuck off <laughs> <laughs> but i'm most certainly a, a david gilmore fan you know that's me right there uh-huh. right? dave gilmore uh-huh pink floyd had that's a huge wonderful. impact on me as i got, got older it. and got the it. beatles monumental impact yeah you know just as the, I got mo- older. the melodic nature of this stuff right and and while we're and while we're on rush yeah i've been you know we've all seen a lot of concerts over our life and i've seen rush at least i don't know at least a dozen times let's mm-hmm. say and that's not a lot for many rush yeah. fans right but Including every time me. every time somebody asks me what my favorite concert is, it's every time I've ever seen Rush. So they so later in your life they made a huge impact huge on Huge impact. Yeah. See, huge impact. And and still do and always will, you know. Okay. Okay. But I'll, I'll, every Rush show I've ever seen has been the best concert I've ever been to, except my first one, which was Nazareth in 1977. Hair dog. It was <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was that tour, it was the one after that. Um No Mean City, I think it was that yeah. tour 77 in Edmonton. <laughs> what, was, what was the song where they said "son of a bitch" in it? Because no, that, that's that's, that's the dog. So that was early seventies. That I was seventy five. I remember 75. being a little kid, and, and that's and that's another album that fits into that lexicon of it. albums that meant something. You just know? hearing that on DV mm-hmm. back in the yeah. DV's our local heavyweight rock station, and hearing right. that as a little kid, and they're not like breaking it out. That and when um and that and when "Who Are You" by the Who and Dolce would say "Who the fuck are you?" and they mm-hmm. would say that and they leave it in. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, yeah. that's like... My favorite thing is like... That's a lot awesome. Of, you, you, you hear the radio stations that would play, you know, because you're well, so well acquainted with the records, you hear radio stations play, you know, your favorite songs and, and some of these ones that we're talking about, the non-radio edits, you yeah. know, and it'd be so exciting because it's like, that's the real fucking song. <laughs> you know, Just like, a little thing. You know, yeah. like... It was a little thing. Hair yeah. of the Dog's a prime example. Kings and Queens by Earl Smith. Oh, another one where they cut God. out that whole, that yeah. beautiful solo. They cut yeah. out that whole entire section. Yeah. That yeah. stuff used to bother me because yeah. I'm like, that's not the song. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, um, 
So, so let's let's branch off for a second. So, mm-hmm. um, we lost Neil Peart, and yeah, you, you, you talk about that for you. What was what was that like? Tell me what you felt, if anything, mm-hmm. when you heard, and how did you hear? <clears throat> It, I'm sure I heard it just like anybody else. He saw a post or social media, probably. That's how I saw it too. Um, yeah. I was, I guess, I, I'm not devastated. I can't, I can't claim to be devastated because mm-hmm. I wasn't close right. with him, right? Naturally, but it, it's certainly a great loss, and I think maybe being shocked would would fit into that. Although I'm sure his inner circle knew something was up. For years, Perhaps for years, for years before years, that, yeah. you know, well, they kept that private, like effect- and that's, effectively, and, right? And that's that's something that I'm so keen on, especially you know, in, in the world that I've swum in for for years, is like just maintaining that. You know, I know it's hard for people, like you know, it's like say Devin, where he's 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 much more in the public eye, and mm-hmm. and you know, he's he's got to work on that. But I I enjoy my privacy, right. and I don't work hard at it, but it's important to me to not, you know, so a family that that takes takes pains to to be to be private it has my full respect mm-hmm. you know much much along the the whole young family you know with malcolm absolutely right who's my number one hero of mm-hmm. all time <clears throat> mm-hmm. you're not alone there yeah let me share two thoughts i have with neil Pierre. please feel free to respond to sure. this um i i felt a deep sadness in me that went on for days to the point where my wife asked me what the hell is wrong with you mm-hmm. because because they that mm-hmm. band intertwined with kiss in a weird way for me at 76 ah, my life changed in 76 when that when he knows the story 2112 was brought to my house oh, and each and destroyer yeah. on the same day and so different mm-hmm. but yet so perfect right mm-hmm. so it loving them both and but i felt like a little part of my childhood was taken from me only because they were somewhat aloof, didn't do a lot of press, kind of like Prince, mm-hmm. stayed away from the media. <clears throat> yeah. And they were just always a constant mm-hmm. in my entertainment enjoyment. They were always there yeah. with no drama, no band member changes, no nothing. So that's the one part of it. The other part about it was, what about the level of respect that we can have as fans mm-hmm. for Alex and Getty and Neil and that brotherhood of those three guys where mm-hmm. they protected each other yes, they for did. 40 years they in did. the did. press in I mean think about that how rare and, is that and I don't know where I saw it if it was an interview or or one of the one of the movies that was made um where they were talking about how they they shared their royalties and I think it was Getty who said you know it's been three-way split from the very beginning and it doesn't matter if one of us is making coffee and and the other one isn't that day they everybody gets an equal mm-hmm. share no matter what yeah and that's that's been my that's been my like mantra for for my entire every yeah. always that, and that's I've, how ran I've, up, I've ran up against that wall a few times with, I'm sure with, you have. with band members and I'm like if you write the greatest riff in the history of, of music and and I'm making coffee that day it could very well be reversed the very next day so correct. we should be completely equal always correct you know i don't care who's doing what but it doesn't apply to everybody well, look how yeah, that, that's how that's how i see that's how i feel things well, so that's, philosophy, writing with a band. that's sure. philosophy's torn apart so many bands right yeah oh yeah you know i, mean, I want to see my name in print or i, I got to see you know it's just <laughs> i i say it's a ba- i can't play the drums mm-hmm. and yeah i write the music i write the lyrics but I'm going to give the drummer credit because he wrote the drum line. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that, and that's exactly. I feel that a, that a band should. It's a band. Split. It's a band. Ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one person wrote the lyrics. One person wrote the. Yeah. You know. The, or the or music. that day that di- that guy did fuck all. He had to go help his mom. You know. Exactly. Bury the cat or whatever. You know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's it's equal and it's and and. And Rush, I think, Rush exemplified that and, and, and exactly, and I think that that's probably what their staying power was. You, like you said, they protected each other in yeah. the press. You didn't hear one, no, anybody say one bad Never. thing about the other person. Tight, exactly. But that, I don't think I was. I think one time in the '90s, late '90s, I think Alex was in a bar fight with his son in Miami. I think mm-hmm. they, they both got liquored and got in a bar fight, and it was a little news blurb before the internet. Right. It happened. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I don't ever remember anything controversial with that band. Evan, you're ever. Canadian. You may have heard something. I, we well, didn't hear anything down here. I, I, I heard I heard one or two things. Um, I, I used to play for a, a, a Canadian uh, sort of a industrial band called Frontline Assembly. Mm-hmm. I played guitar for them for a number of years during Strapping's early early years. Right, right, right. And uh, good friends of mine to this day. But one of our bus drivers back then was had been Rush's driver back in the day for 
for whatever how many tours but yeah he laid some some stories on okay. me and okay. they generally involved alex and shenanigans <laughs> but it was it was it was shenanigans like everybody else does yeah. shenanigans. Tour bus shenanigans it wasn't general. zach wild kind of shenanigans <laughs> <laughs> it might have been it might have been yeah <laughs> but you know but it, you, you thought nothing it's like oh you know you yeah, you have a little, a little bit much fun. to drink, and you have some fun, and who gives a fuck? You, yeah, you throw yeah. Up like I, I knock, mean, I knock that motherfucker out. So it's what? your God given right <laughs> being on tour to be able to do whatever you want. <laughs> Are we ever going to see another band like that in terms of like three guys staying together that long, making that kind of impact? That's so unique and kind of weird. Yeah, make it. I don't know because I'm. Yeah, go ahead, Freddie. Well, it's like a, it's like a, uh, a BTO kind of thing. You yeah. got these three piece bands. Out of Canada, they come out and just you know they, they throw down triumph, you know, and, and they they make big noise. You know, well, Rush was different. Like but, Rush was a combination of Floyd, Pink, uh, like Pink Floyd, yes, mm-hmm. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and but heart. Like a, but they a, had heart and heart, but a, but a cooler version of all of those. Does that yeah. make any sense? That mm-hmm. somehow resonated with kids yeah. at a time in society well, when they were accessible. Well, mm-hmm. the thing with Rush is they played all the notes that all those other bands. Didn't play, <laughs> yeah. and then they played them <laughs> Rush a thousand times. You know, Rush is, yeah. It's 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 really hard to, to draw comparisons and and to talk about them because they were so unique. But Rush, yeah. There's five stages of that band. Their history. There's five stages of that mm-hmm. band. I mean, and, and you and again, you growing up in Canada, you know. Believe me, they hit hard in the states. It started, yeah. I think, in Cleveland sure. on a radio station. It just went, and Pittsburgh was a big part of their story. Mm-hmm. But, but man, it was like you know, if if you were a young kid mm-hmm. in the seventies here, and then share with me if it's the same for you, and you told people you dug Kiss, you dug Kiss and Rush, but you didn't put ACDC or Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple in that, you were kind of looked at like, what the fuck are you listening to? <laughs> right. You were almost stereotyped as weird. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because you, Deep Purple's not a band, not not even a band that's entered into my mind yet in this conversation today because I was never a fan, and I'm still not a fan. So right, right. I love Richie Sambuca. I mean, uh, which, which <laughs> black <Blackwood. laughs> I, I hear love he, some Sambuca. I, I, hear, I, hear he has, I hear he has a little bit of an ego. That's I what heard. I hear. That's, that's what, what I, I hear too. But you know, yeah. some. I don't know. It was a few years ago, there were some of his solos going around. Um, uh, just the stems of his solos by themselves. They're fucking amazing, oh, yeah. man. Oh, he's skilled. Blackmore is no joke. You know, oh, he's no skilled. joke. So he's... maybe he's entitled to his ego. But you know, there, there's there's a, a handful of songs of theirs that I really loved, but they were never heavy enough for me. Mm-hmm. And and that's one of those things. You know, with some of those other bands we talked about earlier, where you kind of you came on board a little later in life but deeper i've just never been able i think they're very fucking heavy but they're not heavy with guitar they're, they're not heavy with or, organ he, it's, it's the john fucking lord come john on lord's organ Am I right? it's, it's the I mean, okay. part okay I, I withdraw some of my statements <laughs> <laughs> you too you too <laughs> <laughs> because strapping young lad went through so many fucking keyboard players over the years I mean, it was it was just a revolving door. Yeah. I, I grew to I grew to, and they were yeah. all on my side. They were all in front of my amps, and I was like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> right? We can swear <laughs> as often as you'd like. I, I got, I, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. Now, why can't they be like John Lord? Because uh-huh. there was only one. There was only one. You're right. Yep. So, so, so ti- I, ti- I, time out, time out before we yeah. continue because uh, we have a surprise for you. We heard Ace Fraley, shock me! Hey, he might yep. walk in the door here. You know how he's gonna walk in the door. Uh, <laughs> that was good. That was actually very, very, very good. Hey, what are you guys uh, doing in here? Um, I heard you like single malt. Yeah, I do. So, uh, fifteen second story. I had a great customer and a friend, Robert Chapman, military guy, big supporter of Boogie Street, the veterans. Um, you know, the Allied Power, great guy. <clears throat> Gifted Fred and I over the years interesting gifts, mm-hmm. wonderful gifts. Mm-hmm. One of them was some scotch, single malt that is 19 years old back in 2007. Mm-hmm. And he's always asked me to drink it. And he's always said, Have you drunk that yet, Eric? I said, Nah, it's still sitting around. Mm-hmm. Today we're going to bust one open for you. I, can't, f- I, it, I couldn't think of a better time to do it. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. What, so, what an honor. So, Robert, again, <laughs> sir, thank you so much. Robert, so, for your service. <laughs> thank you. And your friendship. Yeah. He probably owns about 30 of my guitars. So it's uh, That's amazing. amazing. Guy. So there it is. Put that up on the camera, Fred. So this is what we got. We have some... It's uh, a NATO, right? Old, it's, commemorative? It's, it's, com- uh, it's commemorative. It was bottled in 2000. And it was distilled in 1990. Bottled in 2009. Just so we're looking at... Uh, 
Oh, it was aged 19 years, and that was math. 11 years ago. So we're looking at a 30-year-old bottle that hasn't been cracked yet. I feel honored to be part of this. <laughs> and one more thing. Think of a better after, person. And after we drink this, or we drink a part of this today, mm-hmm. the rest of it is going home with you, sir. No, my, my no gift we to can't you. do that. We my can't do that. You, my gift mm-hmm. to you. My gift to you. 100%. And I know Robert will absolutely approve. Robert, thank you. Yep, there you right. go. Go. There you go. I'm going to break the seal. I think... I think so you need a corkscrew, Fred? Uh, no, it's good. It's uh, I don't know what it is. Here it is. Oh, there you go. Ah, oh, look at that. Get out of that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> get in my belly. Get in my, get in my belly. Get in my belly. Get in my belly. Right, this is, Jed, a, this this is my a pleasure. This Jed. is a treat. There you are, my friend. Salute. Salute. We're not there yet. Wait, hold on. No, no, we're not. Oh, 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 wait. oh that's yours. That's yours. My oh, I can't I, have. Yeah, that I'm, one's, I'm I don't host. drink anymore. Don't I'm tell me that one. That one's got <laughs> SARS. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> coronavirus, coronavirus, <laughs> whatever the newest disease yeah, the, is. Yeah, the disease of the year. Right, 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 right. Um, all right, friends. All yeah, right, so yeah. I got the Pennsylvania one. You get the. We actually have to. We have to cheers on this. Yes. Yeah. Salute, salute. God cheers. bless you, man. Thank you so much. It's got Nostrovia. Nostrovia. Mm, let's just smell it first. Holy fuck! That's what I did. I smelled. I was like, oh, holy wow, dude. Let's just do the parental review. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> wow. None wow. of this fucking A, man. <laughs> John, what doesn't get any smoother than that? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's... Moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> a deep, reverent moment of silence. Wow, man. That, uh... In a world. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> of junk booze. <laughs> <laughs> An overinflated ego. <laughs> a single malt rises. <laughs> Through the ashes of Richie Blackmore. <laughs> <laughs> Richie Sambuca. 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 <laughs> that, that could lead on to the Triumph the Comic Insult. Though. Yeah, well, I want to ask you about when we're done. We're done sipping here. We're going on to we're going to talk about Triumph, and I wanted to ask you about oh April God. Wine. Oh, fuck yes. We got to talk Canadian bands, man. And uh, oh, of course. They were certainly Brian of Adams. Course. Brian Adams. I'm all over that conversation. Brian Adams. I not quit. So much. Not, <laughs> not, not so I'm much. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Dude, he wrote songs for Kiss in the early '80s. or co-wrote some songs with Kiss in the early '80s. And I remember hearing that, and and, and that's yeah. interesting. Although, do you like Creatures of the Night? I do like yeah, Creatures of the that's Night. That's like maybe one of their best. It, it's it's certainly their heaviest. Ooh. That's Fuck not yeah. that's not one you buy in the stores. So you, you, you look at that later. That's I, not I that what it was not bought in the store. I'll leave it at that. It's oh. in my possession, and I won't tell you much more than that. But that's <laughs> no. not that's a, that's a, not one that was bought in the store. Eric bought every copy of it because <laughs> there, every, every one of them was still in the record store. And he's like, "Look, I have to have it. I gotta have it. I, gotta, yeah. I need to bump, bump the numbers a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> you know, Eric. That's thank you for buying all the t- <laughs> Creatures of the Night albums. Okay, Paul. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Got you one. He does Paul Stanley better than Paul Stanley <laughs> can oh, do Paul Stanley, especially now. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I do like that record <coughs> a lot. Lip sync. No, I don't talk about that. And, and I really like Eric Carr's drumming on that. I, it, I think it's fantastic. They recorded it in a bathroom. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, they but met in the ladies' room. Makes no, it was recorded in a bathroom. <laughs> did they Michael, meet, meet you? They meet me. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. <laughs> meet, meet me in the ladies' room. Meet, meet me in the ladies' room. Meet, meet <laughs> room. <laughs> where can I even go with that, Fred? <laughs> no, he would do this stupid shit. When I was working with Paul, mm-hmm. not in front of Paul, <laughs> but we used to shoot a lot of really early video mm-hmm. in Boogie Street before like there was an iPhone. Yeah, so we're shooting like Meg MPEGs and low resolution stuff. But we start, we did the whole weekly video update with like a three thousand dollar camera I bought. Jed, it was nuts. <laughs> like yeah. we're doing, we're doing all this high end video for the era. Mm-hmm. And like we're doing these video things, and Fred's like he's talking, and Paul's standing. I'm like, do you realize if Paul fucking hears this? You, sh- we, we can't do this. Yeah, we're shot down. Well, if we do it now, and here's my... Maybe I he can go in and sing anymore, for him. He doesn't care anymore, believe me. He's like, I can sing for kids. Somebody needs to go sing for him because he ain't singing. <laughs> yeah. We're all adults we'll now. Leave it that, yeah. We're all adults now. <laughs> we hope, right? I saw... The last time I saw Kiss was... Uh, uh, it was in Chicago. I think it was. I saw you. Then. 2014. Yeah, we did. We, we saw each other. Because Vimic, my band that I was in at the time, yep. was playing there. I guess... Well, they were actually to- singing then. Yeah. Really, singing. but I was, and the Mashuga guys were there, who yep. I've been dear friends with yeah, forever. Yeah. And so I think it was me, Thomas, and, and Jens. We were out in the audience. And we're like, ah, let's go see Kiss. You know, we're big fans. And uh, it would there. I think it was like three songs in. It was Love Gun, 
Tom's and Tom, a, Thomas, look, to. Thomas looks at me and he's like, you want to go? And I'm like, <laughs> I think and, it, and it sucked. Thing. I didn't want to, but we left. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're here. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So I love that band. You know, you know my history. You want to know them? how much I love Kiss? There's an ace tattoo right there. Oh, Unbelievable. take that jacket Look off. at that farmer's Look tan. Look at that, man. Look at that. Look love, at that. Love gun. So you, so you get it then. So you get it. Um, for me, Stanley was the guy. Yeah, he was like uh, he's he's for me. Yeah. It was the guy because I wasn't a guitar player as a kid. Ace Ace is my guy, but right. Paul Stanley was so fucking close right behind on. behind yeah. behind Ace. Well, and and to me, like I always say, he wrote the the songs that were a soundtrack of my life. Yeah, and you know sometimes in life all things line up. I'm not the biggest religious guy, but things just sometimes like karma will work for you if you're good if you're good, right? Mm. And when the Washburn thing happened, and Fred kept saying, "Hey, ask him to bring Paul back," you know, and I'm right. like, "They're not going to do that." And they did it. Wow, I thought it was a joke. And when they brought it back, and I got the first call with him, like you know, like my life changed. We How went, amazing is that? that? There's a picture of uh, that before we left for the show. That was Fred, mm-hmm. and then Fran Stuber, Paul's tech, right there. That was the first time we we were with Paul that night. Yeah. The point was, <clears throat> what a what a great like eight year run, right? Yeah. Great run. Yeah. He treated me and my family, Freddie. He treated us unbelievably well so when i say the things i'm about to say it's not personal yeah i mean the guy the guy helped me earn a living Mm -hmm. and i think we've also freddie we've done a hell of a job for him Mm -hmm. yeah yeah over the years with you know correcting some washburn issues my point to you is i can't dig the lip sync man and and starting in 2009 i saw the voice deteriorate and god bless him he was trying so hard but it was authentic even though it might have been bad at least you know he was giving it the very best he had yeah but to go on now, like to whatever they they're doing, and they're doing so much tr- backtracking, and <clears throat> it's fake, and they rallied against that. I mean, they were a band that I rallied know. against. I know. They just did. I don't even get though, it. Even though they were one of the first bands to do it, really, I think, like back in the when you know when Peter was kind of off his game. No, no question. But All I right. mean, Paul and Gene prided themselves on being authentic, and that yeah. was a thing. And you saw that. Even and when they they were so good. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. those like, voices complemented each other so yeah. fuck. All, all of them sang and th- and great. Think, and think about this: Fran used to tell me, Fran Stuber would say to me, "He got Eric. You know, we still do sound checks every fucking show. Right? These guys will drag themselves down there and go through. Like they want to. They want to play. They want to play. They want to give the best shows they yeah. can. Yeah. And I think that they they, in their mind they're still doing that because they can't do it. So they're they're enhancing it with. But but I mean, have you seen any of the clips of what's going on now with them? Have you seen any of the? Not, not, and, have you and heard things? Have you heard I, about lip syncing? I've n- no. Well, not. I have, but I haven't paid paid any attention yeah. to it because okay. I just. It's not that I don't care anymore. I just I'm just. You I'm, don't care I'm, anymore. I'm, I'm going. I'm going this way. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I love Kiss, obviously. You but know, that's but not the Kiss that you remember. That's not the Kiss I remember. And I choose to be there yeah, and that's where i'm at yeah. and that's hard and it's really hard for me because we <laughs> quit working with washburn and paul in 14 when he went to ibanez i've been had yeah i've been had sorry <laughs> i've been had sorry <laughs> sorry uh, i wouldn't go my there was an offer mexican put, gym there was an <laughs> offer put on a table through some liaisons yeah. between different parties and mm-hmm. would i would i well, follow him there and some opportunities put on my plate. Like, we could do custom stuff like you're doing here. And I had had my feel when I didn't go. And I didn't go because of what him and I discussed was that it was it was that company. Had it been Gibson, <clears throat> mm-hmm. had it been ESP, mm-hmm. had it been something else, mm-hmm. we might have thought about it. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and But it was that firm at that time. Interesting, yeah. And we just made a decision. It was I, only, I only learned down. about the, the, the history of Ibanez just recently, how it was... A kind of a, a Japanese comp- company that that used the the fellow who made their guitars, who was Mexican, I believe. I can't mm-hmm. remember that, but mm-hmm. and then used that name to get into the American. Uh, exactly right. And yeah. it's and it's wow. They copied Gibson products in the beginning. The Honda and they yeah. had Honda was fucking, one of their spinoffs. Did you know? That? I believe. I was so happy. I was one of the only guys that never had a fucking Honda. I, I had, had one. I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Honda two. A few. A few. Honda my, one. I had West tones. Those. <laughs> <are> the, <laughs> And he's going to be mad at us for having yeah. all those we're no, no, say. man, there's no <laughs> argument there. So I'm not. But yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, the Iceman's mm-hmm. the sexiest shape I probably ever damn seen. Damn straight, damn fucking straight. It's, but it was just um, that's the um, only that's the only that's the only Ibanez guitar I've ever really like fucking gassed for. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some uh, of their early, few, some of their few. like their earlier like Karina copies were, yeah. were pretty yeah. pretty spectacular no as well. You know, they make, they make a good. J- Pat Metheny <coughs> and George Benson had jazz boxes through them forever, and I think yeah, they, right, they right. sell pretty well too. Right. Yeah. But 
Yeah, we, that's that's interesting to hear. I didn't. It was yeah. a hard conversation. Yeah. Not, we'll, we'll bridge this later, but mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. after the Bernie debacle. I and I saw the writing on the wall, and it was the hardest conversation I ever had. Was actually spurred by Paul leaving, mm-hmm. going to Ibanez and looking him in the eye and saying he wanted to continue. Right. I had pretty much. I'd had it. I needed a break, and it was the Ibanez uh, acquisition of Paul Stanley that pretty much ended our 15 year run. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, right, right, pretty much in this room. Yeah, Yeah. it it didn't look like this. (laughs) But pretty much, I was looking at pictures of you with you standing on the ladder trying to see when you guys were building the room. You're you're like. like, It oh, was, I got it, an archive. It, it, Don't it, it worry. Was, it was that. It was that long, long, long room down there, yeah. and we had the one beside us. And, and then he takes such great picture. He's so photogenic. So I have, I'm, oh, I'm just going to put Jed. this here. Yeah, I got an archive. I got a f- archive. Okay, so oh, okay. this is your story. Let's go back. No, to no, your no. Story. This is this is good, man. I love no, this. So, so t- your first band. Tell me about your first band. My first band was called The Intruders. It's a good name. Yeah. I like it. And uh, it was I was just out of high school, and it was me and a few of my friends, and uh, we just we did covers. That was it, and we did a full set of ACDC. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we'd play our covers, which in, ran the ran the gamut from Aldo, Aldo Nova to um, actually I don't know if there's Aldo Nova. Fancy. But we did we did How like many songs did he actually have? I don't know, but he you know, uh, just to back up for a second, yeah. when you mentioned Aldo Nova, it's uh, I remember liking him back then, not because of the songs, but because he had good guitar tone. Oh, he had awesome tone. Dun, dun. Yeah. Dun, dun. That was solid and it was, yeah. it was it was it was almost uh, like harken back to that Bachman turned over when I first heard no that question. solid, distorted kind of sound, but it was tight and, and well delivered. I was like, Fuck, this is good. Yep. Anyway, so we, we were a cover band, but we did we do our covers. And um, and then we'd we'd go off stage and and you know I was Angus at the time, which is <laughs> totally incorrect because I've always been Malcolm. I just didn't I didn't know it until I got late until until I realized I couldn't play a lick of lead. Um, That's great. I don't enjoy playing lead guitar. You know I do, but I do you don't? I do play it, but I you don't, don't? Li- I don't like playing lead that? guitar. Yeah, that's another conversation. We'll, we'll get, we'll get to that. Solo over there. I love that. Okay. Uh, uh, dude, come on, really, really Malcolm guy. Young. Boom! I'm really that's school of dude. He he's a human metronome. Yeah, man. So he's all yeah. He's about the the arms, the strong arm, the air in between, knowing how to play it's and when space not to in play. Between. Yeah, it's all play. about that. <clears throat> Rush and, and letting room and and not taking up so much of the frequency spectrum that that the other band is not you know uh, acknowledged. He's a rock. Fuck yeah. Um. So and the intruders and we play, we did a full set of ACDC at then of our regular set and and you know I I had been in private school just previously to that so i still had my private school uniform so i just cut, nice. the, pants, I cut the pants off oh, I, had, I had the jacket with nice. the bags you were angus so i you know but i was angus on a west tone explorer you know <laughs> you make good with the, what the, you the, got the, the metal was instilled early and then i gave up so that, that was my first band and then uh i i guess i wanted more and it, it's 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 so fuzzy those times it for many reasons but uh i wanted to play in another band and and I started looking in the local paper, and there was a local band in Victoria, which was like 20 miles from from Souk, and uh, they were called Northern Thunder. So that was my next band. Okay. And uh, I would hitchhike nice with shit. with my guitar into re- rehearsal as, as often as I could, um, <clears throat> and it lasted about six months. Right before they got their first big show at the local hall. And they kicked me up because they told me, and I'll never forget this, you don't have what it takes. Ooh. Ooh. Doesn't that make you drive? Because that's what it did for I, me. I think I, was, I think I was driven before that. <laughs> but if, it, there was, if it, ever there was an impetus, it st- that was it. It gives you that little, uh, same here. And that I, was your story. I, and I say that. Yeah, that's your story. It's these people saying, you're not good enough. Yeah. You'll never make it. It, it, it. And it literally, I had the drive. Yeah. Like, like you say, you have the drive. But when somebody tells me I can't, yeah. Man, I'm going to ram it I down can. your throat. Yeah. I'm going to show you what I do, and then I'm going to ram it down your throat. I'm going to run you over. I'm mm-hmm. going to stomp on you, and yeah. then I'm going to shit on you <laughs> after I, you know, it, yeah. it, it, and I'm going to shit, and then I'm going to be the nicest guy in the world to you. Absolutely. Because you know what? I knew it all the time. Yeah. And that's how to do it. That's, Look at you. You made it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. You yeah. know. Well, uh, you're having fun. Uh, Jed, I'm having, you, I'm having fun, and my life is is good yep. because you know, and and you made this it. is really funny. You made it. We were in, a, and I wasn't in the car, but my wife and son were in the car. This is just up like a month or so ago, and they were playing strapping on um, uh, XM or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Is it awesome and to hear that on, on the radio? Your own it stuff. It is. Yeah. It is. But 
Eddie, that's my son's name, yeah. and it's not because of Eddie Van Halen. My 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 grandfather's name was Edward, so he's right. named, but his right. his middle name is Malcolm. Go there, figure. There you go. Go <laughs> figure. He looks over at mom, and you know she came in to tell me after he he's goes he's like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for strapping young lad. Wow. And it was and Susanna Susanna that? came in and told me that, and I I cried. Of course, because of course it's absolutely fucking true. As weird as that is, mm. it was it's true. I wouldn't mm-hmm. have what I have now if it wasn't for that band. Mm-hmm. So what more do I need to be thankful for? Right. Yeah. Right? right. That that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with with all of that, you know. Got it. Yeah, I get I, it. You I know, play that all roads game. all I roads led to you know, yeah. 100%. 100%. So who would have thought that, you know, as an adult I'd be, you know, kitty corner to on the continent to where I thought I would be, you know happily married which i never wanted to be mm. but <laughs> funny how that happens but you know everything changes never wanted to be a dad yeah. wow and you and you are a super dad i you, you know something. i just it's not I, about being a super dad it's just like it's what you do yeah and you yes. and you do it happily yes you know yes you and do. maybe i'm a bit of a helicopter parent i'm sorry <laughs> i can hear the rotors <laughs> this is vietnam <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that too. <laughs> yes, he does. But it's you know that's that's essentially you know and and you know when strapping broke up and and you know I've done a bunch of stuff since then. But mm-hmm. it's it's I've I've dipped. But my job, you know, and people are like, what do you do now? Well, I'm a dad. That's that's my job. God bless you, man. You know, that's my job. In, and your mark. Although and you go make it again if you feel like it. Although if you, if you although want there's to. there's a part of my soul, and again, this is these are other conversations yeah, yeah, that go yeah, down yeah, different sure, roads. Sure. But it's like that's what we do here. My soul hurts a little bit because I'm still I'm still searching for a new creative outlet, and I've been searching, and that <laughs> one day mm-hmm. hopefully we'll get there. You know, but I'm a dad. That's my fucking gig, and I fucking love it. I love. Mm-hmm. being a dad i love being mm-hmm. a husband i love mm-hmm. it shows i love it shows i love friend. having i love having the house clean when my wife comes home from work or i don't always make dinner and sometimes she's like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh do you want a salad chop 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 you know <laughs> you're putting all of us in a bad position here you're putting all of us in a bad position there pal. i've learned how to cook as i got an adult as Is i there, became an adult and when i moved to there's philly, a new hobby oh my god philadelphia what a great food city holy well, shit oh, yeah. do you think you know, and I learned so many things. She goes, "You were so white bread Canadian, fucking craft dinner, and you know." <laughs> so, I, and, I'm, and I'm like, "What is, what is?" As an American, I'm asking a Canadian by by simply watching <laughs> Trailer Park Boys. What or, or what is or South Park? What is craft dinner? Craft dinner is what you guys call down here. Uh, what do you guys call macaroni it? Macaroni and dinner? cheese. Macaroni and cheese in a box. The blue box with the, the, the yellow craft, noodles. Craft, craft macaroni and cheese. Craft mac and cheese. That's craft that, that's dinner. That's craft dinner, yeah. I and thought it was a TV dinner. Like no, it's in no, foil. No, and no, 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 no. Craft dinner. Craft, craft it's macaroni strictly, and cheese. Strictly mac. You th- See, you, we don't you call own? that dinner. We call that an accessory to dinner. Yeah, no, it's not. Not when you're poor like I grew up. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's craft. It's not, it's not even that. Yeah. <laughs> I still enjoy it occasionally, but yeah, you know, you, you open the box, you throw half half the noodles away immediately. That way, it's more cheesy. That's that's right. And then and then I'm like, wait, well, maybe I can just add cheese to this. Wait, is, I, I buy two oh, boxes. Fuck. I buy two boxes. Throw the, the both cheese packets in one. There you go. And, and that's Boom. how to do it because you, know, you buy them two for one at, at you know at the local supermarket. You get yeah. them once, and you just double cheese it. Double cheese, man. I am so lost. Or right now. a cheese whiz. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you, you can cheese whiz, whiz man. Yeah, whiz man. is good on yeah. a cheese steak. Oh, but yeah. fuck. I love you know, it. Randy just squirts that in his mouth, right? Randy just. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, I have a certain. There's a part in my heart that likes cheese whiz. It's just not very much. <laughs> it's, it's big in Canada. It's young, big. You, you, can really buy, you can buy it in, bar, in jars this fucking big for like <laughs> yeah, eight bucks, man. Really? Yeah. It's Canadian dollars, though. Yeah, so. <laughs> So three fifty. <laughs> but so here's one of my food things and you guys are gonna be like, what the fuck? Just like my wife. I love peanut butter. Peanut butter is my like my go to food. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I no. love it as much now as I did when I was a baby, but really? I love peanut butter and cheese. It's an amazing oh. combination. Oh. Oh. Sounded like peanut butter and apples, but I never no, no, tried no, 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 peanut no. butter and cheese. Oh, dude. Did you just say peanut, peanut butter and cheese? Wine, peanut cheese, butter. and some peanut butter. Fuck, it's so good. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you right now, get on the snake right now. Go home, put out, spread some peanut butter out, get some nice sharp American on there. 
sharp cheddar. Not I was just American sharp, cheddar. I was no, like no, no, sharp no, no, American. American. You know? <laughs> like some sharp cheddar. I just opened up the single, the craft single. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> garbage. Okay. That's garbage. Wait, it's probably wait, in, in, wait back, in, back in Canada, before I knew what American cheese was, that's yeah. all we had was those fucking... I call it rubber cheese, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, but pro- that's on the bus. That's what you're yeah, Sandwiches. It, 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 but, so mm. peanut butter and one of those slices between bread in the microwave for 30 seconds, speed metal sandwich. Oh. Speed metal Speed metal sandwich. sandwich. No cheese, death metal sandwich. Now, that was me and Byron from, from Strapping. That was our thing. We had speed metal. You want speed metal or death metal? Uh, right. I feel like a death metal today. You yeah. know what? I, I will try this one time. But you have oh. to, it, has to be, it has to be a halfway decent cheese. Cause so, because so it cuts through? Yeah, yeah. Sharp cheese. Or if you're from Canada, and my mom still sends me this, um, I don't remember if you remember, Eric, it's called Imperial Cheese. Yes. I it comes Imperial. in a red tub. Yes. My mom still sends me it, and I still have, I got like three tubs in the, in the fridge at home. That and peanut butter is the most, on a crumpet, is the most amazing fucking what combination. What a crumpet? A, a biscuit. You're from, that's uh, not a biscuit. Uh, well, it's not, not a crumpet. Well, it's, it's a, a crumpet is, it's a British thing. It's, it. Oh, tea and crumpets, right? Yeah. Right. A what, a crumpets, a biscuit? A, no, it's, it's not like a, a biscuit. It's, it's, a, it's a cookie, right? No. What is it? It's, yeah, that's a really excellent question. <laughs> I, that's, I always thought so it was like it's a about, It's about that big. Yeah. Same size as a biscuit. It looks like a biscuit, okay. but it's doughier and thicker, and it's, it's, it's uh, very porous. A cake? No. It's it's strictly bread? it's strictly bread. But it's but it's a baked I don't even know how to explain it. But it with melted butter and you cook them really well on the toaster, I mean that's that's fucking the cat's a pajamas. Crumpet. Crumpet. So now you put peanut I, butter I on that crumpet. <laughs> yeah, biscuits. My, my, my wife flies for American just she's over in Europe yeah. all the time, like yeah. usually in England. Mm-hmm. Well, tell her to go. Tell her to go down to Sainsbury's and get and get some fucking and bring crumpets. them home. I yeah. want some fucking crumpets here. <laughs> I used to be able. There was a super fresh in Philadelphia that I used to shop at, and they they would carry the same crumpets that I bought from this company in Vancouver when I okay. lived in Vancouver, wow. and then and then we moved away, and and I've never. Trader Joe's now has crumpets. They sell crumpets. Next time, they're not the Trader same. Trader Joe's here. Wake, in okay. Wegman's always has all, Wegman. all, all was all ugh, what am i trying oh, to say uh, also has crumpets okay that's the, this stuff kind of kicking in so it's a bready kind of thing <laughs> it's, it's a like, bready thing and it's raised um it's light and fluffy it, it's just like white toast but it's fluffy thick like an english muffin yes but but this thick it's thick oh, and okay. porous so okay. and, and, and kind of spongy okay. so when you you cook it really well and you put butter on it just butter seeps all the way through and it. you put it's, cheese on there oh, i put peanut butter and cheese on it fucking delicious peanut butter and cheese or you can put honey on it or like the classic way is just with butter that's that's anyway wow we are just that's what happens when you come here this 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 is is, this is what we do there's the queen right there you like crumpets honey sure she does well you know that queen's there right because little little johnny's over here right don't fuck with little johnny Mm -hmm. (laughs) did you ever dig them or did you miss that whole thing I missed that whole thing. Me too. Me too. And um, right. I we, missed it. Well, well we talked about that. And, and, and I think it was detrimental in some ways because they're so influential in metal, particularly with metal in the early days. And I was, you know, in the 80s, I was really narrow minded, I think, and just like speed metal, you know, thrash metal. Okay, Not, so, so why was I did, that? What I didn't realize is a lot of my favorite bands had major punk influences. Yeah, the, angst, the angst of it all, right? You know, and I didn't like, really we, see that until I got older. Again, fuck age. All right, so let's 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 go let's go there because mm-hmm. you you probably grew up um, listening and probably enjoying and learning to play music that was kind of off our radar, definitely off my radar. Maybe mm-hmm. not with him so much, but mm-hmm. that whole speed metal like was Metallica early Metal early early mm-hmm. early Cliff Burton era Metallica. Yeah, was that an influence on you? Did you dig it? Absolutely huge influence. But before that, for me, you know, and it just it's it's not because one band was before the other. It's just in the order that I heard them. You right. Know what I mean, right. Who's so before, who's so for them? So from those seventies hard rock bands that we talked about earlier, you know, then I heard then I heard Priest. I heard Priest a little later yeah. on. I know they'd been around for a number of years, but when I heard. Um, actually, it was British Steel was the first album by them I'd ever heard, okay. and that changed my fucking life. And again, another that's another one of my really? top five records, top five of all time. Because and so you had the, Priest and the Maiden. Playing? Just British Steel in particular just has an aggressiveness. It's, it's kind of like Kiss Alive. It's got an aggressiveness, and the songs are good, and it's d- just delivered perfectly. I think I really okay. really love that record. Okay, and so that one really you know and then i kind of went backwards and started discovering more but sure. and then you had maiden and with you know i'm a total paul diano guy okay killers stop R- real quick mm. great band i'm gonna throw the question out that i ask pretty much every metal guest that's ever walked in there. 
Yeah, Spanx is bad. Mm. Uh, but, but anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> Spanx is bad. That era especially. Mm. Mm. If Zeppelin had not recorded Achilles' Last Stand, mm. right, mm-hmm. that particular song, would Iron Maiden be around today? Fuck, that is deep. Wow. They would. They would. A maiden would be around, but that I've never thought about. I never had I've because, never, because that because from his, I know that's Zeppelin, making my boys get Zeppelin, all gravelly and shit because well, it's <laughs> deep. <laughs> well, it's I know so Zeppelin's deep. Zeppelin wasn't your in thing. a world with <laughs> but <laughs> no Achilles last stand. <laughs> but that song was such an incredible. I thought departure from what Zeppelin had done to that yeah. point. Yeah. And it's an, they had a few songs. I won't like say that. it's an opus, but mm-hmm. it's unique mm-hmm. and almost kind of like rush like. Yeah. Later on, yeah, sure. Would that because I hear I hear Maiden directly one million percent in that song. Mm-hmm. I, I have to go home and review this. <laughs> you know get, what? I'll, I'll get, I'll I'll get back. for the review. I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, on that that'll one. be the. But that's but I that's, stumped Jed Simon. You heard it here today. That's an amazing thing because I'd never even considered that, and I never. Do you see you know, any kind of relevance? I, though? I do, but I want to go home and do fucking A B, man. Once in a while, I surprise you, don't I, Fred? He does, but, you know, because you know, I, you've got me <laughs> I, thinking I, about I, it. I think about how Iron Maiden developed, and I'm like, maybe that's kind of more. What, you know, I like that's the punk. I like point. I like the punk rock Iron Maiden with that, with Deano. You know, I love the Killers and, and and the first record. I, I love Number of the Beast. And so and get past that. after that. After that, I'm done. You know, that's that's it. So Bruce isn't your guy. Nah, I like him, but I just don't like the Warble. <laughs> Fucking human siren. <laughs> human siren. <laughs> I hear he flies a mean plane. I'm sure he does. Dude, yeah. You know, I like I like that was I saw Maiden on the number tour, which was fucking oh, amazing. amazing. I'll never they forget it. A good show. Even like I, five years later, they were doing a good I've show. I've always got you know, and, yeah. and and you watch. I just watched something on Maiden recently. Uh, it was an older show. I can't. It was, it was a behind the music or yeah, a, yeah, um, yeah. You know, classic albums or something like that. But uh, it was really informative. And they've always kind of you know they're a real tight knit kind of group. You know, tight knit groups kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. do better it seems you no know? question and, and and personally the, you know they all stuck up for clive burr in the old days and i know they helped him out when he was when he was not yeah. doing well and yeah. i think that's really fucking awesome i got nothing bad to say about our maiden yeah. except yannick gears and <laughs> 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 <Cha-ching>. <laughs> and i will just leave that one there just, yeah, just think, let that one let dangle it, and die yeah. in a fucking wind amen brother um but I think they're, you know, I think they're amazing for what they've done and for the longevity. I've just, I, you know, I, oh, Steve I lost his bass playing. I lost, I lost it. You know, I, I went up to and including, uh, uh, what's the Egypt fucking album? Not Tell oh, Joplin, oh, yeah, 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 Power yeah. Slave. Oh. You know, I say, that's when I dropped. I, off. I lost them too there. Yeah, I you mean. know, and and I like, you know, even that record is kind of it's, but there's some really it's strong, polished metal. So though. such some strong shit on yeah. that. Yeah, Rhyme yeah. and Ancient Mariners. Yeah, there's best songs written of all time. I agree. Time, I, think, I agree. Um, Production quality was very polished on that. Yeah, though. you know, and I was like their artwork and stuff, and, and it was cool. But anyway, where the fuck were we, man? I just, I, don't I, know. Just, I, I just, think we're great oh, ten. Oh, oh <laughs> great <Zeppelin>. ten. <laughs> Ze- Zeppelin's influence on me, and that's where we were. Well, no, I just, I just think that that song, that Zeppelin song, for me, hmm. bef- and now I, I heard that through my. My mother had that album. My mother was a Zeppelin in Black Sabbath. My first Black Sabbath record was stolen from my mom. I had a cool mom yeah. coming out of that hippie era. Your dad was Elvis, and my mom was like the Stones, Beatles, Zeppelin. Yeah. And they're like, this is a little dark, son. Mm-hmm. Black Sabbath, right? Yeah. Uh, but that whole that whole Achilles' Last Stand was so different than anything they had yeah. done before, right? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. really? I mean, That's it was interesting. Like different yeah. times, signature changes, time mm-hmm. signature changes. It was just different. Yeah. And would Maiden exist if that song had not been written? I'm going to listen to it tonight. I, 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 I'm definitely going to. On, gonna, on the way to work, mm-hmm. I've got Zeppelin in the, on my iPod. I've got Maiden. I'm going to listen to them both. Uh, whatever. It's just an idea. Strapping, uh, strapping tuned. We, we, we had a uh, weird tuning for the band. Uh, for the most part, it was a C open six, I think it was. Yeah. It was just an open C. Yeah. But a little that, heavy, De- huh? Devin, a little got, Devin got that from Friends. What? Zeppelin Friends. Oh, get out! Really? Yeah. That's what that, that's where Jimmy's all open acoustic. Just, it's acoustic. It's just beautiful all open tuning, yeah. right? And there's it's still one of my favorite tunings. I got a couple of guitars I keep in that tuning at all. Okay. My old Stratton guitars, I just keep in that tuning because it's just it's a beautiful a beautiful tuning. It's mm-hmm. open, it's droney, mm-hmm. and you can just you just have fun with octaves. You, you find s- inspiration through playing in open tuning and do. stuff like that. I really just, do. It just you know <clears throat> it's something that I think that's what explains Page. I mean, you you don't have a high appreciation for Page. I kind of do. Mm-hmm. From a um, a multi-track kind of composition standpoint, mm-hmm. 
I think there's plenty. I think of he's a tremendous. He's a tremendous songwriter, and he's a tremendous player too. But just not my style. Really. Yeah, I guess I, that I, that's really what it what it comes down. A lot to. of players can burn him to the dirt. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I think it's the way he multi tracked before any other metal band was multi tracking. Mm-hmm. But when they played live, they were always a disappointment because mm-hmm. they could not. Could they couldn't off. replicate it. Right. He's sloppy as hell too. He's usually yeah, the loaded. That, he's always behind when the people, beat. People he's ask me about Page. That's that's what that's my main complaint. You know. You, and so you ever seen him live? No. Okay, so I saw him with the Crows in 2000. <clears throat> I've seen and him a I few bought times a, live. And, I'm sure you have. And I and I did it on a uh, front row center. Nice. On a, well, well, it was a charity thing. Internet, right? 2000. Didn't mm-hmm. know if I was actually going to have tickets when I showed up. I did. My, my best friend in the world, Jim Stewart, big Zeppelin fan. We were there. And uh, Johnny, who was the blues player, the young kid, Johnny. Johnny Lang. Johnny Lang opened up. Okay. Jimmy comes to the front of the stage. Now, this is 20 years ago. Slobbering. We're doing a whole, the whole Jimmy Page thing. Mm-hmm. Playing behind the beat, but really authentic and good. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the Black Crows did an admirable job playing Zeppelin songs. So that was the closest I ever came to seeing Page. Right. But it was Zeppelin because there was a couple other guitar players on stage. The fullness of Zeppelin was there. Yeah, and, and I'm I, sure that was very pleasing. And I hear, like, from my uncle and people that are older than I, that when they played live in the 70s, you know, it was real thin and kind of disappointing. Yeah. Did you yeah. hear that? Yeah. Well, I've, 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 I've seen, you know, enough videos to think that. I've as, as much as I like Song Remains the Same, you know, that was a great, fantastic you live record. You that? It. Yeah, you think? <laughs> So um, I got my my page fix there, and, yeah. but I I respect it. I just don't know if if uh, we we kind of romanticize about Zeppelin, right? We romanticize about how amazing they were. Mm-hmm. You take Stairway to Heaven away in terms of record sales and all that, it, they're kind of like just another metal band in the in in the eighty mm-hmm. in the seventies, right? Seventies, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, you crucify me for saying this, right? But this is just, you know. Just by the way, man, I, I'll supply the stakes. How did you, you get? In, how did you get into? <laughs> but you really have played some heavy music in your day. And so, yeah, we that, the back to what we what we were talking about. It's just like you know that timeline for me was the hard rock led right into you know I heard the priest and that for me, British Steel was kind of like that was the segue between the hard rock and the metal. That was when I went in a different direction, and. I, you know the maiden and then the first thing i heard after that um there you know there was there was a couple of priest records after that or whatever but i heard i heard bonded by blood mm-hmm. in like 84 i mean i came a little bit late there was other albums out before that but that was the first kind of that music that i heard and i was captivated you know instantly fucking captivated and um a friend of mine in victoria he he had a uh, a friend of his who ran a college radio station and he would he would kind of co-host it, and so the advanced copies were always coming in. So I heard a lot of shit back then before it was even out, and um, so it, I mean I was I was just captivated by this this speed metal or what thrash right. whatever right. you want to call it. And and right then I mean just right after I heard that it was just like you know uh, the, the Metallica's and the the what else was that you know Slayer of course which is mm-hmm. you know I guess I'd have to say probably the band that influenced me more than any other during really? that era okay um as far as the 80s go but only by virtue of their first three records huh um i, I was never a fan after after rain and blood i was kind of like done but yeah hello waits i think is one of the finest uh-huh. speed metal slabs ever fucking mm-hmm. created mm-hmm. um <clears throat> and then there's the creators dark angel you know and and dark angel i was a huge huge fan of their their second record, Darkness Descends, came in '86, right. which was a great, great year for music. We had Master Puppets, we mm-hmm. had Darkness Descends, mm-hmm. and there was one other very big one too. Hmm, what could it be? Hmm, I forgot. <coughs> oh, that's right, Rain and Blood. Rain, Rain and Blood. blood. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to play that one up a little bit. You can't forget that, right? <laughs> you can't forget that. Had to play it up. Um, but you know, so to think that. You know, and then you know, then it went through the '80s, and and like I said earlier, I was really kind of narrow-minded. It was just like it was just about that. You know, I I can't even you know I can't do it, mm-hmm, but it, mm-hmm. it was just fast, you know, fast and aggressive, and you know, Satan and and whatever else was, you know, <laughs> All whatever the Im- imagery, right? Yeah, imagery, and yeah. you know, well, fuck you, 
you know, I'll do that, this. And, that's why, I mean, it wasn't even so much the devil thing. It's a big fuck you to society. It, well, right. it really was. And right? I think, yeah. you know, right. and I think that spoke to me in ways that I didn't understand perhaps then. Got you it. know what I mean? Got it. And, and, uh, you know, and then we came out of the 80s and and, and then came death metal. And what? I went right into death well, metal. Well, of course. What, the, what, what was the alternative? Yeah, well, ugh, nothing. Right. Nothing, nothing. 90s was a fucking dead zone for metal, it's, man. Yeah. But I also started to... Nirvana? That, that's, <laughs> I really like Bleach. Bleach is a fucking great record, I think. Is there anything that came out of the main... The main I guess I've been saying hard to say. Mainstream early 90s grunge that resonated with you did you dig Alice stp chains. alice in chains okay yeah. no first, stp nah first none couple, of it none of it none of one or two no, no. really no i was i liked i like interesting i liked bleach from nirvana yeah and i liked uh the first two uh asc records yeah and by that time i started jamming with some other guys in vancouver yeah. and uh, i met dev and Byron and I from from Strapping, we had our own band called Zimmer's Hole, which is still going yeah, to this day. Absolutely. And um, we had a, well, our, our band before that was called Caustic Thought, and I quit that band. That was your first <clears throat> kind of legitimate band, right? Yeah. Well, Armorist was my very first legitimate Armorist, band. Armorist. Armorist. And that's okay. back in Victoria, and I, and I skipped over that. And I'm sorry, guys, but talk about it. So after i got kicked out of northern thunder let's go let's go back because i didn't have what it took the, the guitar uh, that's, a, that's a great canadian name correct? northern thunder and northern thunder figures prominently in the last Zimmer's whole record okay. but uh you know because we make fun of shit nice but um <laughs> when i was getting kicked out the guitar player said oh yeah and I, I got this number of this guy named mike who's looking for a guitar player for his band it turned out to be mike sudar who's now one of my best friends for life and we formed armors together and uh, mm. you know we had we did a bunch of demos and we were we, I was heavily into the tape trading scene at the time and yeah. you know and all those advanced th things I touched on earlier and it was such a wild time because there's new music all over the place and we were speed metal and we got a record deal we recorded our, we recorded our first album in 89 88 88 88 and we did a bunch of demos and you know we were featured in like Kerrang and Metal Forces yeah, and all the great yeah, yeah, yeah. all the great and I made I friends back, I looked at that stuff you know and I'm friends with some of those guys now those those authors and stuff and I think it's really cool but the band split up we we decided <laughs> that's a good story we got we got a record deal we recorded the record um and then the record company folded and the record just went went to sleep but we decided during that time that we needed to move from Victoria which is on Vancouver Island we moved we needed to move to Vancouver because right. we'd have a better chance. Well, sure. It's just you population, know, population, and uh, transportation, and all that. Because you had to take a ferry back and forth. Yeah. Oh. So we all split up with our girlfriends and moved. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, but I got to do this, babe. I'm not sorry. <laughs> He's not fucking sorry. We, we, we moved to we moved to Vancouver. Got a got a fucking uh, like a bachelor pad, and you know, in the Lower East Side in Vancouver, yeah. it was yeah. kind of sketchy. And from there, you it's know, those sketchy areas. From Canada. there, you're from there, you're fit, you're on your yeah, you're on your own, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, we gotta get jobs and fucking. Uh. That's when you get girlfriends on that side of the island to pay for your stuff. That's right. That's not, that's music. But it didn't. But it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that well, way. Well, you're in Vancouver, so that's when you get boyfriends on that side of the island. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna sorry. Do, I'll do, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Eh? Sorry. 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 Sorry, I, yeah. I actually I love Vancouver. A couple of the guys moved back to Victoria, and the band just fell apart. And that was it. And that was '89. Okay. And I met Byron at that time. His band Caustic Thought. I joined them. And then fast forward a couple of years, I quit them, and my replacement was Devin. Right, <clears throat> right, right. And they kicked him out a couple of years after that because he was <laughs> fucking insane. <laughs> During that time, somehow, some way. We got into contact, and I joined his then band called Noisecapes. And this is during when he was with with Steve Vai. What approximate year? Ninety one. Okay. It was, yeah, because I, I remember that man. Yeah. I remember ninety one, ninety two, ninety three. I don't know, but he's he, my historian over here because he was with Steve, and he wanted his own deal, right, for his own band. And I was in that band in Vancouver called Noisecapes. And they, uh, they played a graffiti here in Pittsburgh, real small club. Wow. Yeah. So it was. It, That's crazy. You know, yeah. So anyway, that none, you know, neither of those things worked out. But it, um, I kept on with Zimmer's Hole, myself and Byron, and then Dev called me. He had already recorded most of the first strapping record, but some of the we we had been jamming together on, and we had this. The thing that was cool about Vancouver is we had all these guys that were kind of coming in and out of each other's sort of circle of friends, and we were just all making music together. It was a wonderful thing. Okay, and it carried on for about twenty years. Um, 
so we'd done some demos and Dev and I had played together and Byron and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so some of those demos made it on the first strapping record, I think. Anyways, Dev called me and says, you know, come join the band, Yahoo. And uh, our first guitar player, because Dev didn't want to play guitar at that time, it was Mike from Armorous, which was cool. Mm-hmm. But then Dev decided he wanted to play got, play guitar again, so Mike had to go. And that was sad, but it was it was the right move. And then, and then right around then I started playing for Devin had played on a couple of frontline assembly records and they were looking for a touring guitar player and Dev's like Jed and so that was my first professional touring experiences um, with with frontline I played with them for six or seven years you know on the off times when strapping wasn't busy sure sure and then Byron came into the band for this for the second record city and I remember we were in Europe and We're talking to Dev on the phone. I think we were on the phone, and Dev's like, "Yeah, I've been jamming with this drummer in in Los Angeles. His name's Gene Hoagland." And I'm like, "You know, he didn't know anything about dark. He he didn't know anything right about that." He said those words, He's and, like, Gene? and you know, <laughs> he probably could have heard my jaw <laughs> hit the floor, hit the floor without the telephone across <laughs> continents. You know what I mean? And I couldn't believe it. Of course. It. So I think I think we flew straight to L.A. and right to Steve Vai's house was where we recorded most of City, the second Amazing. record. And then wow. Dev took it over to Sweden with Daniel Bergstrand, I think, to, to produce it. But that was an amazing time because one of my heroes, I was in a band with one of my fucking yeah. heroes. And I couldn't believe that, you know, how I how I, I held Dark Angel in such great esteem. And all right. of a sudden, I'm in a band with this right. guy. And I'm like, right. oh, my God. It's amazing, <laughs> right? And even to this day, I know I still see G. He's like, oh, Daddy, oh, what's, you know, like, I'm like, <laughs> like wow. And I, and I don't ever want that to go away because that's kind of the magic that sure. you try to hold on exactly. to. Exactly. You know, when, when so much of the magic has gone away. Exactly. Once you see it, yeah. but you still have those moments where you get, yeah. I geek out like that too. Yeah, yeah. And I like, like, I like geeking you out know, like that. You I do. You know? Anyway. It is, but doesn't it feel amazing? Yeah. It, because these are, this is your hero. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you're just like, I'm right there. I'm right you, here, you had, and, you and had that with Zach. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. You know, it's, 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 it's Aussie. Yeah, it's the same. It's the it's, same thing. And, and you get the goosebumps, yeah. and, and you and you see them, and it's like. And, and, but here's the thing: do, do you feel it's like <clears throat> validated for the for the trip you've taken? I do. Yes, I, I that, do. That's what I mean. But I, I, I wouldn't, you know, and and just to touch on Gene and and Devin too. It's just I wouldn't be half the guitar player I am now if it wasn't for those guys. Those guys. We strapping. You know, the four of us were. A fucking force, mm-hmm. you know. We uh, mm-hmm. sound like Aussie. We're a fucking force. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a fucking he pulled force that man. off pretty good too. <laughs> but we we had a chemistry that, yeah. you know, when bands get chemistry, bands and that's where get good. That, you know? and, and you're Even, more creative, and that stimulates yeah. you into into uh, expanding and growing. It and, is and, exactly, and that's you know, and Dev, you know, Dev is he was the leader of that band. He was a hundred percent that band. Right. He wrote the bulk of the music. I got my shit in there. And this is something else that, you know, we we we've, we've been talking a lot lately. Uh, Dev, you know, after we broke up, it was it was not nice, and and we were we That's were. That's what happens. We were getting we were we were doing this, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and Dev he realized he's like I don't want to do this, and he pulled the rug, and it caused a lot of tension kind of naturally. Yeah. Um, then in 2012, he invited me over to London for his. It was called a Retinal Circus. It was a big thing. He did a record retrospective. Yeah, we. So yeah, we played. I that. He had me come on stage. We played a couple strap piece right, songs together, and it right. was very moving. And if you ever see the footage, I'm crying my eyes out on yeah. stage because at, at that time, I'm like, I know this is the last time I'm ever going to be playing these songs. Hmm. Mm. You know, and here we are years later, and Dev's now playing some of the strapping songs on tour, mm-hmm. um, which has led to a further discussion between me and Dev, which is touching on all the things we never touched on before the it, whys the hows the hurts the i'm sorry's you've got the, the answers the, the, you're getting them the stuff that i thought we had buried with that retinal performance 2012 it that was just step one because there was so much there was so much hurt and and not animosity but just like unanswered everything yeah and so Devin and i've been Why talking that happen I it's just, a relationship I, yeah and i reached out to him and i said okay. you know i'm like well we it was it was mutual but it's like let's talk and we've been talking, and God damn, has it ever been therapeutic? I'm just like, exactly. I'm, I'm so sorry, my friend, for doing these things yeah, to you. Yeah, I'm yeah. so sorry to you for doing these things, and just yep. And and it's like, as an adult, you're like, our friendship is is we're friends again. Yeah, you know, even though we were before, but it's just like now it means something again because we have so much more in common. That's not strapping on lad related. I think age helps that. It does absolutely because you question. realize as you go without through, question. you realize and you wait for that moment. Mm-hmm. To sit there and say, "Hey, 
you know, and, and you don't even have to ask the questions. You just start talking, mm -hmm. and it just opens a floodgate. Yeah. And the, and you start, sit there and think about you know the possibilities, what happened, what's you know what's could happen. Mm -hmm. But you find that friend again. Yeah. You, and, you find and, that person and, you you knew. Yeah, and these conversations have nothing to do with a reunification. Or there's yes. none of that shit's going to happen. It's, and, you and, find the friend. And none of it's going to happen. And it doesn't matter because it's over here. We're just mm. reestablishing our friendship. And it's fucking awesome. I love it. Which was, and, which was probably the pure joy to begin with, right? And, yeah. And just you know, just at NAMM, just recently, the, all four of us were there. I got a call from oh, uh, awesome. Ash, Ash Pearson. Mm -hmm. He's a drummer from Revocation, a good friend of mine. He plays in my new band out here in, in Philadelphia. But he's like, yeah, three, three quarters of strappings outside. You should probably come outside. And I'm like, what? And um, I go running outside, and they're all standing there. And, and we hadn't stood together physically right. since 2006. Who when, took the picture? Was there a picture? Well, there's all kinds of pictures, good, but good, um, good. It was a really fucking nice moment because I, I, you go into it with some trepidation, but it ended up become being just four dudes hanging out, and, and, that's and then what some, the and then some shitty is. band on that outdoor stage started playing, and we're like, "What the? <laughs> you're killing so the you're out front? <laughs> yeah, we were right in the front for the first like twenty minutes, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's, all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> 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 and we're like. Buzzkill. <laughs> so we went to the Hilton and kind of found a corner where it was quiet. Yeah, and then people started seeing and us yeah. together, and, you know, pictures and all that yeah. shit. And I'm I'm sure there were some rumors, but there isn't. There's nothing. But it was just four guys hanging out, being friends. Yeah, and it was really comfortable and it was really cool. And that's my and take. It needed to happen. It needed to happen, and that's my takeaway from it. You know, and and we all have a good dialogue. You know, mm -hmm. now with each other and mm -hmm. and. Ad adulting, as, it, as they it, say, adulting. exactly because <laughs> right. because that's exactly what yeah. happens. We did a really good thing, you know. And I've got Dev to thank for all of my success, and my two other brothers that helped along. The keyboard players can all fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Wild ass keyboard players, <laughs> except except John Morgan. I love you. <laughs> he, he was the first, and he was awesome. Um, he went to play for Fear Factory for a few years. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah. There's that we all. Went Dude. in and out of each other's yeah, circles. No shit. No you know, shit. when I when I went to play with uh, Joey Jordison in mm -hmm. 2012 mm -hmm. or 13, whatever it was, at the Scar of the Martyr, it was Reese Frober who was producing his record, who's who was in Frontline yeah, Assembly, right? Produced for your factory, and is a good friend of mine. So that's how I got. The know, circles I, are funny, huh? And I'd known Joey, I'd known Joey for for years yeah, before yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But um, so yeah, so I got called for that, and and uh, they sent me some some songs. And I was hoping it was going to be something other than what I got, but it was cool. And he's like, "Bring the ace," and I'm like, "Okay." So I did a bunch of like really rock solos, and I guess one hey! of them, I guess one of them was good. <laughs> I don't like playing leads, <laughs> but they, fl they ended up flying he me did out. Did it though? <laughs> they flew me out and um, and then put me under the gun, and and it became apparent, you know, like, well, fuck, I'm in a band playing eight string guitars. What the fuck happened? And I remember talking about it back then, and and. Uh, and the guys in sugar, they're like, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's great. But I was doing all these leads, and I, I wasn't, I, what, it wasn't happening, you yeah, know? And, and yeah, uh, yeah. I could see that. So we ended up getting some other members, and, and it became a band, and, and yeah. we went on to do things. And then, for some reason, the band had to change names. But, you know, and then we recorded a second album, which has still never seen the light of day. And it's a pretty solid record. You know, we had great management. Mm -hmm. uh, we had we're CTK was our management. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Nozell and all those guys are fa fantastic. You know, and and that's Do it was Dolly Parton's facility. So right, we, and did right. you love it? I, oh, I'm down there as well. It's so fucking awesome. We rehearsed there. We did our, our EPKs there. Yeah. We did videos there. I mean, it's the full full soundstage. Did everything. Rick Straw did that Pimic record, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh my God! It was and and who was the other guy? Cato uh, Kandwala. Uh, I don't know. I don't know him. Yeah, I know his name. He, I don't know him. He produced. He produced that second record, and you know he's long. He's left us sadly. He yeah. A, yeah. Anyway, won't get into that. But uh, it, there was all kinds of good things happening, and and what a great support team. And I, I know Dave and his son were involved in yep, that as yep. well. And yeah, we used to we used to Dave, go down there at Dolly's place. It's a beautiful place, it's isn't fucking it? Fucking awesome, <laughs> you know. And we just we just fly down there. That's where I stored all my <laughs> that's, that's, gear, <laughs> and that's where the bus picked you up. And it's where it was. Everything it was happened. right there. And everybody was welcome to Nashville. It was so <laughs> fucking awesome. Oh my god, so much good food there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what was it? Uh, candy bacon or millionaire's uh, bacon oh, yeah, or yeah. something? <laughs> 
I don't uh, eat a lot of pork. D- but but down there, oh I did. D- they had this. They had this place where we used to we used to go down there. But they used to put us up, and we used to have to drive. Yeah. And beside the hotel was a place called Peg Leg Porkers. Fuck yeah, Peg oh Leg. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! And you so say, much good food. Oh my god, so much good food. But it's down there. Yeah. And, and Dolly, it's, a, it's, it's and it's, we you know we were starting to gain some momentum and stuff, and we all had we'd all start thinking about maybe kind of you know moving a little closer to Nashville and stuff. Right. It was such right, a hub, right. and, and right. then. And then, and and this is where we were talking about earlier, where there's kind of gray areas and stuff. And and I want to, I don't want to go there. It's just the band didn't work out. And, oh well, and, and it happens. And we just we, we just kind of came to a to an end, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. Mm-hmm. And amicable. And, and huh? Amicable. It was. It wasn't, it wasn't totally amicable at first, but it's starting to get back to there now. It. And it's it's not so dissimilar from strapping, but it's it's. It's a different entity altogether. Got it. Got it. Uh, but you know, I had some really good. All, all the guys in the band, I'm great friends with. Um, mm-hmm. I was at Nam. I don't know if I introduced you. When I saw you briefly, I was with Steve. He was the guitar player yeah. in that band. Yeah. And he's got a couple of. He got a couple. Of, he was a Boogie Street customer. He's got a couple of a Boogie Street bills. Oh, shit. Wait, yeah, so when when I posted yesterday, he, uh, he called. He called me. He's like, I dude, I got fucking. I got some. I love Eric. You know, like <laughs> he's so stoked that means about. A lot. That means oh, a lot. Thank man, you. That I, means I wish a lot. I had known. Yeah. Well, I didn't know until yesterday that oh, he had that he had Boogie Street guitar. Oh, oh, Street. Yeah, Boogie Street. Street. He and I were. Yeah. So it was it was really cool and. Wow. Um, yeah, I was staying them. with Steve. I was staying with Steve when I was out there, and he lives in Ontario, which is like thirty minutes away. Okay, not that Ontario, fucking <laughs> Ontario, <in> California, <laughs> the, the home of the maple laughs. <laughs> the oh maple my laughs. god, center oh of the god. universe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, Steve's he's converted his house into this, this beautiful studio, and, and right. he's like, does he still have his boogie street stuff? He, but we never got it because we were so busy driving to yeah. and from Nam. And when we got oh. back at night, we'd slept. You know, I slept. I slept I, on a couch in the control room. It was fucking amazing. You know, I loved it. But we never got a chance to bust out the guitars. Oh. And he was he's like, next, next time, next time you coming out, you're busting out the pointy guitars. <laughs> next time, you know, we next made, time we made a few. So, hi, Steve. Hey, a couple, couple of these yeah, are on was, all, these are these are a couple more. I know. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm looking at which one I'm going to play Black Diamond on. <laughs> you know, so so it's funny you said that because uh, you know, collector, mm-hmm. guitar collector, mm-hmm. huge guitar collector. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. Hey, you, you, am I right? I don't. You don't. don't I I I I've sold off. You know, mm-hmm. when we started at Fred, I was like, collect one of each piece, Eric. Keep one of each run. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but over time, it just um. I'm sure with you guys, they accumulated pretty quickly. Though. No, they, they did. Did they not? They did. Yeah, like oh rabbits. God. And we were we were in a you'll love you will love this. We were in a building initially that had a country music station down the hallway yeah, who yeah. loved us. I mean, so Dolly Parton was in our office. How Taylor, Taylor Swift Taylor in Swift. our office yeah. before they were anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but but we had the guys from Leonard Skinner in there. Skinner came down. My my point to you was speaking of seventies icons. Oh, oh yeah. My point was though, it was almost like and I and Fred warned me when we started he goes e you love guitar right i'm like yeah because he would come in i'd be playing every day give it a couple of years you're not going to want to look at a guitar and sure enough man after about a couple of years like, i never i never played it anymore like, wow. he would yeah, yeah but it was it was i'm we, a bass player we had eight at one point in this 2700 square foot suite mm-hmm. you know, no walls right big room we had 880 pieces in there. And oh, I, I would have loved to have come and visit one. back then. Yeah, I'm I sure you did. I touched every you set them all up. one. I, I did all f- the dime bag stuff. Got your finger juice all over oh, everything. Stanley, yeah. Scott, Ian, Nuno Betancourt, yeah. Dan Don again. Paul. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it went over and uh, just on and on and on. But well, it was such a huge... We were overrun by it. It, it, it grew... Had we understood how fast it was going to grow... And we didn't know. Right. So are you okay with talking... Can we talk a little bit about dime bag? Of course. Okay, so course. Um, I'm more about. I, w- I want to hear your story. So, when you found out about Dime mm-hmm. passing, where were you? I was sitting on my couch in in Philly, and a good friend of mine, Pat Lockman, is a singer in that band. Pat, yeah, yeah, a very good friend of mine. Mm, it's gonna be hard to talk. And about. I love I, I love that guy, and we don't talk as much as we used to mm-hmm. uh, we actually tried to start a what's band he, back in 2000 right after now? right after strapping split up okay um uh jensen from the haunted a very very good friend of mine okay he had been he uh, the haunted had been on tour with uh damage plan yeah and uh him and pat had hit it off and they're like Let, let's let's do something and so they called me and and pat and i flew over to sweden and we were jamming with uh, him and and uh, adrian erlandson on, mm-hmm. on drums mm-hmm 
but it just it just it didn't happen you know and and it was kind of sad but Pat was in a bad place for Pat a while. was in a bad place and I think maybe that had a lot to do with it and I'm not putting anything on him I don't, oh, I don't mean that at all but I think guy. he was he I don't I can't even be he, he's carrying a lot of baggage I guess you think? because yeah right and I never you know anyways there was one song that we wrote that I wrote actually that that I guess meant something to Pat and he he uh he took it and and expanded the song and rearranged it a bit and then sang over it and I've never it's it's fucking heart it's it's a speed metal song kind of but it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. lyrically and mm -hmm. you can tell he means he sang it with his soul and had i known we were talking about this i might have brought it with us to play because it's it's so i've never known what what project to put it yeah. in and, and he's yeah. asked me you know can i use it for my band i'm like i don't really want you to to take that song and and i thought about using it for a couple of my projects and i'm like it's untouchable because it's just this one yeah, singular you've entity got that one thing and i think that's the way it has oh. to stay and maybe you know i gotta talk to him at some point maybe we'll just release it as him and i doing this thing together but yeah, yeah. he sings about he sings about pain and that's that's his, that's his thing and and oh. I, I love him to death i wish we talked more you know but he's he's uh have you ever met dime no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Of course, of course I have. I showed him my ace tattoo, and he's like, fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? No yeah, shit. How, how no fun shit. was that uh, guy? I'm sorry, I completely forgot yeah. about that, just because um, it was on the Damage Plant tour, and they were at the truck in Philly, and I was hanging out with, you know, because I know a bunch of the guys, and yeah, you know, Jensen's like, hey, fuck Jed, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, ah! you know, and that, that was it, that was it. Um, so, that's, but that's all it takes. In the yeah, in the interest in, yeah. in the interest of full disclosure, absolutely, I'm not a Pantera fan. Yeah. I'm not a Dimebag fan. Hey, who does that sound like, Fred? I know. I, I I'm later. I, I'm not. And I never and was. He he it's plays. Not, he plays. Mean. He plays with soul, and I get that. The tone was noisy for me. I, I'm I'm not into that. I'm not. Uh, it's just bumblebee. Transistor. It's, it's bumblebees and okay. and uh, yeah. fucking. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. It's a different style. They're different. different. I, I got nothing and against God, that. Millions he, appreciated it for sure. He, yeah, he was. Yeah. He's an innovator, and he, he played with a, a talent. He was a talent. He was a talent. He's a monster. Yeah, but I, I'm. But it was. I'm a fan. I'm, I, I wish. I wish he was still around because I'd like to be. Oh I'd like to be God. his friend. Oh my God! And just to talk about fucking kiss and, and he uh, was his friend. And so a friend. Fred, hang Fred out was at, a friend. Uh, with he, he was awesome, man. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what he would do. Yeah. He, you would. You would. He seemed like just the greatest guy ever. He was. You know. And we toured Talk. a bunch with with, with Vinny. You know. Yeah. Uh, with, with Vimic and stuff. We even used Vinny's yeah. bus for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. a few years. You know. <laughs> wow. The old, the old bus. The old bus. <laughs> 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 oh man! Uh, what's that look? Me? <laughs> tell me that hey, it's a kiss. It's a kiss shrine. That's what it is. <laughs> There's but some... isn't it awesome to to just be able to to sit back and say that that you had that experience? Yes. Yeah, and, and that's what uh, yeah. to to me in in the music business. I never planned for this. Mm -hmm. I never thought uh, this was an accident. Yeah. This is this was a sidetrack. These things. Or, it's, a, it's a beautiful accident. And, yeah. and these things are, are just a, a surprise, and it's like it's like one of our shows. It's a sidetrack that yeah. went good. Yeah. 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 And, but but meeting him, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was because I wasn't a fan. Mm -hmm. And so, no, Black Label was so different at that time from the Dimebag tone oh, or yeah. the Pantera tone. So the bands got along. I think they got along. We, we did. Oh, you. I'm sure there was plenty of but oh, getting we, along. We, we, but we, we but the point was that the music content was like Black Label to me was tuned down, mm -hmm. but tube tone. Yeah, Marshalls we, in my face, all four strings resonating in a, in a in Gibson a, and Marshall. And yep. I tell you what, I was super so killer. powerful Marshall. live. It was un. Break my goddamn ribs when I was down in a pit shooting that. Yeah. Break my ribs, that's man. What I, that's what I love, and that's that's what I mean. Like back oh. earlier, I'm a Marshall guy at heart, and that's Same that's here. what I love. Yeah, I love that tone. I, 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 no matter how no matter how my, how much my heart belongs to Mesa and all that stuff, it's, right. I'm a Marshall guy at heart. That's the tone I hear in my head. Yeah, and, but, and, but, and that's, but that's back had Randall, who had, I was working with. And God, time, right? fuck me, it would sound like it was a chainsaw. Yeah, and it was it's just a, like a, a, a can of bumblebees. A, a can mm. of bumblebees falling down the stairs. Yeah, and, 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 and it's just like I, I just that was what separated me. And, it, and as we talked earlier, it wasn't until later that I oh my goodness. I'm, I, I saw that. Oh, my. Are you sure you want to do that, man? Well, my, my 
my beer was getting you warm. You turn that around. Well, my my to coaster, the my gritty is guarding my precious drink. <laughs> yeah. you know beer. Gritty, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the penguins take care of my fifty cent beer. Hey, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> oh, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> the Penguins doing pretty well this year so far. And I'm not a you big know, hockey I, fan, I have but to say I have to say surprisingly, um, surprisingly, when we when we sold our last house and moved, we moved back into the city. Okay, and, but, I'm fine actually. No, I, I just, just just set it over there. Just uh, set it over right, there. Right, right. We're gonna have some fun real quick. So you sold your house. So we we. When our son Eddie was first born, we lived in South Philadelphia, row home. We we're All like, right. we got to, there's no place for our son. Blah, I blah. followed the whole thing, brother. We went went out to the Burbs. Uh huh. Terrible experience. We lived out there for uh-huh. eight years. Where'd uh-huh. you move to? We made no friends. We were just uh, south of Philadelphia in uh, Springfield, I think. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, and it was terrible. We made no friends. Eddie had no friends at school. And it was very, there was a lot of people who had their noses really high in the air for no reason whatsoever. Mount Lebanon. <laughs> so we moved, we, when Susanna, my wife, she got off, she you know, looked for a job. She got a, a new job with the city. And part of the requirements was you must live within city sure, limits. Sure. Yeah. You know, we're like, maybe this is, this is the time. So we we sold and and got a, we, I found exactly the same house in the city on I the remember. outskirts of the city. I remember. So happy, and God what bless a, you, man. And and goddamn, so I don't even know where I was going with that story, but it all worked out really really well. Mm-hmm. How did that? Where the fuck were we? Anyway, anyway, good times. Chad called me um, when I was sitting with my 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 wife at the time in, in the basement in the game room with my kids and. Chad Lee's crying, and he's just like, ah, oh, they killed Don, they killed Don. I'm like, what are you talking about? And so he hangs up on me. Mm-hmm. Now I'm calling him. And Fred's words to me, E, I can't talk now. He goes, I said, I heard this. He goes, he goes, he goes I'm not sure it's real. Yeah, I will call you back. Yeah. Yeah, you that? I, was, I knew it, it was, was real. It was, I was I just knew. trying to keep it quiet. It was G who told me. It was, yeah, yeah. See, I got called. I got called. They, they were still screaming in the club. People called me from inside the club as it just happened. It went down. And I was standing in my kitchen, and they didn't know how to get a hold of anybody. Mm-hmm. And and I got a phone call and uh. says you have to call. And I'm like, I don't have the number. Right, and and right. it was just like, and so I called a, a friend of mine who did, who did the same thing I did, and you know I'm, I'm getting beeps every my, my my phone's going off, and I'm like, I, I got to call you back, I got to call you back, I got to call you back, I got to call you back. I have no confirmation, but I knew what I knew what had happened. Mm-hmm. I was I was I was told immediately. Mm-hmm. I could still hear, and it, and, it, and look, I, if, if I didn't have this stupid ass jacket on, I, I I have the goosebumps of, of hearing yeah. it, and, and it goes through my head. Every every that December, is so, that is so it, reprehensibly scary and heavy, and it's like it was it, so unnecessary. Yeah, so it unnecessary. Was. It was. I'm. I'm mm. yeah. thing, Moment of silence. Right. It, you know. Yeah. Uh, damn. Raise, have a drink. Raise a glass. Salute. It's even though it's it's Bad. not Crown Royal. I but got the good stuff. <laughs> you got the good stuff. I drank mine. Salute. Salute. Oh. Salute. Salute. The part about the whole thing, not funny. The sad part about the whole thing was when he passed in in our office. The Boogie Street was probably seventy of his guitars, which More were some, that, were seventy so, seventy of one run. We had just got to run yeah, in. Yeah, and we had to March of '05 to finish them all. We gave a lot of that money to charity. We did all we could mm-hmm. to show that we weren't that we weren't hucksters. Yeah. Like I didn't want the impression on the, in the society. We were capitalizing. Yeah. No, and we still we took our lumps. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I yeah, people around him still but, think somehow we we monetized that. We did not. You, but you had, you had inventory, and it needed to go. It, well, like, to survive, right? Well, yeah, I had it all hidden up in the roof. Yeah, yeah. Well, Freddie, Freddie, was, Freddie was fixing guitars and stealing the ones he wanted. And he, no, 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 no bullshit. You see how these drop ceilings are? Mm-hmm. This son of a bitch would hide Jed. Mm. He would hide cases. Now, dime cases are big. No, no, I was just about to say, those are big yeah, cases. Yeah, they're, you they're, think they're, they're, they're at least they would, <laughs> they, would, they would span trust, and they would, they, you could walk what, on them. That's what it was. They, they would, would span, use them like plywood up there. And I could pass another one on top of it. Yeah. You know, and put them this way. But Wait. we we did. I think we did the right thing, Fred. I think we handled it respectfully. That's really cool, though, that you had that. I had that connection and that history. And you now, now you went to to Rico right after that too, right? You played I, Bernie Rico. I was with I was with mm. ES, we I was with time. ESP from very early on. Yep. Like when Strapping first started, I was with ESP, and they were always really good to me. And then like right before we broke up, um, actually a co- album before we broke up, there I don't know if things were changing there or it just didn't seem quite the same. Um, I'd gotten a custom that wasn't quite 
what I thought it was going to be. There was, there was little pieces of tape still in the well, flames. You told me that story, <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and, you know, and around that time, I'd gotten to know Gary Holt from Exodus pretty well. I love Gary. That was your conduit to and, Bernie. And Gary's like, you know, and I saw what he was doing, him and him and Rick both. Here and, we go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Gary brought me along. For, Gary Gary sent me on a ride. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about let's it. Let's talk here. about it. Okay. And I know. And, and so, oh. you know, enter Bernie. I left ESP. God and, bless Bernie because he introduced you to me. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's I mean, right. You, you that's not we, sitting that's here right now. That's how we know each other. That's right. That's exactly right. And, you know, all love to ESP because I'm back with ESP yeah. now. And they, Great company. They built me, fuck, they built me fucking Jet. amazing guitars. They make and amazing stuff. Ha- have we had an the, access to them, we would never have quit. Bo- ha- yeah. Right? I like They're, ESP. Boogie Street would still be alive today Have we had an access to Their them. Their custom shop is... I mean, Amazing! It's up there with the very best of the yep, best. No question. If not, you know, they do quality. I, I knew Alan back in the Alan Steel great. Well, back he was my in. guy for yeah, years. Yeah, so I figured. And <laughs> woo, we partied. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you, Alan. Oh, oh God, I love you. I was just do looking tell. at that camera doing it. Do, do tell, love you, Alan. <laughs> do tell. Do oh, tell. I love Alan. We, we had a, we had a great we had a great time. Yeah, we did. We had a great time. <laughs> oh shit! Here we go. Um, but you know that, and I left, and and. The first place I landed was was uh, was Bernie. So so okay, back up. So let's talk. This is your show. You met Bernie through Gary Holt. Through Gary and and so what I, was Gary's sell point to you? I, Gary Gary's guitars, Rick's guitars. I mean, they were fucking amazing. And, and Gary's like, just kind of take those with a grain of salt. There's there's been you know some rumors about stuff and and some flake. even back then. Even back then, I think yeah. I think wow. he, I think he, really I, I think he used the term flakiness, but I'm not sure if that's what it was. Sorry, um, Bernie. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've heard that term. Yeah, <laughs> even but, like in two thousand seven. Yeah, really. But so anyway, I had a long conversation with Bernie on the phone. Okay, and um, Did you go I, out there. I remember it. I didn't go out there until later on. Okay, but I remember it. I said I I I I was so excited because I'd seen what he what he's done. <laughs> well, he and, made and an I mean, amazing guitar. That, oh. that Vixen guitar shape oh. is still oh. my favorite V shape. I got I still got a I got, I've a got bunch one. Of, I got a bunch I, at home. I've got I don't. One. Should have been a collector. Sold them all. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? Anyway, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> Anyways, I, I he called me. I was on the highway, and I had to pull over. I, luckily, there's a restaurant. I pulled over because I was so excited to talk to Bernie Rico. Son right. of, <laughs> the son of oh, Bernie fuck. Rico. Right, 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 son of Bernie. Exactly. Right. Right. I'm, right, like, right. I'm like, holy fuck. This is real. This is Gary. I love you. Thank you. And so we had a long discussion, and, and he says, I'll do three guitars for you for this set amount. And um, wow. so that that was my first three guitars from him. You right. know, they weren't free. I paid for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was a excellent. It was an excellent. I respected deal. him for that. And and the work was incredible. And as you get older, just like you, his dad, uh, you uh, you know that's another thing I love about Mason. It's like they don't give shit to any. It's like no, get what you pay for a lot right. of a lot of the time. Right, and it makes you appreciate it a little sure. bit more. Right. Anyway, so that that was my initial relationship with Bernie, and and after that we we really started to become friends quickly. I went out there. And uh, fuck, it was wow. I mean, it was a real thrill to be there and to see what was happening, isn't it? But I'll never forget him. You know, like showing showing me pictures of his custom built house as he drove up in his custom built truck. It looked like all flying all, all, all of all, <laughs> all of this, pointy. all of these things. But I think oh, he spent some money, and that's what God, you know. That's where this story inev- inevitably is going to lead to. Um, Did he take you to the house? No, I never went to the house. I got that story. Yeah, I, I bet that's I bet that's a good. He seemed to have a wonderful family, you know. And I, I loved and he, his and wife he, and, and a young Macy, daughter. Oh my Macy, god! And he made oh that guitar god. for her. It was so cute, you know. And I have a mini Vixen that he yeah. made for Eddie. Oh god! Oh, god. Oh, isn't that sweet? God bless him, man. Yeah, that's a good story. So that's you know, it was it was all there. The heart was all. It was all oh, there. No, and the talent is uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's it's. We don't even have to have that conversation. The guy made a great great product, man. Yeah, he did. He really did. And I was I was all in, all in, as you know. Oh, sorry, and um, it's okay. you know, I went out there. I brought yens from a sugar out there with yeah. me. And we made yens from guitars, and, and I saw photos from you guys being out there. Yeah, you know, like he was, everything was going gangbusters, and then it didn't. Mm. Yeah, we'll and that's that's, that's that's business. You know, that's that's the and meteoric rise, so, and perhaps the expenditure of more hey, than uh-huh. what. So let me let me. I want to connect the dots for you. Yeah, sure. Because we talked do. on the phone. We have, but not in great detail. And I know, I know, 
that Bernie reached out to me to reach out to you at one point. No question. You tried to help Bernie. I did. Uh, so go ahead. I don't yeah. want a medal for no. that. I'm, what, no, what I'm saying, yours. What I'm saying to you is so you can help to connect the dots here. Yes. Jo- our mutual, world our of <laughs> Our mutual. <laughs> you want I'm, one of them? I'm double fisting. <laughs> I don't, Wait, hang on. You're, you're about to triple fist. <laughs> Jen Simon's drinking out of a penguin's koozie. <laughs> All right. We have, we, have, we have to do our little new thing that we got today. We got these. Pass one off to Jed. All right. If you're gonna make me do this, I'm just sip it. Just sip Here, it. Get one, get one to Jed. So we got. So Jed, we before we go into the uh, into the rest of this burning. We we're bought, gonna need this for the burning Rico story. Yeah. We we bought we bought some of these little things. Nice. They're called Johnny Bootleggers. They were two dollars and sixty nine cents. <laughs> you know what? This smells like lemon gin. And that's what he said. He goes, he goes Here's the lemon's the best thing. See, I'm a grape you guy. You know, we used to call yeah. this in the. We used to call this panty remover back in the day. Back in the day, I was thinking it was like a Ooh. night train or a mad dog back kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. He back had when to we were, we were drinking the stuff behind the bowling alley or the video <laughs> store. <laughs> hey, mall security, you kids get out of there. No way. Not until I finish my no panty way. remover. No way. I got to finish this. See, I'll see, I'll see, Canadian life was not much different to, to, to American life hell in no. the 70s and 80s, right? Hell no. Hell no. Right? <laughs> Nope, not at all. So this is all right. So you got like I have no idea what Fred gave me, but I can't see this because I got the wrong glasses on. But I know it says lemonade, and I know it it says says it says sing sing sour grape on mine. I don't know what you guys. Are you a grape? I have bread because I'm I'm a grape guy. (laughs) Fuck you, you love grape knee high too, don't you? Oh my god, that's grape knee high. So do I. So do I. That is my weakness on tour. I can sit around and work out. I can I can I can go I can go to the gym. I can eat healthy. If I see a thing of grape knee high in the refrigerator, you're done. I don't, and and I came I came by that much later in life, you know. But, <laughs> and it's funny I'm I'm right there with you. I love them, and oh it makes God, me think good. of Radar from Mash way back yeah. in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> because we're that. That old. was the first time I ever heard it. <laughs> it's oh, grape knee high. God, ne- grape knee high. But yeah, I'm a grape guy. For, they only had two lemons, mm-hmm. and they had a grape. So All I right. gave you guys the lemons. Yeah, it's good. I'm it's, good with lemon. I like lemon. All right, okay. Well, cheers. All right. And we're gonna get into. Absolutely. Hey, no, we have next. Meet in the middle of the first one. Let's do it. Moonshine. There you go. All right. And so now we're going to talk about Bernie Rico Bernie guitars. Bernie Rico. So. Because I love his guitars. Uh, and, and, okay. And, Junior. Were, were you in the cat, catalog? Uh, did you ever get a, get a photo in a catalog? Yeah, I don't you know were. If I yeah, did. you were. I did thought I, you yeah. were. I don't, I don't know if yeah. I ever saw the catalog. I don't think I got you one. You did. There was a limited amount of print, but you run the PDF version. Because yes. I'm okay. a geek, and I'm like, I know that guy. You know, just, yeah. so I, I just go around and, and do these things, mm. and it's just like, oh, you know, I know. Okay. The, <laughs> guitars? You know, and I think we're we're all on the exact same page here. Up to a point, the guitars were pretty much untouchable. Oh, they're, untouchable. They're amazing, yeah. And those are the In ones. Our era, and those yeah. are the ones I've kept. We've never they're, seen. I, a- I've sold one, <laughs> and I kind of regret it, but I got really good money for it. Yeah, it was one I played on the Retinal Circus yeah, with Def. Yeah. It was a really nice yeah. uh, quilted maple. Yeah. But it looked it looked like a, it was so nice. I called it the coffee table because yeah, it was. Dude, it's like I'm remember, never gonna play this fucking thing. I remember that guitar. Thing. I remember I, that. I guitar. played it for one show and I sold it for a large sum, <laughs> yeah. and it was. And that's fine. That's all good. You should be. The, but his guitars ones. were unfucking touchable. Okay. You get those ones that you you play like maybe once. Yeah, it's and too, it, it was too nice. It, you, it's, it's too, too nice. nice to touch. It, you know, you don't want to scratch it. Yeah, I don't want to put my finger juice on it. Exactly, yeah. and it sits. Mm. And, and you're absolutely right. Coffee yeah. table is a great name for something like that because I've got them too. So, Bernie came into our life, the Boogie Street life, because of our mutual friend, John Cluter, mm. one of the most solid guys on the planet from Funky Monkey Music. Funky Monkey. John, if you're listening, we love you. Fucking you know, sent me down the Rico hole there, but that's okay. <laughs> just just kidding. Just kidding. And that was, it's, you know what? What a great guy. It was, I, a, good, it was a good John, hole. John, great guy. It was. And, and Pat Red, his partner, good people. Mm-hmm. And they were also big Washburn folks like us. <laughs> right. And they were doing, we did the Stanley stuff, the Donegan stuff, the Nuno. They did the Nuno stuff like beyond us. Like the, they were Nuno experts. We were right. Stanley experts at Washburn. So that was our connection. So John calls me one day and goes, listen, what do you know about Bernie Rico Jr.? And I go, do you mean like Bernie, you mean like Reese Rich's son? Like Senior's son? Yes. Uh, yeah. He goes, he's making his own brand, blah, 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 blah. The stuff will the stuff literally quality wise is so far superior than even Washburn's USA stuff. You have to hold one in your hand. Mm. So I remember the phone call. <clears throat> I look at Fred, I go, Are you ever looking at a Bernie Rico Jr. guitar goes, Fred goes, You mean BC Rich's son? I'm like, Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's Fred goes, I I, I a bunch of riches. Fred goes, How fast can you get one here? <laughs> yeah. Right. So 
But so basically, Bernie, I talked to Bernie, he sends me three guitars. Oh, man. He goes, on credit, <clears throat> didn't run a credit check. He goes, you're Boogie Street, I'm sending you three guitars. I sold those in like three days. Yeah, sure they you did. They were gone. Sure you did. The finishes that urethane he used was like glass. Yep. I have never seen to this day a clear... That was Vi- Ed. I think his paint guy was Ed. Ed. Ed was the man. Yeah. I loved Ed, yes. Fuck, he was good, man. But the, but the finishes were mm. unbelievable. Mm. And then I flew out there a couple of times, worked with them. We, we sold a bunch. <coughs> and, and, and Funky Monkey mm-hmm. and Boogie Street created the demand for Rico Jr. He yeah. had a couple other dealers in Texas or something. Yeah. The guitar more. He, he had no. Something weird he, going on there. He had no outs at all. But Funky Monkey mm-hmm. and Boogie Street created that need. And my only problem with Bernie, and I and my friend would tell you once in a while that there was something set up wrong or the pickups were wired in reverse, or there was <laughs> there was quirky shit that was going <laughs> that was going on. Yeah. But you could not argue the, qual- the quality, quality was- and I got good money for them, the mm-hmm. appropriate money for them. Yeah. The problem was that the markets in Penn, in the uh, the country when the, the recession hit, yeah, the, the it real right, estate, it, right at that time, yeah, oh eight oh yeah. nine, it people were not spending good money on guitars because their money was going to save their family, right. and Bernie was not prepared saving wise. There's your green one. <laughs> yeah, Bernie was not prepared to deal with a economic setback. He had not saved any money, from what I could understand. And my 90-day credit, he wanted in 15 days all of a sudden. So now you're sending me guitars in an era that would take me a good 90 days to sell, possibly. He wanted payment in full. And when I could not do that, I said, look, man, I'll send them back to you. He goes, you know, well, I'm going to go direct. I was sitting in my office in Moon Township. We had just moved into a new facility. And he goes, I go, you're going to go direct. I mean, like, you're going to sell directly to the public. Because, yeah, it goes, nothing personal, E. We've had a good run, but I'm going to cut the dealers out because I need to make more per piece. Oh, oh Jed, this is how it went down. Oh. And he said, and they go, Bernie, oh, just fuck. so I understand this, you're going to sell directly. Are you prepared to market to the public? Because that's what dealers do. We market to the public. He had no concept. Well, he goes, yeah, and I said, fine. So I said, I need a couple months to pay off this remaining inventory, which were Halloween guitars. Remember, yeah, I had the I Hall- remember those. I had the Halloween Vs and a couple others. And then I went in my savings, and I basically just paid off what was left, and I just you know sat on them. As I watched the following shit unfold, mm-hmm. about five months later, six months later, he advertised a sale, and it would have been the fall of 2010. Mm-hmm. It was called the... This is uh, the- yeah, it was called this. What was the sale? The Black Friday I was sale. Say it has to be the, the Black, Black Friday, Friday sale. sale, right? Yeah. Now yep. I'm watching from afar because I still got my washer and stuff going on, and and we're you know Fred, Fred, we remarkably stayed pretty much afloat during that whole recession. Oh yeah, we did been okay. a rough time. We sold a lot of time. Well, it was a rough time for us as a family. We you weren't know? selling five thousand dollar Paul Stanley guitars. Mm-hmm. Was, I'll leave it at that. But we yeah. were doing okay. Mm-hmm. So, and I was going through a divorce, my second divorce at Oof. the time, and was I was living in an apartment that I built on the back of my office. Zoinks! Yeah. So, you add all that confusion. It was an interesting time, you know. Mm-hmm. Which it makes stuff makes you stronger, right? Yeah. Uh, the point. The point say. of this story was that I watched all this unfold, and I said, "Well." I mean, he seems like he's selling pre-orders for this Black Friday sale, like, out of control. Like, yeah. I mean, I, he must have sold a boat of pre-orders. Now, you fast forward a year, 2011, middle of 2011, I started watching on the web, but, and I had people calling me. Are you connected with Bernie Rico Jr.? No, he went direct about a year and a half ago. I'm, I, have, I, have an, I have a couple in stock and want to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> but... I found out that he wasn't delivering. Yeah. And in 2012, you and I had met at NAM in 2010. We exchanged emails. And we had our first conversation. And 2012 was that. Was that you, when we had our telephone conversation? The, first, the very first one. You're yeah. like, what's going on with Bernie, <laughs> Eric? And I go, Jed, you tell me what's going on with Bernie. Because mm. I have like forums. There are forums like back then before the the before Facebook. There was remember the forums. The Fred? forums, yes. There was forums where they were, he was getting murdered on yeah. there, and there was uh, subsequently there was a 
uh, FBI investigation. There's a lot of shit that happened. Oh yeah. Wow, I did that. I didn't oh, know. That. Oh, it gets oh yeah. And then like you know, he was in their suicide watch. Then his oh, wife. Those, had those are things I know about, kind of intimately. Okay, yeah. well, I won't. Yeah. Well, I reveal what you're comfortable with, but I'm yeah. telling you, that's where I kind of like just said, "Wow, yeah. thank God we got out when we did." Yeah, we got out at the right time. Uh, you know, like we were saying though, uh, with the ESP thing, we would have loved to have gotten back into that. Sure, it wasn't How, available to us. Exactly, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't available. available. How did you get back in ESP? I just wrote to them. And, well, it did, was actually I, it was actually not that simple. Was, did um, you write to Alan? No, Alan was long gone. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So, so just briefly, my timeline is, yeah, is yeah, I yeah. went I went from I went from ESP and I went to Bernie, mm-hmm. and I wish that would have never ended the way it Me did too. because the guitars I have guitars are, are world class, and yeah. I will never ever fucking part with. I them. still have mine. I parted with one because it was a coffee table, and I'll never play it. But the other the other three are fucking world class instruments, and I'll never part with them. Right. From there, I went to this company in Romania called grossman oh remember them i don't yeah <laughs> actually so they uh, what happened there <laughs> <laughs> hold on hold on <laughs> perfect perfect fuck you <laughs> wow i'll take perfect. that okay right they, on they built me a they built me a they had some shapes and i took one of their shapes and designed it. i remember and and, and he built me a custom guitar based on that shape and I got it, and it was a really cool guitar, and it, it had all the the right things and feel. Mm-hmm. So I, I have to over exaggerate here for for emphasis. But here's the neck, here's the body, and this is how it was put together. Mm-hmm. And it was unfixable, mm-hmm. and and that's that's just the neck the, was set incorrect. It was incorrectly. Yeah. It was a neck through. Oh, oh and so you can't. Oh. It was a neck through. Oh, okay, wrong pitch. But that was that was. It was it was it was minuscule, but it was enough to make it without a question. noticeable. It was enough to make it apparent as the, the player. Right? And and there was and that's that was the biggest issue amongst a myriad of like smaller issues that added up to a really poorly built. And and he's like, well, this is the last this is the last hand built guitar I've ever done. I've got a CNC machine now, and <sighs> and I'm going to make this up to you. And so I ordered when that was when uh, Scar the Martyr was just getting going. I remember. So I ordered a gold top eight string Explorer through him and he built it and i have the pictures and i never got the guitar and apparently he said u.s customs refused it two times i never got the guitar so i'm going to make you a flying v okay well i want a white seven string flying v and he sent me pictures of it it was almost in completion and then and then all all um uh, communications just broke it's off. sitting in some kid's bedroom in, in bucharest I, just, I, want, <laughs> I want i want i want the fuck i want that gold top eight string because it had, had a piezo pickup in it yeah, what is it. that so it, it all just and i'm oh, like man. fuck you to that you guy 20 years from now it'll show up on you know, g-base and <laughs> yeah i I'm, if i ever get to romania i'm gonna hunt the motherfucker down <laughs> And he's still going, I think. You know, oh, I, really? I don't Man. know what happened or how. You know, and he's Fuck. building guitars for some of the death metal guys, and and I have some friends who have guitars from oh, him. Really, and but they are not from I the rest of the customer. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand how it went wrong. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. So I have this guitar that he built me, and it's just, it's a piece of fucking shit. I took it to uh to Tom Hawk out at CMC yeah. Guitars in yeah. In, yeah. In, in New Jersey. He, he's an expert builder, and he's like, this is unfixable. Yeah. Oh, and, and then unfixable. And then the guy, you know, and then the guy at uh, Grossman, he's like, well, send it to me, and I will fix it. And I'm like, you're a fucking look. I didn't get the last two. You're if a I said it, right. liar. Yeah, yeah. Let me send yeah. this to Romania <laughs> on my dime, right? So all of this was happening right <laughs> when STM was kind of getting going, and um. And one of our techs was was Jim Root's tech from from uh, Slipknot, and he's like, "Why don't you just go to Jack? Why don't you just go to Jackson?" I'm like, "Jackson," and he's like, "Fuck yeah, old school metal." So he made a call for me, and they sent me out. They sent me out a, a, a V. Mm. Shannon, build your V. No, it was it's not a custom. Just just, oh, just a fucking stock. A, stock. Just a stock. A stock. Um, like a. Like the LTD version. I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. What it is in Jackson. What is it? It's, it's so fantastic. Jackson. It's a, oh, my God. It's a fantastic guitar. Yeah. You know why? The neck. Because we made the Korean guitars that good. <laughs> the neck. <laughs> we did. I fell in love with the neck immediately. They have a, they have amazing feel. Oh, all across want, the board through that company. But they, they wouldn't, have. but they didn't have a lot of like Vs and stuff. And it was right when Scar the Martyr was getting going. And, and, I, and we needed seven and eight string guitars. And I'm like, I don't play non-pointy guitars. You know, I wanted V's, and, and they didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And 
Jackson so I, didn't have a pointed guitar. In a seven they or eight they string. didn't have a seven or eight string, which is what oh, I wanted. Okay. Which is what I wanted. They okay. sent they sent me a really cool seven string. Um, I, I don't know what it's soloist, called. It's soloist? a soloist, yes. soloist style. It's got a reverse head. Jackson yeah. has got the mark on reverse headstocks. It's the oh, best. Man, look, and it's the best on earth. But they're built it, like tanks. I fucking is amazing guitar. But I don't play strats. Yeah. I'm not. That's not me. It's not your style. But they couldn't. It, they couldn't fulfill what what I guess I was looking for at that time. And so I was like, I'm going to leave. And the fellow there, Mike Tempesta, mm-hmm. um, awesome Mike. guy. He tried to help. You know and him. he, you know, he he gave me like a couple of weeks to think. And then he called me. He's like, look, we'll get you a custom and we'll do you with the EVH amps. And I said, no. And that wow. might have that might have that might have been my mistake. Huh. And I saw him the following what year. What are you thinking, Jed? <laughs> right. I saw him the following year at NAM. I went to say hello and to just to thank him for being cool and stuff. And he just he's just like oh. literally turned his back to me. Whoa. And it sucked so what, bad. What? It sucked so bad. Oh, well he fuck didn't that. he didn't turn his back to me, but he just he just looked at me and he's kinda like I whatever can't, dude. I what, can't do this. Whatever, dude. You know, like yeah. you you wow. fucked us, so yeah. beat it. And yeah. and I feel really I still feel really bad for that because mm-hmm. there's a part of me that really loves Jackson guitars. Yeah, you know what we, I mean? all, because, we all do. And the, the only other thing so it didn't work out. And yeah. and now I see them. They got seven string V's and stuff. And I'm like, fuck. Of course, you know, of course. You know, and one of my buddies, Phil Demo, plays. You know, is a Jackson guy oh, through and yeah, through. Yeah. You know, he's like, you look good with the Bloodline. I'm like, I know, man. It feels good. I love these fucking things. You know. But it, it didn't. It didn't work out. And I, and I, it bum. It still bums me out a little bit because I kind of really wanted to be there. You know. Mm-hmm. And maybe part of me still kind of does. But after that, I'm just like, you know what? You know, uh, like, um. Chris Canella had been with Jackson and he was kind of my, he was my, the other guy and, yeah. and Phil, you know, kind of introduced me to Chris. Right. Um, anyways, Chris left Jackson for whatever reason and went to ESP. He said ESP. And yeah. when I knew he was at ESP, I'm like, I think I need to go home. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a real, I had a real like moment of clarity, I guess. Sure. I'm like, sure. I think I just want to go home. That happens over a career. It, it does. You realize- and you know, it's funny how that happens. Yep. And, and the same thing happened with amps and I'll get to that in a second, but so I called Chris, and I, he talked to the powers that be, and and they let me back, you know, and and they gave me a bunch of a road horse, you know, mm-hmm. uh, workhorse uh, guitars that I could use on tour, and you know, fucking topest, topest of drawers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now, the moonshine. I, I just want to say <laughs> that's that the I just talking. want to say that English is the only class ever <laughs> in school that I got an A in. <laughs> and right now I'm 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 running about an F minus. <laughs> well, there's a Canadian dialect and an American dialect, right? <laughs> well, that's but what I, I was <laughs> when when they when they at, when they had me back to ESP. I was so fucking thrilled. Yeah. And the first custom they I did, the first custom they did for me was was the Puzzle V custom. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen oh, that one for Eddie. It's the nicest guitar I've ever had in my life, hands down, above everything Dude, else. I wept when I saw that. And I, it, I, and I, thought, I, I felt like, I, yeah. although we weren't in the same room, mm-hmm. I know you. Yeah. That was so I finally, meaningful. And I, think, I, and I think, again, it's like as you get older, you start to realize what's important. I'm like, well, if I'm going to get a custom guitar, it might as well. It, it, you know, I've got some really beautiful ESB customs, but this one's got to, it's got to mean something to me mm-hmm. personally. Mm-hmm. And and Eddie's autistic. He's he's very high on the yeah, scale. It. I've shown it to you. It, it you know there's a whole lot of challenges that come with that. And and I just wanted to have something you know. It, this is his guitar. You know what I mean. And You're so a I fucking got, super dad, dude. So I got together with Travis Smith, who's who's he did all the artwork. He's done all the artwork for Opeth and yeah. so many other bands. He did it's all the artwork. For, he did all the artwork for Strapping Young Lad right. back in the day. And I'm like, dude, yeah. this is what oh, I he want. Did, he did. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know and that. He he did it for my for my solo record, the Tenet record. Yeah, uh, he did Zimmer's Tenet. Hole. I've been thinking about that. Yeah, <clears throat> so he's a good friend of mine. Okay. And so when I explained to him what I wanted to do, he was all in. So he designed that 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 graphic. It came out great. And so that guitar, I've never had a guitar with a maple neck before, I, with a maple board. I should funny say. Funny you said that. It didn't look like a standard piece that you play. No. And it was you my, requested that it way? was my I wanted a full change C change something on different. guitar something different okay and before I ordered that guitar you know it, I'm a Gibson guy sort of same here way back same here <laughs> I've I've got a my very first after I had the West Tone yeah That's my, my very fir, my very first good guitar that I could afford to buy was a Gibson Flying V 1984 okay, okay. ooh good year still have it I still have it 
it's been in a case. Want to sell it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the funny thing is, it's not worth really very much. Why? But Why? if I if it's I was if I was tasked to 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 sell all of my guitars, it would be one of the last. Got it. Yeah. yeah. I have, of course. I, it means the world. Of anyway, course. I pulled it out of the case. I, it had been in a case for about 10, 15 years, and you know the neck was always like, I'm unhappy, <laughs> you know. But I was like, yeah. I'm home. Yeah. So when I ordered that ESP custom twenty four seven five, that was the first. That was my first thing. That's nice. skill, like, baby. Twenty two fret, twenty four seven five. I'm nice. like, and that was something that I learned from v. when I was when I was with with was with with Bernie. Twenty five. So I'm starting to stumble. Twenty five um, five or twenty five two five. Twenty four seven five. Seven five. Give some scale. With, with, Bernie, with Bernie, would you? Bernie, <laughs> Bernie, Bernie was twenty five five. Yeah. But that when was I was with Ber- when I was with Bernie because I was you know because my ESPs prior to that my customs are twenty five five twenty four fret right 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 and Gary's like do you use those two frets and I'm like no, no. And he's like, what the fuck <laughs> you know, and I'm like that was one of the most valuable lessons I learned as a guitar player and I'm like so every guitar I've had since then has always always been a twenty two and and that that my old V's felt so comfortable so I got a twenty four seven five and then I'm like I've never had a maple neck before and you know I've always wanted an alder body. And I don't like. I don't like. That's Alder. It's Alder, and I don't like neck throughs. All my all my customs are sets, mm-hmm. except for the Bernies. They're neck throughs. Mm-hmm. So, Wh- what? Why is the bias there? It's just it's it's a it's a resonance issue. Uh, really. Exactly. It's you a high it. gain. It's a high gain resonance issue. And I first noticed it when I was playing for Frontline. Really? Line. Back in the early nine in the mid nineties, when I was playing for Frontline Assembly, Devin loaned me some of his okay. Explorers. Okay. He, he had some custom uh, uh, ESP Explorers that were neck throughs. And I just couldn't get a fucking handle on them. But when I grabbed my Gibson, interesting. I grabbed a Gibson, never had a resonance issue ever. Feedback, etc. I thought the whole <clears> idea <throat> of the string through was better resonance. Well, it's too much, I guess, when you're running sort of high gain, perhaps. Oh, and I don't know. And, and it's funny. You? And it's funny because I'm not a high gain guy. I mean, yeah. my gain right. is generally around 10 a.m. Right, right. You know, because right. this is where this is where the that's where it comes from. Is this? Abs. Although Punch. shoulder surgery is, that's another story. That, that <laughs> You're doing pretty good, pal. You're doing pretty good, pal. Um, anyway, so I'm like, I've never had a maple neck guitar, a maple fret, a maple uh, fretboard guitar, So, and I've never had an alder guitar. So I, older, I ordered uh, alder, wow. maple, uh, maple neck, maple fretboard, and... And when I got it, I mean, I mean, you've you've seen the pictures. Um, Love that. Piece. I almost brought it with me today, but I'm like, Love there's, gonna, there's, I there's plenty of there's plenty no, of guitar. No, but I wish you would have. There's it's plenty amazing, of guitars yeah. to play Black Diamond on here. <laughs> 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 That's but a 1999 they, farewell tour, by the way. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> the original farewell tour. They na- they nailed that guitar so perfectly, and it's a flat top. I've never had a flat top guitar yeah. before. I'm all about the bevels and the metal and all that <laughs> shit. I want, a, I want a flat top white guitar with a black with a black binding. It's just, I mean, it's the perfect instrument. I love that guitar. I'm never... The inlay, the, the freaking the paint you know, job. And, and Matt from ESP, he he was instrumental in kind of helping me, like, you know, I, just, I knew I wanted Look puzzle... Up, Look that one He up. knew I wanted puzzle pieces on the neck. Yeah. But he's like, why don't you... You know, and I didn't want them particularly. I didn't want them right on the first third f- on the on the. Fr- I wanted to kind of overlap the yeah, frets and stuff. Yep. He's like, "Why don't you have to continue on, on the headstock as okay. well?" Okay. So little things like that, and the advice they gave me. I mean, it ended up being like a really, really amazing guitar. And and so that that's the guitar I'm going to order from now on. Is it's going to be everything I'm going to. It's maple neck twenty four seven five. That's me. Alder. Always, always alder, always maple. So that wasn't too shrill for you. It wasn't too bright for you. Uh, for for me, for what I do, absolutely not. Huh, okay. Although, although at home, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a four twelve and a two twelve. I got a couple four twelves and a two twelve at yeah. home. They sound a they. Wow, they sound a little. <laughs> it happens. They sound a little shrill. <laughs> you buy that's one. What, what's one bigger? <laughs> Moonshine. <laughs> they sound a little shrill on the right October. <laughs> This is what happens <laughs> naturally. <laughs> um, like my Fortin amp, it's it sounds so fucking good through a regular old 1960A G12 T75 cab. cab. Yeah, it sounds yeah. so yeah. fucking good. I plug it in my V30 Mesas, and it's not quite. It doesn't. It's, it's not quite there. It's, it's different. The food you know? chain, man. It's the food chain, right? I got one of these uh, isolation cabs built by. Uh, Mr. Mr. High End over here. It's called uh, uh, Box of Doom. They're out of there. I'm familiar with them. Yes. Yeah. Box it's of amazing. Doom. They 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 brought one out when we were in Europe, and it's uh, I've never heard anything like that in my life. I'm like Ooh. unplug my caps. It's fine. No Run shit. This. So I bought one. Had it shipped over here. It was not fucking cheap to get, it, and it's got one of the Celestian Redback 150s in it. 
holy fuck is it amazing really except with the fortin it's just like the fortin has so much it's like you opening up the faucet a little bit and it's just like fuck you fuck you <laughs> in your face right? i mean <laughs> fuck you <laughs> fuck you <laughs> it's just musicians we get it there's mm-hmm. so much there's so much water coming out of that faucet mm-hmm. when you open it even just a little bit the um, floodgates open the, yeah. the old the old the old the old 1968 cabs they sound fucking amazing mm. with it amazing you got one in that room next door by the yeah, way yeah i've just been looking at that thing you know I've, I, I, <laughs> that's fred that's mine that, and i was well, trying fuck to, you it's mine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to think of what i have in there i can't i can't even remember what i put in that basket weave wait here's the story i have shit every 2000 fred enters my life 2002 walks into my office this it's repetitive to some of you i'm sorry but you've never heard it ah. walks into my office at boogie street one day I, I i said i had an ibanez base so ibanez was so no, not ibanez bc rich BC rich base bc rich moved to cincinnati and i before washburn i For was the spaghetti a, or i don't know maybe <laughs> <laughs> they might as well chili dogs they make down there they might as well <laughs> i'm just gonna have so, another sip of no that. so fred <laughs> so fred goes yeah try bc rich man we'll order some custom stuff from there and see right. they, they they were going to buy into my theory, right? They sent me some guitars, three. Remember three? One was a bass. None of them, the fret ends were cut off with a freaking clipper and never dressed, dressed at all. Oh, that's so brutal. And they put them that's in a like, case. That's metal. That's blood. That's, that's blood all over the It literally street. is blood. <laughs> they sent them to me in a case and go, here you go. Here's our first three for you. So immediately I left them and went to washroom. But I had this blue one. Jesus, bald headed chicken and, fucking and, Christ and, on the crutch. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Catanese goes, Yeah, my tech Fred Qual is the bomb. I go, Yeah, I know Freddie somehow. I call Fred on the phone. I'm at this address, 1000, whatever it is. I can't remember address. 22 uh, Acacia yeah, Avenue. Yeah, what the fuck 22 was Avenue. What, what was our address? Uh, different? I don't know. I just fucking knew to drive five, there. 555. Five, <laughs> six, six, six. I'm not going to be there, but I'm leaving a key under this rock. Ooh, near. nice. Nice. <laughs> did. Would you mind coming in and setting this base up? Yeah. Well, here, I was there, Jed, and he shows up. He wow. walks in the back door of my office. Not Hair me. all beautiful. It was beautiful, yeah. Still is, you fucking Pant- asshole. Pantene, every day. <laughs> he walks in, and I have nothing but like 2,000 square feet, maybe like 20 guitars and a desk. Mm-hmm. And two desks. He walks in and goes, hey, man. I'm like, I don't know, who the fuck are you, you <laughs> long-haired bastard? I didn't know. <laughs> and then he walks in, and he sees the blue base leaning against the wall and goes, oh, that one? And I'm like, okay. He grabs the base. He looks at it and goes, King Tang Tong. Who goes? Who the f- did? They just clip these these, these fret these fret wire ends off. Like, they just like yeah, just straight clip. Oh, he yeah. takes <laughs> he Holy takes moly. a cord goes over to the Iomi amp, which is like Wait, my, he, my, he, my, my prize <laughs> possession, right? Who is Oink? <laughs> Plugs the bass into the Iomi amp and puts his leg up, and I have the video of this. Oh boy! And goes starts playing and goes goes. When's this thing to be done? I'm like, oh, I need to ship back yesterday. He goes, all right, well, I got. I'm going downtown to work a, a gig. I'll come back. I'm like, okay. Are you Fred? Yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> much. I guess you're that guy. I came back the next day. There was that road case right there, the mm-hmm. bottom and the top, sitting in the middle of my office, in a fold-up chair which he brought, <laughs> and a, t- a card table which he brought. Nice. And the case is on my desk done I call him on the phone I said hey man thank you so much what do I owe you guys nah we're cool I'm like come on man the next day I call him was there any chance like you'd want to do this on a regular basis <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you find the guy <laughs> well pursue go, him my wife and Literally, I went away. You know. my wife and I go to Deep Creek Maryland for a, a weekend I come back he f- moved in <laughs> there was there was a mini fridge <laughs> he's looking for a place <laughs> alcohol like you can't freaking believe guitar magazine stacked yeah. up like in three separate rows yeah and he pushes everything in the corner and and he never left yeah and that's and the, it, all, it, but all his shit was done <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he did everything and the funny part was about a week later he goes he uh do you mind if i i don't have a room at home do you mind if i store this marshall half stack on your place I'm like yeah sure no problem Bring it down. So that was 2003, and we're now in 2020, Jed. There she is. There it is. He's never, it's still, and the road case 
is still uh, here. It's amazing. Right? Amazing. Ran out of space in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my garage is an unhappy place. So that's, <laughs> it doesn't contain a car. <laughs> but that's it. That's how Fred entered the Boogie Street sphere. And then it, amazing friendship, yes. And then we started designing stuff. And it all just kind of like... That must have been so cool. I, I, uh, he, you he's know, there's a, a dude, part of me that wishes I could have been a part of that. He's a rock star. Yeah. He's, to, to, listen, oh, I met no. rock stars before. He's a fucking rock star. Absolutely. Because... Not only can he play, and he has in front of big audiences, but the point was, he knows the back end of it. Yeah. He supported... That's more important than the front end. I think the so. The front end only exists because of the back end. <gasps> You're the first guy that ever I said, said that. It. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have sex later. We will. <laughs> But it's How true. How great is that, right? It's that's absolutely fucking, awesome. fucking true. Uh, and, 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 then, and then my parents would stop by once in a while because my folks were gorked out, right? Yeah, and my parents would show up. My mom would show up once in a while. And my mother would love him because he would give the best Paul Stanley imitations. Or any, you know, and he, and it, it was ridiculous. I mean, mm-hmm. My mom would call me, oh, your friend Fred, I'm so glad he entered your life. He seems like a nice Christian boy. <laughs> I'm so glad. Good Catholic. You, you know, Lies. this really worked <laughs> She goes, honey, I am so happy. That guy, he looks a little unusual, <laughs> but he really is a nice person. <laughs> he looks exactly the same as he does now. Uh, I mean, not a, no, there's no gray. He yeah. had more gray hair back then than he does yeah. now. Yeah. The point was, that's how uh, it all kind of freaked out. Me, and, and, of. and from there, it was just, it just exploded in, 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 in a good way. I really think that's amazing. Way. I really do. I think that's amazing. I wish you had entered our life earlier. I wish I could I, have been part of that because yeah. it must have been a really <laughs> fucking cool time for guitar. And the, part, you know and I mean? and the funny part it about was it was fun. how we brought you to Washburn, they had mm-hmm. plenty of East. And, yeah. and at that time, I, they would have built you whatever you want. Yeah. Well, we got rid of I tons looked, of Vs. I, I looked at Washburn, too, and, and maybe it was a different time or something, but it just it, I was just like, what the fuck is this? You yeah. know? Well, Apart from the Dime guitars, which I thought well, were spectacular. Well, we would, Dime leaving Washburn. I always say to Fred, too, if it had Dime not left, Washburn, yeah, and I entered that fray because Rudy Schlocker gave us carte blanche at Washburn to whatever <laughs> we, we wanted, wanted to do. To do. Mm-hmm. But they dug us because he had the ends. Fred knew everybody, right, so right, right, right. Well, that's interesting because I, I, you know, again, you know, not not being a dime fan, but being a fan of of the guitars themselves. Right, right. I thought the Washburns were always the finest of the bunch. I, I we agree thought with you. so. We thought so. I mean, there's no knock against Elliot and Dean. You know, it's not just the points. It just it just they. They looked right. They looked right. They played right. All right. I'm you know, sure D3. they did. I never got to touch one. You know? Oh, well. <laughs> well, we well, well, we'll get up to me. I'm sure there's, one, there's probably one right above us. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Somewhere, bro. Let me, let me get up on a ladder here. And, uh, I have a friend um, in, in Texas named Brandon who, who makes... Who Machacho? Make, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, who yeah, makes guitars yeah. out, of his, out of his garage yeah. for love, for I've, nothing else. I've watched that guy's whole thing evolve. He built me... And I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures. He built me a, 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 a the dime shape. I don't know what the awesome. shape is called. The Stealth or the D three. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with the terminology, pointy, but it's just pointy pointy or around. It. Stealth, stealth, point, point. But he built You're me a, a, a baritone seven. One of those. Oh, oh man, the, the first one ever that he's built. That would be awesome. It is a fucking amazing guitar. God bless and him, I man. would I would go you know like he's amazing. But then he's he's gotten all these problems from Dean and stuff over the, over the Suing last. Him. Yeah. And I feel really bad for him because he's not doing it for yeah. profit. He's doing it for love. Yeah, that's, that's fun. I, Elliot's Dean. That's a different. That's a, that's a, a different. It's a different Dean. Elliot's Dean. Dean. Yeah, Elliot Ruben, Rubinson. Rubinson. I don't. I don't know any of the ins and outs yeah. of that. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you some pictures of the guitar later. But it's yeah. a fantastic instrument. Fucking a uh, white burst. Uh, uh, single pickup. I may have seen that. It's it's an amazing guitar. It's just it's. I mean, it's fuck. What the fuck is this? I'm like, because I thought you know, because for Vimic at at the time, I'm like, I need a seven string, and I like. I don't like eight string guitars, and what I what I done in Vimic is I don't I won't play the eight strings, but I'll take a seven string and tune it down like right, an eight string and omit, right. the, omit the high E, right? Which is what I did in strapping because at that time I hated seven strings too. <laughs> There's the secret, pal. Yeah, <laughs> Devin always had a seven string, and I was like there on my sixes, and I just omit the high E and tu- and tune down. It worked for me for years. Yep. But the funny thing is, you know, um, after playing eight string, I fucking hate though. I kept one, I kept one, and it, it's a nice LTD. That's gotta be string. hard to play. It man. sucks ass on every level. Fuck it, and I'm sorry, Mashoga. I love you, but no. <laughs> but the takeaway from that is I'm pretty comfortable on a seven string now. You oh, know what I mean? I, I, get I have it. no problem. And I the guitar it. that Brandon made for me is 
is spectacular. Yeah, it's so a that, wonderful instrument. That guy entered my life. I want to say ooh, we were still. We were, I think we we're still in business. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, and he would ask me particular questions, and he was really cool, man. Mm-hmm. He was. He was one of those guys who would reach out with technical questions that oftentimes I couldn't answer. I'd yeah. refer him to him. Right. And sometimes I'd refer him right to Chewy. Mm-hmm. And so you remember, familiar with Chili? I, I, Chewy? Yeah. The I don't, painter at Washburn back in the day? I know the name. I don't know the I think I don't he's know out, personally. He, who's he out? He's working at L.A. somewhere. You for, got me. Like, what I do know is this is empty. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> He almost spit. <laughs> Come on, man. This rug needs to spit before you leave. Uh, oh, your name is Candy. Of course you are. <laughs> I'm sweet. Chewy was the painter for Wash. Okay, great. He's out in L.A. doing some other brand right now. I don't know. Not ESP. Not, not a big brand, but the guy... <clears throat> Not only was he a sweetheart of a guy, we go to Chicago, but he loved Fred, he loved me, loved my family. He would do anything for us. Steve Bennett. Mm-hmm. Steve, you're watching. Steve Bennett was the salesperson, the inside coordinator who took our business model to Rudy Schlocker at Washburn and sold it. Like, look, take a chance on this guy in Pittsburgh. He's got right. a roadie and Fred Tricola who's been all over the world. They want to make special stuff. Steve Bennett, David Karen. Uh, people that at Washburn that really were developmental in what we did, these folks believed in us, mm-hmm. and Chewy was the guy who painted all the amazing shit. Damn. Not just for us. What a great time. For a dime, man. It was fun. The hella flaws. It was fun. the hella flaws? Yeah. Yeah, there was the... Burgers for hella flaws. Oh, my yeah. God. It was so much... It was an era that you wish you could have kept forever. Sure. But... Yeah. But but at least you have it to look back upon. You know I do. I mean? We do. We talk about it. You know, there's, there needs to be a book. It wouldn't be a bestseller, there does but there needs to be a book. To be a book it's a it, coffee table. It would book. be a seller. A seller, not a bestseller. <laughs> but I mean, I would buy it. Eric would buy them all, just like he bought all the pictures of the Knights album. <laughs> Just like the Kiss solo albums, yeah, they yeah, sold. Yeah, they yeah, sold. Yeah. They, they shipped mil- in the millions. They shipped the gold. They never Eric, sold because Eric, Eric. they bought them all. I bought them all. I bought them. <laughs> My family bought them all. It's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> That's uh, what look happened. it up. It's true. Yeah. No, but I, I just that the whole era. Had you been a part of? Mm-hmm. Had I met you four years mm-hmm. earlier? Sure. Yeah. Right? I know. It's, uh, it's oh, and I knew him four years earlier. And I think we would have been right on the same page, like like this. You know what I mean? The, 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 the passing so, of the night. So the Rico thing. Mm, mm. Whatever you're able to talk about, I don't want you to talk about what you can't. <clears throat> so I watched all this from afar, and Bernie kind of like just disappeared. Yeah. And yeah. We, you and I had spoken. We were really concerned about Bernie's health. It wasn't even Correct. so much the business part of it. No, that that was, that part was an aside at that point. Absolutely. So can you share, like, because I mean he. <clears throat> He wouldn't respond to me. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. I mean, it's a choice. And I, I wonder if that's maybe because you had a business relationship where it was. But, but ours he, didn't was... Know, he didn't know me any money, and I didn't know him any okay. money. We were, okay. we were very square, right? We were square. Yeah, we're square. We ended square. square. But I was gone nine months before he even ran that sale. Yeah. But the problem Fuck. was people were associated Boogie Street with me that. and Fred yeah. with that brand. That's, and I'm like, look, man, I am like, time out. We're done. We've mm-hmm. been done. He's direct yeah. now. Game over. I what do remember the that. fuck happened? What do you, What can you share with us as to what you believe happened? Well, I know what happened. Tell for me. The, for the most part. But it's from, and that's why I said, like, you you're, you're might have been a, a business day for you where he was my friend. My um, friend, and, too. I, yeah, and he was. He's a genuinely I nice... I spent time in his house, dude, with, right, with, right. with Macy and his wife. Right. And I didn't mean to insinuate that you no, weren't. No, 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 um, I understand. I I believed in him maybe too much, mm-hmm. um, but the last time I saw him uh, personally, there were scars from here to here. He showed them to me, and he goes, this is this is what happened. And like suicide scars. Correct. Okay. He did it on both arms. So the stories weren't bullshit. The stories are not bullshit. And that's the price of pressure, and, you know. And mm-hmm. and the pressure I think must you have been it. the pressure I think it. must have been an immense at that time. Oh, exactly. And I can't I can't give you a, a, an out, Bernie, because I think he probably brought it upon himself. Mm-hmm. I don't know that for sure, but I all all points lead to mm-hmm. that being the, the reasonable conclusion. Well, mm-hmm. it, it it becomes a a, a point where you're trying to to. 
I was keep up what you ex- what your promise what the, what the people will Correct. perceive you and to I be. Think, and I think commitments. I, and and yeah. you know, and this harkens back to, to earlier on when we were talking about the custom trucks and the custom house and all this. And I think maybe Toys. maybe he went far beyond his Toys. means far too early. That's what and happens. it caught up to him really quickly, and and. The, the the pressure caved him in the end. And that's what gets. That's what happens. Anyway, um, I that was the last time I saw him, and he showed me that. When and, when, and it, when that was, was this? that was the when? time that was the time, and, and I can't I don't know the dates, but that was when he started to try to come out from underneath it, and he was trying to he was trying to deliver, and I don't know if you know anything about that. I remember it vaguely. He tried to he tried to make good on all of that 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 had gone astray for him, and I guess that failed too. And by that time, I had, I had, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, you're out. Yeah. And and from what I heard, and from what I know, from talking to him, is he did it again a second mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And that was when, <clears throat> and that was when, um, it, um, th- that was when the family. Well, left Macy, the situation. And it's, it's his a wife business. and Macy split. I remember yeah. that. I mean, I can, yeah. that, was that was pretty was, obvious on social media. Can tell you that. Oh, I know, and I know, and I, it's it's hard for me to talk about because sure, it, I, sure. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to touch on something that I don't know everything about. But right. that was. I think that was probably the last straw for them, and mm-hmm. perhaps rightfully so. Even though I hate to see a father lose yeah. a daughter and of a course, wife, and, of course, and it just that breaks my heart. But I'll never know the the ends of that particular situation, and nor do I really want to. I don't yeah. think. Um, and from that point, you know, maybe it's the the sentimental me or the or the whatever but i kept you know I, I also had bernie's number and i kept in touch with him and and we would talk and he was he was living in a friend's garage at this point or he yeah. was he was yeah. doing this or doing that yeah and the last contact i had with him was he was asking me he was trying to sell some camera equipment on ebay and he was wondering if i would do it for him um mm-hmm. so i for whatever reason it, it was sketchy right off the top yeah you know, I, I don't have to touch on it too much but i um uh, that that was when I said no, we're 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 done, and and that was it. And just just before that, I, I'd forgotten one thing um, during our conversations when he was living in this garage. He's asking me if I had any clothes that I could. Oh. I sent him a I sent him a box of clothes from my house to some mm. garage in you know in the LA area. Mm. And uh, I mean, you can kind of put all those things together and and gather what's what transpired you know well, it's, it's a brutal business it, man it's, it's but it's it's it's, it's heartbreak it's a fall from it grace that's yep. that's so epic you can be on top for such a great day. for such a what's you know and i didn't know him for his life so i can't it's, but for what seemed to be a really great guy and and he not only did he lose his business but he lost his family you know and that that that's a, as a as a father and a husband that that is that's hard. more than i can really stomach you know what i mean and, and understand comprehend you know what um, i mean that's the hardest thing ever but anyway so that that was the you know i sent him a bunch of clothes and and then and then when he asked me to sell some it, it sounded sketchy sell some camera equipment on ebay under an, uh, your name or and give me the money whatever i can't even remember what it was <laughs> but i'm like that's it we're done yeah and that was the last time i spoke with him and that was 2012 or 13 perhaps wow. All right, we're gonna go to strapping young lad, and you guys. Strapping young okay. lad, we're gonna talk about the real quick. Real, I got, I got. God Let's damn! Talk about, no, no, you and I continue. I want to make sure while you're here, you can talk I, about I that. You, I give you 15 minutes. She's got the magic touch. Let's talk about you touring us with with, with Black Label. I'm not you're listening to you. Oh. She <laughs> got the magic touch. <laughs> you're walking around in a dream, motherfucker. <laughs> We will have to do this again. Too bad we can't take this on the road, man. No, this is it's, it's hard. Look at this operation. There How is, can I take this on the road between really? between the, the mines and the surround. There, there's enough to talk about for for weeks. I'm and, sure. Uh, well, that's why it's what I said, man. It's therapeutic. Well, this it, is it part is. one. This is Jed Simon part one. That's what, what we were talking about when you were out of the room. We it's like this is, room. but it's all on camera. We have to. Godzilla. Oh, yeah, uh, I like those things. Those things are great. You do you? Yeah, these are great. I I, my my wife thinks there's too much. There's too much there. No, like, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Never sure you're a good wife, but no. Right. The wives are the, the wives. The wives know. are good. I'm gonna lavish it on movies, so I'm saying they're great, man. I love it. I need a better dimmer. We're gonna work on that, Fred. Lava lamps are great because you can do, do like, like this them? when you when you're when I'm when I'm doing tracks at home. My God, and, and it this is your what hands I do. Up. It yeah. heats your hands. This up. is what I do. And I'm sorry, I got my finger juice all over your fucking I, I lava lamp. Actually, my, I'm I not stick, sorry. It's that. <laughs> 
I can't, we're done. I, I, yeah, we're, we're, we're done. done. I, I can't. I, yeah, you are, you will not be part of the organization. Thank you so much for coming. I love. I, I actually really do like the lighting in here. Though, you will this is not be super part cool. of the organization. That's not gonna happen. Jack, yeah. over here. Uh, Social media shit. Okay. And, and you know what? I don't drink anymore. Yeah, me neither. Every, every show. <laughs> I'm going to No. Every <laughs> show. You know, I, I'm not, I don't drink anymore. Yeah, okay, uh, Fred. Drink any less. That's the, that's the thing. I don't, so, I don't drink ready? any less. Are you ready? We're, I'm counting us back in. All right. Uh, four? So before... <laughs> Four, yeah, so before, Where's the count? Four. You said I'm going to count us back in. You went to so the public school. I love to count. You went to Short Valley, right? Uh, uh, now it's Cannon uh, Mac. Uh, 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 let's, uh, let's count uh, us in. Uh, One. Two. Three. He only got past grade seven. Four. One, you, know, you got so. your grade ten? Got yeah. my grade ten. Okay. So Where's my glasses at? Pave the driveway with hash. So for... All right, let's count us back in. So my point to you is we... I only have about 20 more minutes for Fred has to split, and then, and then yeah. the real show is going to begin with uh, Jed and the, I. The good stuff. But no. Zoinks. These guys actually <laughs> toured together for a short period of time. I mean, I think 2002. 2000, 2000, 2001. 2000, 2000, 2000 man. Okay, somewhere. 2000 we, man. 2000 man. That was a Stone song. It originally. was, and it's, it's well done. So yes. check it out. The, uh, back in the day. <clears throat> you know what? Everybody says that. What does that mean? It's, it they, means when we were you. younger. When uh, we were young. When we were, okay. When we were 20 years younger. Okay, 20 years. So check it out. Black Label. Don't speak into that mic so close. You're blown Oh, my here. God. Did, did, did he not say? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a piccolo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink any less. Tap out. <laughs> tap out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit! All right. Anyways, <laughs> thank you, Robert lad. Chapman, for yeah, the uh, not at all. Robert, it's all your malt fault. cask. Better you're taking old it. Dude. Thank God you're taking it. He's taking home. that home with him. Yes. A, yes. Or it could be the uh, Johnny Bootlegger Moonshine. That's See, what mine is. is still pretty much full. Uh, well, he's out. Mine too. Uh, oh, holy. oh, here you go. That's water. Never there you go. Go. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> It's all you. See, I don't, I don't drink any less, folks, and I don't. There's a reason. So, so check it out. So, so we were on tour. Uh, Black Label does this tour, and it was around Halloween. Was it? I don't remember. It was because we had the Halloween mass, and we took over. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, so, so we all. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so, yeah. so, 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 it, it's typical Black Label, and we're going into Canada, and and we're with a we're with Strapping Young Lad, mm. and I think it's right before the Strapping Young Lad album. It was before, right before our self-titled came out. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. So it was, it was oh one, probably. It was oh one, yeah. So, 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 so we're over, and it's typical Zach fun, and oh yes, we're going up there, and he's like, "Dude, where do you fucking see these fucking guys fucking play, man? <laughs> these fucking guys fucking, you're gonna fucking blow your fucking mind with these fucking guys fucking playing these fucking guys," and he was right. And, and, and I remember I was I, I, I stood on the side and, and, and I was I was like you know what fuck tuning these fucking guitars I'm watching these guys fucking play and it was great but it was typical Zach fun mm -hmm. and I have video of all this stuff man one of these days ooh, I'm gonna ooh. do I'm gonna do the Fred video oh yes, yes. And, and we had, we had stopped. And even though this is Jed's show, I'm going to tell my story. Yes. So, so, so we had stopped. Sorry. My story. Sorry, Jed. Uh, we had Sorry, Jed. We had stopped so at, at a, like a Walmart in like Niagara Falls, and we bought all these Halloween outfits. Mm. And so we all got masks, and we're going to take them over to Canada, <laughs> and we're going to perform in Halloween masks. And I've got this stuff all, all on tape. And we all got our, but I, I have a, a particular thing where we're at, we're at the uh, Niagara Falls Hard Rock Cafe, and we're all in our masks and doing it. But I remember little Eddie Mapp, who was the sound guy, uh, he he looked like an 18-year-old kid. Actually, he looked like a 14-year-old girl. Did he work for Kiss later on? No, he didn't. He's okay. the guy that I used to get, I like, I take him to the movies, and they're like uh, two adults, and like, no, my adult and my son, you know? And he's like, he's I, like I, I'll take the discount. Take yeah, it. And he's like, he's like, that's your son. I'm like, he is 12, thank you. Yes. And we got him into Stonehenge. The guy goes, 
two adults? And I'm like, no, this is my son. He goes, well, you have to be 16 and under. I'm like, thank you, he's 14. <laughs> and, and, and he starts crying. It's like, ah! I'm like, thank you for fucking up my son. You know, he's, <laughs> he has hormone <laughs> issues. Yeah, but he's got an eight ball. Yeah. But but we went we went to uh, we went to we were going into Canada. We were buying Halloween outfits right. to play with you guys. Right. And. Uh, and, and and Zach stops at a Walmart, and we make Eddie wear this like eight and under like Spider Man outfit, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, got yeah. like you know he's he's a and and this I just remember checking out, and Zach made us wear our outfits. We we changed in the store. We walked through the checkout line, and the lady's like, mm hmm, and she's like sitting her check, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. hitting the, hit the, hit the, hit the price. And I just remember this kid going. Look, mommy, there's Spider Woman because he had his hair like sticking out of the back of the mat. She says, "No, honey, that's Spider Man." She's like, "Looks, it's like like his big like bulge in the front of his pants." <laughs> no, honey, that's that's Spider Man. That's a man. Yeah, that's a man. <laughs> but we were playing with you guys, and you guys were on stage, mm-hmm. and we're sitting in the crowd. I, re- I remember standing side stage, and, and I'm standing, I'm, I'm in my outfit, and Eddie's out front, and I'm watching him walk walk through the crowd in his Spider Man outfit, <laughs> and I actually went the front of house in my Halloween outfit and watch these guys and Eddie's standing there oh we made him stick a, stuff a cucumber down his <laughs> down his Spider-Man shit so he's standing there in a Spider-Man outfit with a cucumber down the front of his pants oh and, and we're watching Strapping Young Lad oh my and it, and it blew my mind watching these guys play yeah and it, it was it was it was amazing and it was just like man this is this is fucking awesome, and it, but that was one of my highlights of, of my early career is 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 playing Canada. And the other thing I remember playing about that, what, what, what was I always, that? I always blame <laughs> Canada. <but. laughs> what was what was that? What was that place in Montreal we played? What was the name? Uh, Le Foufoun Electrique. Okay, so check uh, it out uh, or, or whatever. One, one more yeah, time, pick your own mm-hmm. French accent. <laughs> Uh-huh. Left phone phones electric. Uh-huh. So I remember this. Dukes, Oaks, Outchoiks, Abek Lake. We had the bus. We had the bus pulled in, <clears throat> and they had some kind of elevated, uh, like you back down this to get into the place. Oh, it was a nightmare. That's one nightmare load. Did, yeah. That, that, so check it out. We're, me and Zach, and this is what I remember about that, and we were on tour with you guys. This is my story. Me and Zach are sitting <laughs> my there. My story. And, and I'm brushing my hair, and Zach's like, dude, you got fucking... Dreads fucking going, bro. He fucking and he goes, Dreads. he goes, dude, you're ripping all that fucking shit out, bro. Fucking what the fuck? And he gets behind me. He's like, dude, you got to fucking just separate all that shit. And he's, pu- and he's pulling my hair, and and I'm like, and he's like, he's like, dude, what the fuck? You haven't brushed your hair in a fucking. Week. I'm like, you haven't brushed your hair in a week. He goes, well, you can fucking do me next. And we're fucking sitting like, <laughs> you can do and, me and, next. And, and he's and, and he's pulling the fucking dread. But and then lo- Devin walks by. No, 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 no. Check it out. We look. And like you said, it's, a, it's that back end place. But we look, and there's the fans standing outside the bus, <laughs> eye level with the bus, oh, no. watching us do each other's fucking hair, man. Uh, and, and I always laugh, but that was the place in Montreal. Oh and my. I laughed my ass off. Oh, and, my and, God. And so we walked out onto that stage with our Halloween oh, masks. Oh, my God. And there's video of it somewhere, but we're, we were playing. But I just remember watching Strapping Young Lad, and I had this fucking Halloween mask on. And I just remember watching Eddie walk through, and I'm like, Holy shit! So I walked, from, watched from front of the house, and they were so cool. And you guys, mm. you, amazing. And yeah. I and I told, of I saw, course, I, man. I saw of Devin. Course. I saw Devin in Europe on the on the the Devin Townsend project, uh, like two years ago, three years ago. And I'm like, look, man, <laughs> I got to geek out. Yeah. <laughs> Can Let's I talk get, about this thing. Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, he's like, oh, it's good to meet you. I'm like, well, actually, I met you. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember years this? Ago. <laughs> you remember <laughs> this? No, I, well, I remember. I remember that particular gig because I remember. I remember Fred because Fred had the most luxurious hair, <laughs> and that's kind of what I remember. Pantene, Pro V, every day. <laughs> Oh, and that was Did only you because have to say that? No, it was only because Zach had fucking <laughs> Zach, meticulously <laughs> picked it apart. We looked like two monkeys in there. Yeah, but that was but that was on a gig with these guys. But we looked good. He's like, but it was the whole Zach. Dude, what the fuck, man? Dude, Dude fucking brush this off. That fuck. was right around the time when Dev started to grow to grow dreads in his hair. Like, I, it's not that he didn't care. It's just I, I, I don't know if he, I, I don't know. But <laughs> Dev, Dev had some epic dreads at one point, and they were they were nasty. But let's be oh, honest. Oh my god. Same so like, you say that, and I'm just like, you know, like I can think of times when I'd be like, dude, I just want to pick that thing apart. Dude, I just want to take it out. But like, I don't want to touch it. But t- well, see, but, but here's the thing: is I would I would wash my hair, mm. but I wouldn't fucking 
brush it. And, that, and that's what happened with the dredge, you know. Mm-hmm. And Zach would not wash his hair and, and brush it. And, and, oh. but, and, but he would go, okay, can you get mine, bro? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not touching that fucking like, rat. That, 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 run away! <laughs> run away! <laughs> run away! <laughs> that that tells you how much of a friend you are. But we 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 yeah. toured, we toured together, and, and I just remember seeing these guys thinking, "Wow, this is amazing!" Force, and, yeah. and we've run into each other. We ran into each other at Chicago yeah. Open Air. Yep. And, you know, and, and, but we've, we've seen each other through the, through the years. You know, and, and it's and I and I'm like, I know we have more than a connection than just that, and that that's kind of what it was. Exactly, you know I mean? man. And, and it's always. It's this weird thing with with musicians, and even granted, I'm a tech now, but it, it, it's it's weird thing because you have that camaraderie mm-hmm. because you have somebody that understands. Yeah, correct. You know what, what you correct. go through out here. Yeah, you know, and, and musicians go through their things, and techs go through their things, but it's all the same thing. And, and and you sit around and you say, oh well, you know, this guy can get what I'm saying. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you try to come home and you try to convey it to people. It's, it's difficult. Oh, he's yeah. tried multiple times to and, me. And, and, they have, and on the road, and on the road, I've also I've always been like, like I'm not the guy on stage. I'm also the guy behind the stage and mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And I've, and I've, and over the years, I've always you know I I want to help. I want to I want to help load the truck. I want to help. Of course, I want wow. to help change. You know, and changing the strings and setting up the guitars was kind of like selfish and stuff because the guys that I had were perfectly capable of doing it. But I'm like, you just like, but yeah. you know, I want to help. But it's just, it, and it's it's nice. I, I connect. I always connected more to the guys behind the stage than I did with. And that that's not true either. But I I I was I had an equal relationship with the guys behind the stage because. Yes. They they made the wheels fucking turn, right? And and growing up in in a small town and working hard mm-hmm. and you know physical labor and all that shit, I, I always wanted to help out and I and I was always there a lot of the time to like help load a truck or Got help it. or help load a trailer and then getting in trouble for it because we need your fucking fingers, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't and, then, and then feeling shame for that, you yeah. know, and it was yeah. it was a weird. Well, paradigm yeah. if, you, to, if you like have an accident and close your hand on like you know the case coming down right and that's exactly they're, they're it. Worse fucks. but i wanted to be part of that because i i enjoyed i didn't enjoy it fuck who am i kidding but i mean i just wanted to but I you wanted, wanted to contribute i wanted to contribute i guess is what it is and i'm plus, guessing most of those high-end of, artists have no fucking a lot interest of, in doing yeah. that right and a lot of those guys <laughs> are my friends yeah you know? exactly and, 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 that, and that's exactly <laughs> it one of the first things i i wasn't with Zach at the time, I was a local stagehand, mm. and uh, I saw him on the No More Tours tour, and I just remember. That's he, when he had the best guitar tone. Oh, man, my right, God. Right yes. then. Yep. I've got a 5.1 uh, like video release from, from that era, yep. and I've never heard guitar sound so good. Amazing. So amazing good. Amazing and tone on it. I know it's Marshall. It, it's Marshall. <laughs> it's not Metaltronics. It's, it's, it's Marshall. It's Marshall. In fact, he had those, uh, I, be, I believe, and maybe he'll write to me and tell me if he sees this, I believe it, it's this amp he called Baphomet. Mm-hmm. Like Inez for his Alice in Chains mm-hmm. still has those uh, SVT twos that yeah. he had with Ozzy, and that's when that's and, his sound. Zach had one called Baphomet, and and Baphomet was the was from the '91 No More Tours tour, right. and that thing sounded amazing, man. It was the amp grill. <clears throat> uh, it, was, it was the amp head itself. That's another yeah. thing I liked about Marshall's Ampegs as well. Absolutely, with Ampegs and 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 being friends with Byron, you know. He's probably got the best bass tone I've ever heard in my life, and that's because of Ampeg, but it's yep. also because of a very strong right hand, and that's what yep. I associate with, with with tone. But it's like it's funny how Marshall's and Ampeg's particular have you know they differ from head to head. Yeah, and when you find one you like, you fucking keep that one. Oh, you Sorry, keep, you I hang on that pound the table. How many did but you go It's through? absolutely true. It, it's absolutely and that's true. exactly. It. I, I've got a, I've got a, uh, I've got a ghost soon, but uh, <laughs> I've got I've got a couple of different Marshalls, that being one of them, mm-hmm. but. You find that one, and that's the, that's the keeper, man. I had a 50 watt oh, back in the day that sounded so amazing, and I sold it, and I've regretted it. You're to not this taking day, us but out of here, by the way. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm leaving that here for a while. Yeah, 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 it's going home. <laughs> well, well, I'm, 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 I'm the 2000 right. fuck got, off, but I'm taking the cab. Yeah, that stays right there. <laughs> I've, got an eight, I've got an 800, I've got a 900. That, I've got one of the 900s that's actually sound amazing. You're kidding. Oh, my God. One I've eight, never heard that story ever. I've got an 87 Silver Jubilee that's number four. I, I think Bocot said. I love said, the Jubilees, man. Bocot said it was it was oh, when he fuck. when I when he ran the numbers it was number seventy something. Right, right. But the cabinet is zero 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 five. You're kidding me. That's amazing. And, and I lent it to Zach 
on a tour. And dude, the fucking toilet <laughs> fucking leaked on the fucking thing. Sorry about it. Was, <laughs> it was just beer on top of it, the it, head. It, right? it was, it was, it was, the it was mint. Leaked. <laughs> it leaked. Kept, he kept, it, he kept it under the bus for a spare, and the toilet fucking leaked on my fucking uh, mint. This thing was was mint. Super not and bitching. So, so <laughs> not um, bitching. No. <laughs> believe me, it's fucking. You know, I cried on that. But I have, a, I, I have, an, I have the silver jubilee. Uh, That's I, awesome. I have I the silver have, jubilees are kind of. They're an institution in and of, of themselves. That's the whole Guns N' Roses And those, those of us who kept them, and I'm not one of them, but who kept them from the early days, those are a fantastic amplifier. Just I, I, a I don't little even, bit more. I know? don't even play this thing. I play, yeah. I have the original it tubes at home. Oh, my God, yeah. And I was I was just out on TSO, mm. and I saw, I have the, uh, I have the bottom cab. Mm. I saw a top cab. And I'm just like me, and, and, it's, and it's the uh, I'm stealing it's, that. Oh my god! <laughs> you can use it anytime you want. The thing sounds amazing. <clears throat> yeah. And and, uh, and I have I have a I actually have a 900 mm. that sounds amazing. That, that's unbelievable because I've never they, heard they, that they story all, before. They all sound honestly. like shit. Every every 900. The I have. early 900s though with the antelope. Have you seen the ones with the antelope the, Tolex? Like the kind of the tannish. Yes. I don't, I don't know anything about that. I gifted one to Jimmy, Jim Stewart, uh, the first year 900. Zach an had 800 with a, with a light tan. With the antelope, and and he and Jim swears to this day that's the finest sounding amp he's ever heard. You that's could, amazing. You, all he puts but, is a tube screamer on it, and that's well, it. Well, that's all you needed when you found the right... <clears throat> yeah. you, and we, we all know what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> and you find that right Marshall, you throw... You throw for me, oh, it was the TS-10. Oh, that, was, that was my yeah, favorite. Yeah, That was my of favorite course. distortion box. Of, of course. And I've got three of them in pieces and... and and you I, know, in boxes, and I'm and like, why can't I make these things? Well, you know what? Why so, so when, when that was a fine sound. When Freddie and I started, I actually found um, a late '70s TS 808. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did not sound better than the current Tube Screamer. Yeah, I was shocked. Well, by that's that. what I thought about a lot of the TS. I was shocked. You know, a lot remember of, that? I was lot shocked of, by that. A lot of people vault uh, or vault the the, uh, the TS nines as being like not, kind of the one. That's it. That's it. it, it didn't I sound never, than I TS never nine. found one that I liked because they all seemed they were lost a little too. The eight oh eight was not. Uh, it was too warm. Mm. The fu the the, ten the tens were the ones that that I was like because it seemed to tighten it yeah, up, yeah, which is, yeah. seems to be a thing now these days where I people know. buy people buy a three thousand dollar amp then put a and, and I got to take nine nine dollar box in front. Yeah, of, right? Jay, my friend Jason Frankhauser put put that one. He's like you put a fifty dollar pedal in front of a two you know, three thousand dollar amp and you know you got oh, your we sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were cringe. We were cringe. We had clients, but, it, but it's, a, it's truth. That's that's what's yeah, happening. That's what exactly. We had buyers that would buy our guitars mm. and call Fred and complain about tone and Fred would go, okay, so what's your what's your food chain? Just Chain, yeah, and yeah. they would say, "Well, I got a Zoom metal zone in front of this." And Fred's like, <laughs> "In front of a blue voodoo, <laughs> right, 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 blue voodoo." Fuck, so got a five thousand dollar amp, and he's got a nine nine dollar metal zone. He wonders why his tone isn't good. <laughs> I never, I never. Are you got, kidding me? Are never, you kidding? Never, Remember that? I, I do. Never. Oh my god! I, I, got in I, trailer I, park one time. I would, I would get people call me up oh bitching about. This guitar doesn't sound. I, what do you got? Well, tell me, tell me what, tell What's me what you're running. Show you know, me, yeah. you know, because uh, you know uh, it could be a number of things. And, and I would actually take the time mm -hmm. and, and show did. and show these guys because I, I care about. I get an orange box uh, in front of. <laughs> I, I I care about. I I tried the DS one, uh, uh, <laughs> HM two, uh, uh, Bob Katana. Uh, <laughs> 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 Guy, no, the best ever was the guy goes calls Fred and goes, I'll never forget this. He's huh. bitching than me. I'm like, look, man, I give refunds. If if you don't like it, send it back. But let's talk to Fred first to find out. And the guy goes, well, well, yeah, man, I can't get the string separation. Fred's like, okay, we go, and correct me if I'm wrong. He goes, he goes, what are you, Fred goes, what are you playing through? Well, I got a rolling TC one twenty. Is it? TC120, is that it? Uh, it's, 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 it's JC120. Like, I can't remember. <laughs> And like, and Fred goes, so that that's a that's a transistor amplifier, right? You know that. And he goes, what do you what's in front of it? Well, you know, I got like a yellow box. Maybe it's orange. I don't know. And and Fred's like, oh, it hurts. You're never gonna get a Zach Wild <laughs> <Yes>. tone. <laughs> <laughs> you're, JC120. You're not, you're not gonna. You're not gonna get that tone out of one of the greatest amps <laughs> ever made. Yeah. Oh, that's that's for, for clean for shimmering. Are you kidding me? There's, there's, there is no. I, have one. One. I own one. A JC120. I can't wait till you sell it to me. Oh my god! <laughs> it's it's really the only amp that I still yearn for. Is I don't have a JC120, and I 
think Shim- I need to fucking have a ring. That's why Shimmering. I bought a ring course. That's why I have a fractal. Because yeah. I have all that in no, the box. No, you don't. Yeah, you don't. That, 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 right. I, had a, I, had a real I had a fractal for <laughs> three <emulates>. years. <laughs> for three years, I gave it a really good run, and I got deep into that motherfucker, yeah. and I couldn't wait to fucking sell it. A lot of people say that. A lot of, a lot of people. I'll make your I mean, job I easier. Mean, I, the, I the thing with, I think people, a lot of people get overwhelmed with, with you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you, you can, can do. You can get into it. And I got into it, and I didn't like what I heard. The, guy, the guys from the guys from the factory would help me. I, yeah. I, I had yeah. a personal had guy. Special dispensation. I, I well, had, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's good I, because I, Charlie you know, Bessie would help last, me out with everything. Last, I had I had the the axe too. That was the last one I had. Yeah. And and you know, I, like I said, I gave it three years, and I gave it a good three years. I really gave it. But I'm, I'm a tube guy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the same here. And he I'm, is. I, I swear he that. Is. I swear that 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 that. that I will only play. Um, I have one Fender, old Fender, mm-hmm. that that I use, and, and I'll tell you what. It, it, it's that was one of my first amps was a fucking a Fender Twin, and I goddamn wish I wish I still, I wish had, I still had that because I had I had, I had I had the Nuge fucking going on, man. <laughs> I had it. I had it, They're even though so I didn't know. Loud. Even though I didn't know what I had because at that back time. Then, because back then we didn't know what we feedback, wanted. Feedback feedback was warm and musical and oh real. yeah. And yeah, and you could you could use it. You just find your spot and yep. make it happen. Exactly. Right, so, Jed, so Jed, check us out. So I played a live gig in um, a charity gig I played in 2002. Fred shows up and goes, "Hey, I'm gonna take care of your guitars for you." And I had a um, I had a Fender Twin from the early 90s yeah. with no gain channel, so it was that's, that's clean. okay. That's okay. But hear me out. Yeah. It was clean and it went all the way to 10. Yes, it did. And it was so loud to break your fucking ear. Yes, it should. But I had a no boot, I had a boot of Fat Man in front of that, which was a two a, a boutique fo- a, a tube preamp. Mm-hmm. Couldn't get any tone, and Fred's like, "E, nothing personal, man." But I got a Marshall head in my car. The reason you can't get a tone is I know what you're trying to do. It's the wrong. It's the wrong preamp for the wrong amp. Right preamp, wrong amp. Sure. He brought that 800 in. I put that that that, that, that fucking that fat man in front of that. Holy shit! Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that, remember that that cabinet right there. It's it, it, different. It, it, it's different tonalities. No it's question. Diff- it's different no styles. Question. Different tonalities. It, 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 it's, no it's, it's matching making a separation between the two. Matching Absolutely things right. up to what what they should be with, and it's different again. Different tonalities and, yeah. and how the, how things work. Oh my god, we get to do talk so much. I have to go to work. I, I don't, don't want you to. But Fred's go. leaving. Yes, I, Fred's uh, leaving. Us. I, uh, Fred, I have to work for the ballet. Get the fuck out of here. Ballet. <laughs> He's working for the Pittsburgh Ballet tonight. Uh, not the Penguins. That's, that's okay. okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> 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 I got. I got. I got. What is that Penguins record right now? Just do throw it. They're the first place. Last time I looked, first place. But but check it out. I got yeah. called for the Penguins yesterday, but I couldn't do it. You're I was, kidding, really? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, I work for the Pens too. I work the spotlights. So when they score a uh, goal, friendship is over. I, I can't, <laughs> you, you, you ask you ask Demel. You ask you ask Phil Demel. No, I know Phil. Oh, oh, yeah, I know you do. He's a bit of a flyer. Oh part. my god, a, bit, a, a little bit. And I, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was he introduced me to. But I think it, I think it was it was it was Claude Garou or some shit like that. One of these guys <laughs> it's are pronounced Giroux, motherfucker. <laughs> I have to jump across this fucking table and smash my <laughs> huh? I'm, in, I'm in Pittsburgh. Gritty's coming. But, but, he, but he fucking introduced me to him. And so we make this bet. And he carried around this picture. He had this picture of me handing him $1 mm. because he won the bet. Oh you know, we, we bet a dollar. And, and Demo's like... <laughs> <laughs> and, I, 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 and I had this picture forever, and I and I carried this, but but they actually we we but but I, I you know I, but I do the I do the pens I run like the uh, occasionally I'll do the uh, the spotlight trader. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> no, Pits, I'm the Pittsburgh He's guy. A Pittsburgh guy. But uh, I don't care. But, but, Fucking Steelers. But, but, uh, but I I bust I bust Demel's balls, and, and I yeah. was and I shot that's awesome. I shot photos for a birthday party yesterday, and and. And literally, they were you know it was just, it was it was in Maryland, but you know that's Maryland that's the uh, that's the uh, Ravens hometown. Right, right. But the, the the parents, one was a Steeler fan, oh. and, and one was from the Eagles from Philadelphia. Oh. And so the who? I, the, the, so but they're holding up, but they're holding yeah, up, but they're holding up football, the, right? But, you know, football, football. <laughs> but they're but it was you know, 
I didn't care. Just so yeah. it wasn't Ravens. <laughs> I'm like, this is the greatest thing in slice. Yeah, you can put green and silver everywhere, man. I really don't give two shits. But but uh, but that you know that's but, the NFC. We don't care but, about the NFC. But with uh, with demo and the and the anything Philly. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, oh, he's he's a big he's a huge oh Philly. Oh my god. Huge Philly fan. Dude. You know, he's been to Philly a bunch of times, and I'm just like, dude, come on. <laughs> My God. See what I put up with, man? Dude, you have no idea. People think you're like, you know, they go, oh, yeah, Fred, it must be amazing to be around Fred. It is. He's usually gone half the year or yeah. two quarters. But when he's home, it's like, I'll f- that was one of the greatest ways to kind of break the ice and kind of get thing get things going here because we have so, we have so much in common and, and to, to kind of like touch on a bunch of the things that we've talked about or we we've done over the years together that was uh he he yeah, wanted there, that. There, there's plenty more in there's plenty more wood in that fireplace let's just say <laughs> <laughs> all right so a couple things here first and foremost you're going home tonight. With Robert Chapman's, and it is in 19 years, add like 10, 29-year-old single malt we're drinking. You're going home with that. I, I can't my believe, gift you're, I can't believe you. you're doing that. And I don't my th- gift I to you. I honestly don't think I'm worthy, but I thank you. And you know what? You know what? Come on, man. It, it's not just you giving it to me. It's, it's who it came from and kind of like you know everything behind it. He's a, he's a but, proud American soldier, a proud allied soldier, yeah. Air Force um, very much, uh, very much uh, an accomplished Air Forceman, uh-huh. serviceman. Um, just so you know, this Robert was instrumental in in Germany uh, creating a entertainment center for wounded vets there. And I don't have the names of the the city, but mm-hmm. we donated nineteen guitars, and some of them Stanley guitars, some of them just General Washburn stuff. We shipped them all over there. He was so appreciative of that fact, and uh, he's always been our friend since. I mean, mm-hmm. like, he's been a friend before us. I that think too, that's, I think that's a wonderful thing, and it's and I think I, I think a lot of people, you know, n- not to touch too heavy on a subject, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, as a Canadian living living here in this country, it's mm-hmm. like uh, a, a lot of those people they're they go unappreciated. No know? question. And and no I for question. one, I for one have more than a heartfelt appreciation for what they do because you know and from my perspective again it's like a lot of these people are perhaps doing things that they might not want to do correct but but they are instructed to do correct and they do it correct and i thank them for selfish selfish and i I thank them for that and and it's and i don't know how to put too fine a point on that because it's really fucking important to me and and it's <clears throat> and I don't know if it's something that's just come on because because I live here now, <clears throat> but it's a it's a big deal to me, mm-hmm. and I want them to know that I'm appreciative. Of there what, you go. I want the, I want you to know that I'm appreciative of what you do. Yeah. You have my heart. You have you have my head. Yeah, and you have my heart. Yeah, and it, I thank you. I really, honestly, really thank you. And I can't emphasize that enough because yeah. it's almost it's almost like a, a thing that'll bring me to tears because no, no, it, it means that much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and and during the years here, Boogie Street, it was uh, really, we were very pro military. Right. Unfortunately, in, in the music business, that because the music business is kind of like you know center liberal. It is, and that's sure. cool. Sure. And I don't like labeling. I hate it because yeah. I like personally for me, I'm pretty open minded. You know, yeah, I you believe in certain me, things. I label yeah, you. I, I believe what I believe. Yeah. But it doesn't really fit a certain party or movement. Right. Correct. So, but one thing I always believed was that here are people willing to give up their life for what we believe is our freedom, mm-hmm. and whether they agree with their, you know, the the commander in chief or military or not, they right. agree to do that. That's what they do. That's a sacrifice. Yeah. So that and for you me, have to be appreciative of that. Of no that. question. No matter what your bent is, right? And, and that, and I think that's that's what's important because yeah. that that is. That's fucking huge to me. It's yeah. huge to me. Yeah. So I'm super. Yeah. I'm super appreciative. Well, you're going home with some 29 year old scotch, pal. I'm, I'm, and I'm not. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to drink it all in one night, which would be really, Robert really. Would, bad. Robert would want you probably. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, there'd be, there'd be broken guitars. And, <laughs> but when it when it is broken out, it will be done. So well, uh, it will be done with respect and yeah, and all that other stuff. Because I'm. Well, look, look at look at look at what's going on here. Yeah, we're having fun. Let's go down. Thank you. Let's go down the Kiss Rabbit Hole for a second because we're both fans of this band. Yeah, right? Let's go way. So down. live was the thing for you. Got you started. It was what your yeah. you know that was your thing, right? Live mm-hmm. was your thing. That sound. 
I know, the sound. I know. And you know what? Like, you know, uh, you know, and into my older years, like I have a, a pretty big collection of Kiss videos. I was really big into collecting Kiss stuff. And one of my biggest things, you know, I'm a, you know, I, I think we may disagree on, on, on so I've been a big Ace and Peter guy. That, yeah. That, that's kind of where What's I come wrong from. With that? I but, love Ace. But watching, you know, and I love and I love drums, and I, maybe it's because of that's you know I we had said earlier I played drums. I, I don't know where it comes from, but I watched Peter play on those early videos of like seventy five. He wanted it seventy four, seventy five. Like you saw this guy that was he was buff, and he hit hard, and when he hit, you knew he was hitting hard because he made the facial facial expressions to go with it. He agreed fully fully believed invested, in what he was doing invested and, and i and that's that's what i love in a drummer like mm -hmm. it was so it, it not it was it is so awesome to watch that and just see him just like just like commanding the drums and you're only as good as right correct correct and that, the original four <clears throat> and the funny part about this for me which was kind of it's really odd for my <clears throat> my uh fandom of that band is so in the business years for me, which I still was a fan, I got to know Eric Singer very well. Not Tommy so much, but Eric was just really, because we're both enthusiasts of watches. We had a lot, of, a lot in common, and mm -hmm. Eric was approachable. So when I would go to a show, and Paul would do his thing, and you know, and Paul was very good to me, mm -hmm. but when Paul would go off and do interviews, or he'd scoot out early, Eric would hang around. Yeah. And, you know, And we talked about Zenith watches and Rolexes. It was his thing, right? Right. And I like Eric Singer a lot, and I will tell you, He's a tremendous drummer. Oh, he buries Peter Chris in terms of technique. Oh, there, there's no constant. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. I mean, but, but Eric, he's so humble that he he really appreciates what Peter brought to that band. He mm -hmm. he gets it. He's a historian and, of rock and roll. And I don't think a lot of people really do appreciate mm, that. You're right. I really do. You're right. Because I believe people always fucking blow off Peter Chris so quickly. Yeah. And and I'm like, you yeah. Have, did you have you seen what I've seen? And maybe they the haven't. Early stuff, man. You know, and you maybe you haven't because. He was a live one, a live one. You alive know, like two. just even those, like those, dressed to kill. Those three or four years, five years, where he was. Yeah. I mean, he was he was fit, and he wasn't all fucked up on drugs yeah. or whatever. Whatever. You know, yeah. I I don't know. So he was even, older than those guys, and he, he was, was. Good five years different. And in that's age. something I can relate to. Being you know, I was always I was always Grandpa Jed to all the guys. You know, oh, I've always, really? I've always been older than okay. everybody okay. else in any band I've ever been in. Okay, that's you interesting. Know? And and just to see just to see him just like he's so he's so on point and like all those old videos that I've got and I just I, I love Peter Chris and I love his style mm -hmm. and he's got he's got he's got the chops, you know. Mm -hmm. He's got he's got the, the proper influence that, that mm -hmm. brought that brought Kiss that sort of swing, that sort of you know, he Bingo. He, he made it move. He made it move. You know Bingo. what I mean? Bingo, yeah, because in the early He's got the Krupa, you know? Gene Krupa, absolutely. He and, and it's funny. That's so good. That I'm glad you said that because people love Eric Carr when he joined in that era, in that time. What Tremendous he brought, which drummer. was different. It was Killer different. Drummer. My point was, what made Kiss special was there was a swing mm -hmm. element to that whole groove. There was. There was. That was on Dress to Kill, Hard to Hell, Dress to Kill, mm -hmm. uh, Alive. Uh, D, you know, Detroit. There was a swing thing going on yeah. that had a. It was loose. It was sometimes a little bit off the beat. Yeah. Which was beautiful. Yeah. Right. And that's a that's that's a really important thing I think right there. And and it was something that I battled with with even strapping is like. You know, because Dev is such a perfectionist. He's so good. He's so fucking good. He'd be like, you know, you're behind the beat or you're ahead of the beat here and there. Or like in, in the studio, that would happen. And I'm like, I think I'm perfectly on the fucking beat, like right on the goddamn beat. You know, but I think maybe I was perfectly on the beat. But he he's the one who had the ability to kind of swing back and forth between the beat. You know, and he's the one who's got that, that vibe, you know, like and... And I think that that's kind of what was happening there too. The space in between. So, yeah. so as an and and don't fight me on this. No. As an accomplished, musician, I'm fighting you right now. As an accomplished <laughs> musician, accomplished rock guitarist, mm. talk about the space. And let's say our audience is not musicians right now. Talk about the importance of the space between the notes and try yeah. to make that palatable for those who are not musicians in terms of how we're talking about that. that's really hard to articulate between it is uh, uh, between people who who know and and may not know um the space between the notes is is almost as important as the space 
during the notes. Um, and this is something I learned from from Malcolm Young, my my hero, um, ACDC rhythm guitarist. Um, <clears throat> it, it's for 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 me th that that sort of uh, that sort of approach to guitar playing is more is it's it's more about paying attention to the riff, the phrasing, the song. It, it, it's more than just the the riff that you're playing. It's 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 being able to see the entire song and knowing how to play into that and not playing too much or too little and affording your bandmates the space to do what they need without imposing upon them mm -hmm. if that makes any sense mm -hmm. I, I, it's really hard to describe how i feel about yeah, this to articulate it but, right um i mean malcolm young if you know, as I've said earlier, is he's my absolute rhythm guitar hero, and he's he's the player I've always aspired to be. I don't like playing lead guitar; I fucking hate it. You know, surprising, but I, surprising to me. But, but I can still, you know, because you can. I, I can. I can, <laughs> but I can't. That. I can, but I can't. You know what I mean? Like I can't. People are always like, "Oh, Jed the Shred," you know, or or right. whatever, and I'm like, I'm not a shredder. Shredder implies to me that you're like, blah, 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 you know, like. That's not me. Yeah. Um, angry B. Yeah, yeah, sure. An angry B. Um, for for me, just being a solid guitar player is is, is what gets me off. You know, like. So just, why do you like David Gilmore so much? Heart. And that's it. I, I can't. I can't put any finer point on it than that. So and, and you, there's a number of of guitar players that fit fit that profile for sure mm -hmm. i love a lot of fantastic lead guitar players right and but if, i think a lot of the the lead guitar players that i admire were also very proficient with rhythm randy rhodes comes to mind immediately mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um because the reason i bring up gilmore is that <laughs> if you speak to any accomplished guitar player and you ask them about gilmore they say eric it's the way his work breathes like the note mm. is as important as the space between the notes. That's well, and that's that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned over the years. And it wasn't, and it's funny because you say that because I remember reading that, and I think it was an interview with Malcolm many many years ago, and I read that, and it meant something to me because I understood something that I'd never seen in print before. You know what I mean? Like, oh, now I get why why I play like that or I try to play I try to play like that you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's 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 about giving distance to your other mates it's about it's about stopping and letting the music speak where where if you were just playing through that it would become it would become jumbled and and mm -hmm. and and not literate to to somebody who who was to Joe listener for lack of a better response you know what I mean and that really meant something. And a prime example is is Back in Black. I mean, it's. So I was going. That read might, my, that you might read be my that, mind. That might be the greatest example you of giving my mind. of giving space between notes of any song ever written, especially in the intro. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that, if you is a critical listener of that song, so and that, that I most certainly am. Okay, that. so let me challenge you for a second. <clears throat> I listened to that song multiple times as a non-guitar player kid, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> and it was the anticipation of the riff. Yeah. Um, and that space in between was like, here it comes, yeah. right? But if you listen to it as a musician, it's just this couple freaking motions behind the mm -hmm. beat. Yeah. And this is something I learned from Devin. Am, am I right? Yeah. It's something I learned from Devin over the years is playing behind the beat sometimes is has a lot more feeling than 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 rushing ahead because the answer is for lack of a better term right uh -huh. and and i mean i i you know we've we've touched on the whole strapping and and, and the devon thing earlier but right. I've, I've learned so much from dev over the right. years and and i think that might be one of the things you know simon you're playing ahead or you're playing behind or you're playing you know what, whatever whatever critique he had um, eventually, you know, it, it's led to me to be like, it's like sometimes when you're playing behind the beat, that's where some magic really fucking happens. It's where it really fucking happens. Well, okay. You know? Take the stones. And, and, and we were just talking about a prime example, I think. Oh, I think so. And take the stones. Okay. So you have Charlie Watts, who's mm -hmm. a very unconventional drummer. Unconventional to a, to a, 
I like I don't even understand what the hell he's doing. It's kind of like he, Bill Ward in a different genre. You know, Bill Ward was so you know what's weird funny, too. and we never touched on Sabbath today at all. We'll get there. We'll, don't we'll worry. get there. Don't we'll worry. get there. Yeah. So so Charlie Watts, um, Charlie Watts has been described as the human metronome, and I so disagree. I disagree. Yeah, I, so I disagree, disagree with that on every front. He's a field drummer, man. Yeah. But of course, Keith Richards is well behind the beat all the time which is and why he which is why he syncs up with 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 charlie so yes well. that sloppy groove yeah. works for the stones and that's and that's more of that's more of what i like than the the page bottom sort of thing mm-hmm. that's more of what i like and the funny it part works is, better for me personally the funny thing is that Bonham had some really interesting weird self time signatures too but he always made page look great yeah because the bass and the drums never followed suit in Zeppelin very much, and it never, ever followed suit in Sabbath. Yeah. It was the guitar mm-hmm. feeding off of... So it was Iomi feeding off a of Ward, and Geezer was out there doing... And I think that was the weird part of... Geezer, Geezer was the Steve Harris of his time. No question. And But it all kind of worked. And the, the, you never knew, like, in some of those early Sabbath songs, think about it, when you learn to play them, you never really understood the middle of it, but they always ended up at the right place. Oh, did they ever. Right? Yes. yes. And so there was a crazy kind of jazz swing to Ward mm-hmm. that was similar to Peter Chris. Yep. But even better. But even yes. better. Yes, yes. And that's such a great point because that's not something I would have thought of until you just said it now. I'm like, that's absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah, correct. Because Sabbath was not blues-based, meaning no. the, 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 every four... For beats, the, the the bass playing was not in synchronization to the drumming. They were right. everything beyond that. Yeah, way, but way it beyond all that. kind of worked in some magic mm-hmm. that was kind of ahead of their time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you go back and listen to the Sabbath, well, you know, Black Sabbath and Paranoid. Yeah, you know, and and you and I can laugh and probably play this whole thing, you know, and have fun with it. But if you really dissect it, it was not conventional rock and roll at no. All. And that's you have to place yourself in that time and place, you know, and think about what they were doing in that time and place, and 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 try to look at it from that perspective. And it's it's all it's all you can almost you almost can't do it mm-hmm. because what they were doing, they were just doing it. You know, and I think we're we're almost over interpreting it. You know, it's like they were just doing what they wanted to do at that time, and, we're and it was fucking awesome. Yeah, we're analyzing. <laughs> yeah, we're it analyzing it. And I have yeah. said that multiple times. Like, wow, we never thought anybody would analyze our stuff. Yeah, that in, in depth. But Rick Beato, you familiar with Rick Beato? No. On Rick Beato is a producer, um, and and he's got a great YouTube channel where he tries to take older classic rock songs and explain to you why they're so awesome. Yeah, and he really in his studio dies, and he seems how. Jed, he seems to get a hold of the isolated tracks of these classic rock songs. How does he do that? I don't know where he's getting he's them from. He's got powers. He must. <laughs> but he can isolate the drum. I would drum love to get yeah, some of that and, stuff. And Rick Beato, I would turn, I'll turn, after the show, I'll turn you on to his channel. He's isolated a lot of that stuff. And in and, 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 and doing that, he's explained why mm-hmm. Bill Ward was amazing, why Neil Peart was amazing, why John Bonham was amazing, why Keith Moon was amazing on the <sighs> drum front because... We start on Keith Moon, man, Jesus. So your, your thoughts on the Who? I, lo- I love them. I love... What makes the Who, I love, the who special I love, to you? I love part of them. The early stuff. Yes. And it's because... And I don't know if it's because of because they were so frenetic... Um, that's a really difficult question. I don't know if I have an answer for that, but you know, I have a really, really soft spot in my heart for a lot of the Who material from those particular days. And when I'm not did it sh- end for you, eighties? And and yeah, but but I'm not sure if I can put my finger on it exactly because the Who to me is like. When, when the, I, I've never really lost faith in them at all, even me after even after John died. Yeah, you know, I'm I like, get, oh, I love the Ox. Oh my God, I don't. I just I've always loved the Who, even though their entire catalog is not of my liking. Well, they I'm went not through sure faces. how to explain it. Yeah, they know? went through they have a new age faith. They they follow musical but they, trends. They can. They've always written great music. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and and now. 
Uh, yeah, and I love Roger Daltrey. He's got to be one of my favorite cool, me too. favorite singers of all time. Me too. Hands me too. down, number one with a bullet. You know, put it any way what you a want. Voice. What right? a voice. So yeah, that that's a difficult question because I I really have a I really have an affinity for that band. And, the, uh, and, but it's not it's not one of those bands where it's like oh I gave up after that record or that record. It's yeah, like, I've, I just I've just always loved them. But I'm not sure why. Yeah, you know, interesting. So after um, he passed, or Keith Moon passed, they were still relevant to me to a degree, and they had a couple. Oh my god, they had a couple like pop hits almost. And Daltrey did a solo thing. The eighties were a weird, it was a weird fucking weird but, decade, but, right? But as again, as I was saying earlier, that was the decade where I went away from my kind of like hard rock roots and and the things that brought me to where I was at that point. That was where I dove into the the speed metal and the and the thrash and what a wh- niche though that what, time, right? I mean, and it was this fucking wide. It was not. Small. It was not a big thing. Absolutely, but because MTV would not embrace that. But it was. It was the hard rock, and then I heard. In the, and as like I say, as then I heard British Steel, and that was that was really the segue where it's just like it was. It was Bachman Turner Overdrive, but it was on steroids. You know what yeah. I mean? And what is it was aggressive. You know, I wish there was more records like British Steel these days because Proce- it's a lot of processing on that record. It's such a it's such a phenomenal record. I yeah. think to me musically, musically, yeah, uh, uh, vocally in, in every way. I, there, there's no one point I can put on that record. It was instrumental in 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 me becoming who I was as a guitar okay. player, okay. and I still and I still want to be that guitar player because they were so fucking good, mm. and. Uh, you know, then you know, like after British Steel was point of entry, and that was a fantastic record too. And and I, I, I was like, what the fuck happened? You guys, you guys went weak. <laughs> but I listen to that now, and, and that record is so well produced. It's the it's, sonically, it sounds so good. It's a pleasure to listen to every time I listen to it. And then and then and then you've got uh, what was what was the next record? Um, Screaming for Vengeance, yeah, which yeah. is a uh, commercial just, hit. A monster record, yeah. but half of that record is is not any good as far as mm-hmm. I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. But a song, the the actual title track, "Screaming for Vengeance," is such a monster of a yeah. fucking song. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. And that's the song that, to me, that follows British Steel. That's that's the British Steel. It street. came out of that. Almost you know, it came out of that record. Almost. It's so good. It's yeah. so fucking good. And and you know, from there I went, you know, down that alley of Slayer and Exodus and mm-hmm. Metallica and mm-hmm. Creator and Dark Angel and Possessed and, and mm-hmm. all that stuff that led me into the next uh decade, which was Morbid Angel and Deicide and, and all the great Let's death talk metal. about that, Glenn Benton. Let's talk about that a little bit. So I was uh <clears throat> Deicide was my first real exposure to ultra heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. I was not a Pantera fan. I wasn't but there was something about that band. Because a friend of mine at a job I was working was sitting in a cubicle next to me and played his DSI stuff. And I, I want to say Glenn Benton. Is it Benton? Am I pronouncing that correct? Benton, yeah. Yeah, he had a solo record at the time hmm. that was odd. Or maybe maybe I'm, thinking, maybe I'm confusing it. But DSI had like great driving rhythm that almost i was almost like wow this is like a band i can listen to but then when he yeah. then it was the vocals yeah i think the vocals lose a lot of people would you well, agree that, that the vocals lose most people i think and with the death metal thing and and because the music's really powerful the the you know? death the whole death metal thing it's like you know i always wanted to get heavier and heavier i didn't i didn't want to it's just it's just what happened sure um, sure but when I went from the the '80s kind of speed thrash metal, it started kind of to taper off, and then it gave way to the to the deicides and and morbid angels and pestilences. Which yeah, is, yeah. Pestilence is probably one of my favorite bands of all fucking time. Yep. The vocals were not necessarily. <clears throat> Actually, I, I gotta I gotta stop myself there because the vocals were super hypercritical to that at that time. Define that it genre, was, it right? Was, it was so it was so intense. And it was the next level for me personally of where I wanted to go. Um, some bands were better at it than others. Mm-hmm. Deicide, I lo- uh, you know, Glenn Benton, he had a, he had a unique style, and and it really, the thing I liked about Deicide is they were fucking violent. They were they were they Green did not shitting. they did not fuck around, and they were they were the real deal. <laughs> they believed in themselves, uh-huh. 
and that and that made them all the much more likable. And I'm coming from winger at that moment in 1991 yeah. to right. that. Right. That's a so, huge uh, leap I'm, over to Valley, right? But for me, I'm going from like my favorite bands of the time were like let, let's say Creator, um, right. Endless Aggression, which right. is a fantastic record 1989. Yep. And yep. then there was really nothing after that as far as like speed thrash metal. Of grunge, right? There was nothing and then the next thing was like Sepultura. Yeah. You know? Um oh my god. Beneath the Remains is it oh, so I had that record. Yeah. It's a fantastic it's a fantastic album. I remember it and, and I'd said earlier that I had Brazil, friends. Brazil. Uh yeah. who um uh Max Calvera. Yeah. yeah, Max and Igor. Yeah. But um back in those days again too I had my friends that had that radio station at the college radio station we get advanced copies of all these right, bands right, so right. I, heard, I heard death before anybody heard death oh you know I heard God. Sepultura I, you know I heard I, I, I heard so many things pioneers in that, in that genre for and sure. so that really really you know I, that was a real uh that's something that I'm ever thankful for, I guess, because it certainly influenced me to, in whatever whatever direction I went in. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the Sepultura record that I heard. The first album that I heard by them was their second record, and and I've been drinking for the last three hours, <laughs> and uh, maybe a little. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm not not much. A I'm little. not. I'm not quite as coherent as I was yes, earlier. You are. You're doing great. But um, oh my god, you know I feel I feel so stupid. But it's the second Sepultura record is yeah. is so fucking good. That was their biggest seller, right? Oh, oh stop! I got I got sit, fuck off. <laughs> Taking the fucking headphones off. Because I'm, I'm he's gonna I'm, look it up. I'm half drunk. I'm half drunk. And this this shit should not be happening. You're right far now. in the bag, pal. No worries. No worries. Bag, yeah. Nah, you're far out of the bag. Oh, it's, it's schizophrenia. Of course, See, of course it is. See, I just had to get up and think for a second. So right goddamn on. headphones are. There you go. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Sepultura Schizophrenia is is such an amazing record. Right. And that really that was that might have been that might have been. You know, whereas I was saying Judas Priest, British Steel was kind of the segue between hard rock and heavy metal. Yeah. You know, um, that record might have been the segue between the thrash metal and the death metal, which I got right. You know what? Yeah, you're you probably know? right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I went I went from that and I, you know, I got right into death metal in the 90s and, and the 90s was- So Cannibal re- Corpse and those bands were on your horizon. Uh, yeah. I love yeah. I like Cannibal. They had a couple of good records and I've got friends in- yeah, yeah. Band. I tried to do a guitar for them many moons ago, um, and it didn't work out. Uh, Pat is is a very yeah. good friend of mine, and I love him to death. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I like Cannibal's first few records. <clears throat> Where do I go with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but put you but, on the spot, buddy. But it, but it's funny because during that time, it, it was I went from the thrash to the to the death metal to the sort of, and then I sort of started to go the, the industrial way. Yeah. And I've all of a sudden I found myself playing for industrial yeah and and i think did. and i think strapping young lad was i mean we weren't really a metal band we were more of an industrial band than we Is that were how you classify it i okay. don't know i don't know labels suck yeah label they always do you know mm-hmm. and i think but i think we were certainly a metal band with indu- certainly industrial influences and influences <laughs> By that time, you know, like we've been come, we've become friends with with all the Fear Factory guys, yeah. and that was before they kind of hit big yeah. and stuff. And I mean, I'm friends with those guys to this yeah. day; yeah, they're, yeah. they're dear friends of mine. And it, you know, just to touch on that for a second, it hurts mm-hmm. me that there's so much infighting between them because we ain't kidding. Like strapping, uh, they were a real force. Yeah, no, shit. you know, and they were a gold record, fucking selling maybe platinum, Absolutely. selling force yeah, yeah. at at their peak. Yep, you know, and. But you know, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. But it's just, I just, I like friends to be friends, and 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 it's well, what, what I have going now. It's with, money, right? Money's the money's the differentiator. Yeah, you know, is. like power within an organization yeah. or band. Yeah, it's or like, want of power or, yeah, or whatever. Or, or you know. illusion. Yeah, the illusion of it all. Per- perception is Fame. reality. They think possibly. perception is reality. Mm. And it's such an it's you know to me it's such a niche market and believe me mm-hmm. the markets that are famous you know from from the R and B and all that I respect them yeah. nothing to do with me so if you're in a niche market already your your demographic is already narrow narrow as fuck. why would you want to fight amongst yourself right 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 
and I couldn't think I couldn't think of a more narrow market than metal or heavy metal or, yeah, today, or industrial metal today, or, right. or, or put up you know you know it, <laughs> right right put a, put a title on that mm-hmm. um yeah the the fuck, I, I don't even know where I where I where I was but it's it's there were so many good things back in the nineties even though even though I was transitioning from metal to a more industrial thing mm-hmm. and i'll never forget my 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 years with frontline assembly yeah. because um you know like i said devon played on their two records at that time uh, millennium and hardwired i believe it was and they were looking for a guitar player and so he recommended me right they called me a lifelong friendship was born mm-hmm. um they gave me my first professional experience we toured the world together and and it was it wasn't until like kind of like halfway through that after that the strapping started to become popular so i i, I had these i had my legs you know what right, i mean right, i knew right. it was i knew it was happening right and 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 reese and bill the the two main guys mm-hmm. in in uh, frontline assembly have been friends of mine to this day and they've had me back to do a couple things here and there and and I, I really love these connections that I've made over the years with with so many different people. I'd mm-hmm. like to make more, sure, you know, because I think that's kind of what it's all about. Um, Keep growing. The only regret I think I ever have is that Strapping didn't kind of do what we were supposed to do. You guys were you on know, the way. We were no, we we weren't on the way. We were well on our. That's way. what I mean. Like, yeah, I was there, but <laughs> but I can't too emphatically can't do. Um, at the time that we split up and maybe the year leading up until our split up it was it was rough because dev was the leader and i i just got to say this yeah dev was the leader mm-hmm. he was the man he wrote most of the music i contributed a shitload to that right not a shitload but i contributed enough to that that i shouldn't have been unhappy but i was Everybody was unhappy for whatever fucking reason, and we 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 started to retreat into our various areas mm-hmm. of retreatness, mm-hmm. be it drugs, yeah. alcohol, yeah, whatever it was, mm-hmm. and that was super fucking destructive. Sure, to the, it is to the band, mm-hmm. and perhaps Dev saw that before any of us did, and Got he, it. and he's. Uh, you know, I, it's it's so hard to kind of think and and put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Oh, the what ifs of it all. He's you know he was the guy. He was the guy. I'm thankful for what he gave me, and um, I think that him pulling the plug on the band at that time may have saved my life. And I really? can't I can't put too fine a point on that. And and. Mm-hmm. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to suck up and all that stuff. We've we've had lots of conversations lately, and and cameras one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but it's genuine. Six. It's genuine. It's it's genuine. It yeah. really is. Um, we were really not just not functional at that time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though we were doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were doing, no question. We were doing very well. No question. So what uh, what I take away from that is that we were a phenomenal live band which we were mm-hmm. and that's what i brought and that's maybe that's what the other guys brought to the band mm-hmm. and i'm thankful that the life that i have now is a result of that got it thanks to my son saying the other day you know i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for strapping <laughs> young lad <laughs> that's a prophetic how, how statement do, how do i follow that yeah, up no, i, I have you. nothing you know, I'm with you and and it, it doesn't it doesn't matter any of the shit that we went through def it doesn't matter my 12 year old son said it's called I, validity, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that band and i'm it's like it's validity i'm like all that shit doesn't matter now mm-hmm. i'm here because because of rock i'm rock and roll has been good to me that that's, rock and roll has been very good to you yeah now let me ask you this help um someone someone so someone's cruising in listening to this part of this and they're saying to themselves let's say they're not a rock and roll fan Talk to me about some of the inherent problems with touring and how that affects relationships, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's difficult for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's more difficult for for many people than it is others. And I think it just depends on who your who your spouse is or your significant other is okay. and how they and how they see you and, and what you do. Did you like touring? I've always loved touring and I'm I 
most certainly a fucking uh, amateur whore at heart. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. I could live on the Fred road. Too. <laughs> I could live on the road. I could live on the road yeah. six or seven months of the year. Got it. Um, having a, a family and a happy marriage and all that now, maybe a little less. Got you know it. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, sure. gen- I genuinely enjoy being home and being dad and, and doing that thing. Even though you give up, when you do that, you give up part of your soul as far as creativity. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think you have to, you have to pick what you want to do and make it work for you. Um, God, where the fuck am I? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're, all we're, all we're talking about is the challenges, the challenges of touring. It's man. a, it's a huge challenge and, yeah. and. It's and hard. It's when, hard. When right? I was younger, it didn't mean it didn't mean anything because that's what I did. That was my gig, and I didn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, as I've gotten older, that it becomes less of a fuck. <laughs> um, Got it. Got it. That's a really difficult question. It, it is actually a really difficult question because touring is is what I've done for so many years now. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing that I've really ever been good at. Interesting. Including okay. including playing guitar. Really? I'm also really good at being a dad and a husband. No shit. Yeah. And I, ta- and Without I take, a doubt. And I take pride in those things too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it, it kind of leads back to that there's almost like there's there's two lives that you have to lead. Okay. When you're a touring musician. There's there's the touring musician. And then there's the responsible father, husband. Yeah. So it's and easier those, when you're single. Certainly. I guess that can just wrap up that conversation right no, there, right? right. No. <clears throat> From a responsibility but it's, standpoint. It's, when those things start to when those things start to, to cross to intermingle, it it doesn't become complicated, but it it becomes more uh something you need to pay, pay more attention to. Okay. Um I I don't tour near as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. But if you put me on a bus tomorrow and I was gone for six months, I'd be completely okay with that yeah. because I know yeah. exactly how that is. And, and I'm, I'm a professional at, at that. And but there's I, a routine, right? But, there's a routine. But, that goes but I'd have, but I'd have a family at home who would, right. who might be missing me. Yeah. So, so that's a pool. So that weighs on you. That's a pool. That weighs on you and you want to be. You have you you just have to balance it, you know, mm. and it's very very difficult to kind of put into words how, how you know, I I'm I've always been this, but now I'm this, and somehow I have to make both of these things sort of mm-hmm. fit together mm-hmm. so that they can live happily. Um, if you ask me honestly, what if if I had to choose one or the other, I would choose. I would choose being a dad and being a sure, husband sure. over the other sure. any day of the week. Sure. Um, but then, you know, when you have that, you you also have to, you, you know, for me personally, it's like, well, my creative soul is is missing. I'm, I'm missing something, you know, and, and I'm not sure how to fulfill that. And, and so therein lies a sort of... Uh, I'm not sure how to put it, but like there's 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 dichotomy. A, there's a dichotomy there. That's that's, and I think it might be the same with a lot of with a lot of artists, mm-hmm. specifically with artists. Mm-hmm. It's like you you have to balance your 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 happiness mm-hmm. with your creative uh, soul, your output, the things that you need, the things that you need to do from here. Mm-hmm. With the responsibilities of being uh, yeah. an, an adult, as yeah. as it were, right. but not not just because that's that's put upon you, but because that's what you fucking do, mm-hmm. you know. And that's how I feel as a dad and a husband. That's what I fucking do. Right. And there's you can't. And I'll fight you on this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what I do. Yeah. But part of me is still missing over here. Sure. That I need to fulfill, and sure. I'm not sure how to fulfill that. And I think that's a battle that many perhaps many of us fight daily you know what i mean okay so uh 2000 was that deep that was no, deep it was, no, it was, <laughs> no it was actually i get it i get it i get it and i think that probably that's a pull that most artists our age mm-hmm. throughout their touring feel mm-hmm. 
2009, I was sitting in the Three Rivers, no, excuse me, Civic, Pittsburgh Civic Arena, sitting in Paul Stanley's hospitality area. And he Damn. takes, now hear, hear me out. Yeah. He takes his makeup off, comes back in. And it was the last gig of the 2009 Kiss Tour. There's the last one. So they're all flying commercial home on their own pace. So Gene had left, and Eric and Tommy had already gone, and they're off. But Paul, for whatever reason, wanted to hang out and talk, and it was awesome. So it was Paul, wow. myself, my wife at the time, and Danny, they're they're a great guy. They're uh, their security guy. And Paul and we're and dude, I'm literally eating like lobster and like steak, whatever the catering was. It was beautiful, right? They kicked us out because we were staying so long in the Pacific Arena that the ordinance for the city of Pittsburgh was you had to leave. Yeah. But I but I had a couple hours with him and it was phenomenal. I'll never forget it. We're sitting on the couch, he's showing me pictures on his iPhone, the iPhone at that time, right? At the time, yeah. Yeah. Of, of like, oh, look at Evan. His mm-hmm. oldest son. Look at Evan. Look at he Oh, that's that's Jimmy Page. Oh, that's like you know Paul Rogers. Oh, like their family photos. To me, I'm like, holy crap, man! But what I got, as cool as all that was, what I got out of it was we're sitting there on the couch, and I saw on on the screen it said um, his wife's name was popped up because I got to take this, and he walks away and he comes back about three minutes later and he goes. He looked at me and goes, he looked at my wife at the time, looked at me and goes, whatever you do, don't forget the families first. Mm. And I'm so excited. I'm flying home tonight, not tomorrow morning, but tomorrow morning I'm flying home to see my family. And I got six months and we're going to Hawaii. And he was just so genuinely happy. Yeah. Like that was his thing. Yeah. Right? He was yeah. going home to be with his family. And it's never, I've, I was never lost on that. That mm. was where his... You know, he he was doing what he loved. He was Paul Stanley of Kiss, right? Yeah, yeah. But that he was so more excited to be home. Yeah. You know, so I get yeah. it. I, I I absolutely relate to that on on my level. You know what I mean? Because I could never uh, even uh, ima- even imagine uh, where, where he's at. But, but I, I think though, I think there's similarities there for of sure. Course, you of know? course, he wanted to be home yeah. with his family. Yeah. And that was. He just and, wants to be a dad and hang out. And, exactly. And, you know, he had little ones at the time. I think yeah, his wife yeah. had a couple little ones, and it was have yeah. a nice d- having you know do do whatever they do, you know. Yeah, and be do, there do for whatever them. Families whatever they do, right? Just be there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And, and with that, but, but with music, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's different, right? It is. Touring's a bitch. Yeah. And and I never th- I never thought of it any other way until I had a wife that I loved mm-hmm. and a fa- and 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 a son and. You know, it's 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 everything changes. Everything mm-hmm. changes then. Everything. Mm-hmm. I and, believe that. And and my my perspective on on so many things has been so completely changed because of that over the years. Yet you still have to balance those two things. It's sure. I am the family guy, and I am the like other creative soul she have, right? And it's not that like, yeah, I'm not Paul Stanley from Kiss or something, but it's like. I have to fulfill this other part of me that's mm-hmm. really hard to fulfill, and that's a battle that that I battle until this, uh, you know, this day. You know, that mm-hmm. that's something that I deal with every single day. So it's a constant pull on you. It's a constant pull. You know, I, I, you know, I was saying earlier how hey, I, I started building a studio in my house. Yeah, and I threw I threw a ton of stuff, money, and and everything into it, and and maybe that was just part of the. Almost, almost like an addiction, almost. Sure. But in the end, I don't have what what I'm looking for out of it, and and it's really difficult. I go down and I'm like, I have look, look what I have. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. But I need to get upstairs and I need to prepare lunches and and I've got some vacuuming to do and, and so so and I think that's kind of what's the separation is not there. The not needed the, separation yeah. between work and home, right? Yeah. And and work is at home, you know. And I've thought recently, I'm like, maybe I should move my stuff to an external uh, a place where where I can, you know, like where I can remove myself from the house, and then I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not hindered by by yeah what it is i think i need to do yeah no, I get and i that. think i think there's i think there's some validity in that i'm just i haven't gotten there yet mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. 
but yeah, man, that, that whole home studio and I'm going to go with outboard <laughs> gear and, and I've got the best of the best. And no, you don't have the best. You've got the worst. Of, you've got the best of the worst. And you've said, you know, you spent half That's your, so good, you spent half your life savings on all of this. I mean, it's an incredible black hole, mm-hmm. you know, and I love, I love the, I love the thought of, of analog recording yeah, and outboard gear mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. And I firmly believe in it. And I bought a, few pieces of really fucking key equipment that fit into that it's pricey yes it is and it's <laughs> it's also but a it's black so hole of hell <laughs> it's so good though it's an amazing thing but it's yeah. like yeah. and i'm like i haven't got what i want yet even though i've got i'll make about a bunch of great yeah. shit you know yeah yeah, yeah. and and yeah. that's a whole nother world and right. I, I don't even really know how to how to vociferate that no, no i get it it's, i totally it's, get it it's I totally crazy get it. I totally but, get it. but i have i have a you know, like the things when I was young, if I had what I had, if I had any idea that I have what I have <laughs> now, I'd be like, oh my God, because <laughs> I made some incredible music when I was younger no on, sh- on shit that had nothing to do with right. anything I have now. Right, right. And I think, I think I have to kind of start taking that into consideration because it's not about what you have or uh, how big of a studio you can build. It's just like, where's the heart? and and mm-hmm. get it on tape mm-hmm. you know even if it's a four track fucking t act amen amen you know what yep. i mean i and, have one of those and it, you know and you know it's funny i still have one i'm sure you do i, pu- I pulled <laughs> it off the the I, there? I pulled it off the shelf just the other day it still work and i put it i, I took my keyboard i have a, a custom i have a custom desk that i had made and i took the keyboard out and i just kind of put it off to the side and i put that little four track right on my keyboard shelf and i pull out my keyboard shelf and i look at it and i'm like remember remember what you did with this try to do that again right it, magic it doesn't mean that doesn't yeah, mean that no. I have a, it doesn't mean i have a solution I but i'm it. trying i'm trying to you know like because it, it can't it be it was so it wasn't easy but it was i wasn't so reliant upon technology mm. and all of that kind of stuff mm. back then he just he just did it because i'm like i got this fucking idea and i gotta do it here's my <laughs> shit and then i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna write a song and i wrote some great shit back uh-huh. then and now uh-huh. i have all i've spent all this money and i'm like fuck man what what the because hell because in the end was you not right? agree it's in your heart and it's in your fingers right, right? and and that's another thing which is like it's getting older and i think i think my priorities have kind of shifted and i don't really want to admit to that even though i guess i just did yeah. but it's like you know family is is everything absolutely but there's a part of family that doesn't satisfy my creative soul and that's i think something that many musicians probably don't mm-hmm they're mm-hmm. not able to they're not able to overcome and mm-hmm. i want to overcome that because i know i can i just have to figure it out mm-hmm. I'm, and i'm still figuring it out and and talking to my old buddy Devin, you know with strapping and stuff it's like he's a super uber fucking talented guy and and, and i'm going to lean on him a bit you yeah, know what i mean i'm going to lean on him a bit because right he's all, all those all those years that we had and and things that i maybe perhaps took for granted and stuff it's just like I, I had a really solid guy in, in my lineup the whole time, and maybe I didn't give him the respect that that was needed. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so, yeah, I'm going to lean on him a little bit. There you go. The, the views, and, and that brings me to this. Yes, let's talk about this. The guy walks, <laughs> so the guy walks in with a box of, it looks like DV tapes, like digital video tapes, right? <laughs> so what is this exactly? All right, so for those of you on camera and and you guys have, have, and you guys in Latvia, <laughs> Latvia, <laughs> are you Borat or what? <laughs> this is a mini cassette. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going to show it to you. Is show it to you. Wait, is. stop. A, a, a mini digital video cassette. No, mini audio cassette. From what year was that? A uh, long time ago. Year. No shit. So. The reason I have these is not to like to show all you and to brag about it, but um, back in about 1984, my first band, Armorous. Yeah. Um, I have recorded every single idea, song, riff, anything I've ever had my entire life, and that dates back to about 1984. So 1984, I got my first um, handheld cassette deck, but it was it was like a Walkman, but like yeah. a cheap version, but you could record with yeah. it. So at home, I have two um, quite large uh, Tupperware containers mm-hmm. with maybe a few hundred cassettes 
of, okay. of riffs that okay. I've recorded over the years. Huh. Every, smart of you, though. And it's, I don't know if it's smart or not, but it's it's just like I had to, everything I've ever thought up Get has, it out. has always been put on tape. Got it. So, so from 84 till about 96 or so was on the handheld cassette recorder. Okay. Then I got one of the mini cassette recorders. And that's this box you see right here. This box, you see how many mini cassettes are in there. That represents 1993 till about 2000. Okay. Um, after that, I got my very first digital recorder. I remember those. Very uh, fragile. They did was not. It a, they, was it a mini disc that went in there? It was, was no. It? it was an Olympus. You just plug it in. It was USB, and you you upload. You you talk into it, and then you upload into your computer. Oh, it was it was a hard drive on there. Yeah. Okay. I had that for a few years, but it was it was it was not reliable. The over sampling rate was low. And it was and, right? and it just and it would it would Got break it. free, and I lost a lot of the document. I bet. Lo- lost a lot of information I over bet. the years, and after that. It, uh, smartphones came came to existence, and that's that's my thing until this day. It's just like I press recorder, and that that's how I record my ideas. But every idea I've ever had since 1984, Holy is shit. on tape. Wow! And, and I do, and I do mean 99 percent of every idea I've ever had. So, um, what I do is when I'm writing a record or writing a song, I always hit the vaults, as I call them, okay. because I've got so much stuff wow but i've been hitting the i've been hitting the the cassette vaults for years and years i've never given my mini cassette vaults any time so i thought i thought the last like six or seven months i'm like i started to dip into this stuff because this is this is the 90s this is like 91 till 99 yeah and and i'm like i've got a long drive today that what what happened today was i've got a long drive today i'm just gonna i'm gonna bring my a micro cassette recorder which is out in the car yeah and i'm gonna plug it into my stereo <laughs> in the car and um i think you know like this is something another thing I, I had in common with devin is like when i'm writing or or recording music the best place to listen to music is in your car no question without question because when i'm driving i don't have anything else sort of distracting me and i can pay attention to to things and 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 that's I, I don't know how to explain it no, any better nuances, than that. Right, right, no, no, get so it. I'm like I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna bring this with out me with me out to Eric's and I'm just gonna listen to uh, to tapes on the way out there and on the way out here today. Yes, I found about like ten maybe fifteen riffs. And I'm like, holy fuck, that's amazing, you know. And that gives me fuel to go home and write with. Got it. You know what I mean? Got it. How but, about that? But part I of your past. I have, and this, this, I mean, the mini, the mini tapes, I haven't touched ever because, wow. because I, I don't know why, because. And it's all but riffs. It's all riffs. So you list, you list, you put on one of these tapes. They're all like ninety minutes, sixty minutes yeah. eight, tapes, yeah. and it'll be like, <coughs> I've got this. Uh, so uh, yeah, riff idea. One, two, three, four, judge, and I'll play it, and it might be too distorted, and I'll be like, okay, so here it is without the distortion, oh, and I'll play it. That's very useful. Or, or I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I always, I always, and I still do sleep with a recorder right beside my bed, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'll mm-hmm. wake up in the middle of the night, and sometimes that's because that, it's when your brain is active and not inhibited by whatever, yeah, day, whatever it is, lie. right? You right, know, right, and that's right. like that's why I say driving is one of the great releases for me because you just drive and you're not thinking about anything else and the brain starts to go um sleeping so i'd wake up and i'd be like i got this idea for a riff (laughs) and it goes like this how great is that every single idea i've ever had is is on either mini tape or or actual cassette tape I actually, I had a mini disc recorder as well, and I still I have, have that that Devin gave me a mini disc recorder. I tried one of those for yeah. a while. I still have it. Little small, little yeah. like uh, like CD, yeah. like ins- Sony Sony mini disc, but you know, like yes. this. And uh, then the smartphones after on. So I mean, I have I have years and years and years of cool. of riffs that I've saved up, and that's, that's smart though. That's it. I, I'd like to think that it it's is hugely smart, right? You know, because now when I write, if my muse and and I do feel that my muse has left me these last five six seven eight years okay. i always have something to fall back on 
And then these are my riffs. And the only reason that I have these in the studio with me right now today is because there's no fucking way on earth I'd ever leave them in a parked car <laughs> or in a hotel room. And I wanted to bring them right. with me. I wanted to bring them with me today and listen Agreed. and listen to, to some of my old riffs and Agreed. get some ideas. Agreed. But this is this is more important to me than than just about anything on earth Got apart it. from my family. So that's that's why they're here How with me. How about that? That's why they're here with me right now. The That's major word it came from you. Yeah, and I listened to that. I listened to I listened to me in like the early 1990s, and I'm like, hey, me, hi, I got this idea. <laughs> you know, like chicken, chicken, ching, chicken, chicken, ching. You know. Then, can you remember recording any of that? Sometimes I'll hear a riff that that you know, like the good ones you remember. Oh, absolutely. You know? And and like and, and I'm not saying this is this represents about 10 years, and I, and I'm not I'm not kidding. Um, Maybe nine years, eight years, something wow. like that, and it might wow. not seem like a lot, but there's you know there's probably thirty sixty minute uh, um, uh, tapes in here. No so that, question. That represents me going, fuck, I got an idea. Click. I always had it with me. Yep. Yep. Seventy percent are probably not any good. Unbelievable. But the fact that you record everything, and this is something I I, I say to anybody that 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 will listen it's mm -hmm. like record everything yeah record every moment every idea every thought I every believe in that every thing that you might have because there's gold in them there are hills no question go back and revisit it yeah and, and that it, and that's what i do and that's hard because you listen and you're like oh my god i sound like shit holy fuck what a great riff and that and that's where you that's have to, what you're looking for that's, that's the juice what, of it all how about that yeah Huh. So that's that's why I have those with me today because I was listening to them on the way out here and I haven't listened to them in years. Wow. You know. My friend, this is amazing. <laughs> I love We could, I, we could go all night. I know. Well, I know we could. And that's why I want you to come back. I, I will. I beg you to come back. You have you have my and word. Fred is going to beg you to come back as well too. This is really yeah. exceptional you have my word and you and i have history you and fred have history yeah. this is this needed to happen yeah i did. know it took a couple months for us to get it together but yeah. this is really i, good. I think it, it what what more for, it was for me to just like say okay fuck i gotta go just like <laughs> just do it just and, do it and just get it out it was, it's, it's cathartic i hope you found a cathartic, cathartic as well too. Abso absolutely without question yeah and, and in question. your history and, and we, we we haven't touched on touring and there's a there's lot so much we haven't more. touched on yeah yeah but but this these hours have been great and i want to tell you from the bottom of my heart i know what it took to drive out here i've driven the philly many times it's an aggravation yeah but thank you thank and you promise me more than anything you will come back i promise all right you have my word jed simon my friends Jed Simon here at Boogie Street in Pittsburgh. Don't forget your riff tapes, folks. Yeah, record everything. everything. Amen. <laughs> God bless y'all, and we are out. Salute. Well, that was killer, bro. Dude, that was so killer. <laughs> that is beyond expectation. I am, I am with family here. You ain't shitting. Absolutely happy. You ain't shitting. Absolutely.